Didn't even start yet. Big Boy Fargo's already dropping the big sub. Thank you so much, Big Boy Fargo. Hope you're having a good one. Glider chill and Hazy Hop. Sorry again that happened. I had no idea that that was even a mechanic that we had access to. What's good, sale beers? Oh, ew. Everyone see that? Ew, is that my mouse cursor on screen? Disgusting. Why did that happen? That would be why. Okay. I mean, everyone just scream if you see a mouse cursor. That shouldn't be happening. Hope everyone's having a fantastic Tuesday is going to be by far one of the biggest tournaments that I have personally helped commentate for over the internet, so I'm just looking forward to it. Ready for the BDO2? O2 is the best. That means you get to go play casuals for the rest of the night. I'm chilling. I'm drinking my tea. You too can have access to this spooky skeleton if you have, uh, I think, Frank or Face Z. I think. If you type skeleton, please, it'll show up in my little preview there. I don't think I'm going to do Dolce Cam today just because uh, I have a lot of things going on with like me and Ryan set up and like streaming Guilty Gear to each other. So I'm probably just going to not do Dolce Cam today. I, I might try to throw it in at, like towards the end or something. I just want to make sure everything I have set up works. This is a slightly more professional presentation. Nah, don't worry about it, no. You're fine. Uh, ah, that's what I was looking for. Oh, yeah. Thanks to the big 86 for the follow. I'm still trying to remember where the hell I knew you from. My dreams? Probably. Are you doing good, 86? Question. I don't know if any of y'all... Oh, it looks like he's online. I was gonna ask if somebody knew how to get a hold of Trin, just to make sure that that boy's, like, awake. That'd be useful. What's good, Geb? Alright, Ryan says that he's good. 
Let me crank down the tunes a little bit more. Barely audible tunes. This song is from Metroid Prime. So is the other one. If you have not played Metroid Prime, play Metroid Prime. This ends my commercial for Metroid Prime. Alright, I'm gonna hop in our secret Discord channel. Alright, Trin's awake. Hell yeah. We're in there. We need an extra hand, give you a shout. Let Trin know, Noah, in case he needs you. Because it has occurred to me that uh, getting everyone together, or getting uh, scores reported is probably going to be one of the biggest like bottlenecks for manual labor here in this tournament. So if you're down to just like help uh, grab people's scores and stuff when they report them, just let Trin know. As much as I will be very mean to Smash GG for my entire life, it is nice that it kind of has that, like, auto-reporting feature. Although I forget. Wait, does Chalon have that nowadays? I actually don't even know. Who knows? I'm just here to talk into a microphone. What's going on? Yeah, I just said Mocha. I have no idea. Cool. I don't know if Trin's enabled it or not. Bracket stuff is Trin's domain. We're just gonna wait here for Lord Hunter. Yo, you know what's cursed? We've got 663 followers and 63 subscribers. I don't like this. That's bad juju. Oh shit, bots! Kill him! Sorry everybody, we'll, we, we will prevail against the machines. Oh, Ryan, is that you? It is I. How you doing? He Hello, Ryan. Everybody, this here is Ryan Hunter. I don't know if you know him. Ryan, would you like to introduce yourself for the crowd briefly? Um, yeah, let me, let me, uh, hold on, I gotta mute something here. I got Guilty Gear blaring. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I, whenever I stream, the secret is that Guilty Gear is at about three volume. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, what's up, guys? I am Ryan Hunter. Uh, I've been playing Guilty Gear for, like, 15 years. And, um, you may have seen me commentate some tournaments at some point, if you have been watching Guilty Gear for a while. Uh, I've been commentating since uh, Exerd uh, was at EVO 2015 uh, in Exerd Sign. So uh, I've been doing a lot of commentary, made some top baits, and uh, yeah, just been playing Guilty Gear and fighting games for a very long time. Dope. And in case you're here following Ryan, you have no idea who I am. Uh, my name is Bones. I have been playing fighting games for a really long time now. I started out running anime tournaments in New Jersey, uh, and I still do that. Um, I'm mostly a TO, but I do casually play a whole lot of fighting games. Love me some Plus R. Love, I mostly play a lot of Accent Core back in the day, but I definitely went in on Plus R when it came out for sure. Um, I've been, lo uh, lately I've been helping sh stream these, like, beginner tournaments, uh, for Sage Amps Discord, as well as non-beginner tournaments where we're just all hanging out playing video games. Um, it's been a whole lot of fun. So, this is by far the biggest bracket that we've had, which is super exciting. Uh, and hopefully that everything tonight goes off without a hitch. Cool. That um, is the hope. That is but, the you know, hope. If, there, if there are some hitches, you know, that's okay, too. It's, uh, you know, we're trying something new, so got to start somewhere. Yeah, 100%. It's worth the experiment. Um, and now I'm trying to get my camera working here. Yeah, I'm about to turn mine on. Cool. Can you flick yours on? There it is. Here we go. There we go. Nice. Okay. Let me just hit this uh -oh. big pop out. You're not on screen yet. You're just waving at me. But how's it going, Ryan? <laughs> that, that's, that's all I was trying to do. Just, uh, you know. All right. Let me just hit this with the big 
<clears throat> Bam! Oh my gosh, look at that. Look how professional we are, everybody. Here we are. My name is Bones. His name is Ryan Hunter. We are here to watch some dope ass Guilty Gear, and that's why we're that's why we're here to game. Um Ryan, I have to <clears throat> share my screen with you. Yeah, and I'm gonna share mine with you. Is that gonna mess your shot up? Should not. Okay. It might, but let's figure it out. <laughs> this is why yeah. we're here to troubleshoot. Exactly. Okay, so I do this. We figured out that 30 frames per second was better. 30's fine, yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, you know, if uh, every time you miss a frame, Ryan, I know it's going to mess up your analysis. Feel free to just scream on the mic. <laughs> All right. That should be good. So I didn't try this myself. I should have tried this last night. I'm going to pop your video out. Nice. And oh, there may or may not be steam maintenance happening right now. I'll cry. I'll cry so hard. <laughs> yeah, I just got signed out. I just no, out. for real? Bruh. Yeah, I mean, it should, it should only take a few, it should only take a few minutes. Theoretically, it should only take a few minutes, chat. Yeah, Everyone stay calm. Stay calm. Hopefully, as long as they didn't... The last time this happened, they pushed, uh, pushed a big Dota update and it broke Guilty Gear. So, as long as they didn't push a big Dota update, we may be in the clear. Interesting. So, I'm trying to decide what I want to do with... the stream, because I would like to have chat up, but I also don't want to get distracted. This is probably Did <laughs> Dota 3 Shadow Drop today? Shit. We stood no chance. Um, are you streaming yours, Ryan? Cool. You should be able to see my game. Yeah, do you not? I do, and now I can see it. Okay. And then I should be able to switch around back to you, theoretically. Oh, yeah. As much as I should be able to thank the big maybe data pod for the big follow. Appreciate it. All right, let's figure this out like this and then if i click there we go we have the tech cool so you have my game right now i, I don't have the stream up yeah i have your game uh oh man so on my stream it looks like you're doing fine and then i look over to you on discord and you are just you are nowhere here in space or time you're vibrating you're <laughs> i don't know what's happening my, you look my fine webcam on or my uh game my uh my discord camera of you you are the flash but you look fine on stream i think <laughs> Weird. Interesting. Okay. Weird. I mean, as long as it looks good <laughs> for you and it works. Yeah. They look good to you, everybody. Yeah, Ryan looks fine to you. I don't know. Serious. So I couldn't help myself. I looked up a couple of things from the commentary that we did last night that I wasn't sure about. I was uh -huh. I was right, but I see I didn't want to say anything because, you know. I'd rather give no information than wrong information, even though tonight... Oh, that's, that's the other thing. I'm going to open up frame data. So hmm. even though I'm really going to try to limit, you know, frame data to an absolute minimum, but just to be able to look up simple things, um, like this example that I looked up earlier from last night, ABBA's pl uh, uh, 2H in Moroha is plus 2. I, I, I thought that it was, but I wasn't 100% sure. And also, a lot of my information is based on, you know, Accent Core Vanilla from, you know, 10, 15 years ago. So some of that stuff has changed. But uh, it is it is plus. So yeah, that button is is ridiculous. <laughs> That's a dang good button. Hold on, I uh, <laughs> didn't update the bracket yet. Thanks for the reminder. Give me one second. In chat room, just make sure keep me on my toes. If at any point the stream starts dropping oh, yeah. uh, frames or anything like that, in case we got to kick cup nuke head out of here for dropping the big call, I appreciate you. Uh, in case it starts dropping frames or anything, just let me know. Uh, because I'm like, I have a lot of live streams going right now, including Ryan and everything. Oh, you ready to yeah. disappoint me and Ryan? You can never disappoint us. We're your, we're your dads yeah. who are just, we're here for you, kid. Yeah, un undisappointable. <laughs> and also thanks to oh, Big Sefo yeah. and the Big BTF for dropping the big follows. Appreciate you. And like, you're already so many points ahead just by entering the tournament that there is no amount that you could do badly that would put you back into the negatives so i mean not that doing badly even deducts points but you, you know what i'm saying yeah, you're, you're sure. way ahead you're way ahead uh it looks like my steam is back up 
Maybe? Maybe not. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm not going to use network mode anyway, so it doesn't matter for me. So I'm in training mode right now. All right, let me hit go here at the big old restart. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I want to ask you when you're done with what you're doing uh, before I forget. I just want to see if you have sound from my game. Um, I heard it before uh, when I had it on, but I can double check again. Yeah, I want you to double check because I muted it for myself, so I don't have to hear it for the next three hours. So I'm curious <laughs> if you still hear it. I hear it. You do? Okay, interesting. That's good to know. This is the Ryan Hunter cam now, everybody. It's just him training mode his guilty gear. That's what he looks like in real life. <laughs> Boom. Let's move right back. That's actually pretty convenient. I like that. You know, sometimes Discord's all right. Okay. I restarted guilty gear. Let's see if we can get network mode going again. Okay, I think I'm in. Ryan just is a running copy of Plus R. You're not wrong. Okay, and then let's test this. If I switch over to here, you'll see this wonderful skeleton. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one, Ryan, um, a full screen capture of you which i'll switch between you and your training mode this way we can hop in there after we're done with matches and stuff and you want to do things cool <clears throat> sounds good yeah. there you go the big ryan and then if i do this bam now ryan in training mode anything you can show off of venom you got any schnassy schmixes i've got some stuff that i worked on uh, on the last stream that i'm trying to work into my game some new conversions and stuff is actually uh, there's another Venom player, Bador. He's a mod in the Venom Discord. Uh, been playing Venom for a, a while, you know, since since Exert. And uh, he posted this combo that's similar to the one I do, but I think his is a little bit better. So I've been working it into my game. Ooh. So it's pretty nice. I was doing a slightly different version which is a little bit harder. They both they both have pros and cons, but I think overall his is a little bit better. Hmm. What do you think are like the pros and cons? Um his has a little more corner carry, but the problem is if you actually reach the corner too soon, it will mess the combo up and you have to adjust for that. Whereas mine doesn't have that problem, but mine, if, if you start in the absolute corner, like here, which does come up, like, quite often, mm -hmm. um, mine doesn't work at all. And that that's what prompted me to, like, look for a new combo, period, because I kept doing this, and then I can't... This ball is in, like, the worst place uh, for Venom combos, basically. Whereas, like, when you're mid-screen, you just run past it, and it doesn't matter, so... Yep. Also, his, his is a little easier, and they do like basically the same damage, so it's always good when you know you have something that you can do. Like, I keep dropping this here. There we go. Start applying a mask. Which charge ball do you use? Um, so this one that I just did, which is my old combo, is K. But uh, the new one is H. So this is the new combo that I'm trying to do, which is Bedore's combo. And that one is H, and then S variant ball. Hmm. Cool, cool. By the way, some housekeeping. Sigwin, I have made you a mod. A, use your power responsibly. B, if you can help us do bets, that would be sick. Oops. We can get rid of this. Bam! How about the new overlay, everybody? You seeing that? Some real hot topic ass overlays we got in here. Cool. We should be getting started here in just a little bit, which is super exciting. Yeah, Trinity is gonna hop in, right? Trinity just should be it. hopping in at some point, theoretically. I guess I should keep the Discord open. What do you guys? Uh, oh, this is not what I wanted. Oh, you're not sharing your game anymore to me. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I had to restart it because of the stream <laughs> Steam maintenance. Yeah, no worries. There you go. There we go. Okay. Uh, I guess I should keep Discord open, and what do you guys use the tournament channel to run everything? 
Use the tournament channel to run everything. Yeah, it looks like he's calling our first match, potentially. Beautiful. All right. Ooh, I don't know if y'all can hear that motorcycle outside, but they're popping off. They're excited. I hope y'all of you are excited. If you're whether you're entering or if you're just here to watch, I think watching beginners is genuinely some of the most fun stuff ever in fighting games. So I'm really, really excited to see these matches tonight. Yeah, I think it's gonna be good. I'm excited. Test stream is indeed the people's hero, and it looks like we potentially have our first match coming up to bat already. Can you believe it? I cannot. <laughs> uh, a, week, a week of planning went by real quick, you know? And just as you say that, Sajam drops the big old raid. How's it going, Sajam? Hope you're doing good. I like how as soon as Sajam raids, literally yeah, the frame June after. <laughs> June yeah. Bear. Yeah. What's up, June Bear? The frame one guapo. If you don't know, Ryan, June Bear actually has a guapo pass in this stream because he won our first Eunice tournament. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, fancy. So he's fancy. allowed to use it. Nice. Cool. Thank you so much, everybody, for stopping by. I hope you're all oh, excited yeah. to watch some of this shit. Uh, we are forcing Ryan to commentate. You know, he's been uh, in hiding for too long. Something like that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I'll switch back over here. Bam. And then we can do this. How's it going, everybody? So maybe, maybe uh, we'll just take a minute if we're about to get started. I just want to kind of give everybody an idea of what to expect tonight. Um... I'm, I'm hoping that there are, um, you know, also beginners that uh, are watching uh, and hoping to, to learn something. And this is as much for you as it is for the for the people playing. So I'm hoping that this is educational uh, for oh, anybody, yeah. you know, trying to learn not only for the people who I'll be giving, you know, direct feedback to. Um, but with that in mind, uh, I don't have all the answers, oh, yeah. so you know I, I know a lot, and I've been playing for a long time. But um, we're gonna learn together tonight, so uh, that's part of the reason why I have my uh, my oh, game open yeah. in training mode because uh, I'm gonna try as much as possible in between matches in in our downtime to jump into training mode and and look at a couple things. So oh, yeah. you know I, I'm not an expert on every character. I know I know enough um, that I can certainly give some some feedback, but. Um, you know, maybe we'll look at a few things in training mode oh, and, yeah. uh, you know, I can learn some stuff too. So, um, you know, just want to let everybody know, you know, we're going to learn together and, uh, and that's it. Oh yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Thank you so much for that introduction there, Ryan. Oh, also, uh, uh for, sorry for, for the people who are, um, who, who are playing and are rewatching this oh, later, yeah. uh, I may give you, you know, a lot of stuff. Don't expect, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thinking that you're going to like learn all this stuff overnight. Uh, but I'm just taking the opportunity oh, to give you yeah. as much feedback as I can. Um, and, you know, that way you have stuff to, to go back to and, you know, some direction going forward. So, yeah, for sure. I think that's uh, thanks again for that introduction. Um, by the way, everybody, me and Ryan are here to help commentate. But I want everyone to also give a big shout out to Trinity, who's here in the voice yes. chat with us. Trinity, do you want to say hi really quick? Uh, hi. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi, Trin. uh, <laughs> Trin. Trin is going to be talking much. Uh, I'll, I'm just going to be here in the background, keeping an eye on things, and I'll be in the tournament channel helping to coordinate things. But uh, yeah, uh, just want to say real quick, the first round of the tournament's coming up. It's going to be a little hectic, so please bear with us. Um, we're going to try to get everything sorted as smooth as we can. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, just for the record, Trin is the one really breaking his back tonight, helping make this huge bracket work. So big shout out to Trin for helping us put this together. 64 people is a lot of people. Uh, and I know that unfortunately not everybody oh, could yeah. register tonight, but that's just because uh, A, me and Ryan are, have full-time jobs. Uh, and B, uh, that's pretty much it. We just got to go to bed at some point. And as much as we love running oh, seven hour yeah. plus tournaments, we got to stop eventually. Um, so uh, Trin, who's up first? Uh, well, it should be uh, Seamal versus. I rolled. A, I rolled a D thirty two, which that doesn't <laughs> exist in physical space. But you know, this is roll with it. I rolled a D thirty two, and I came up with seven. So cool. I added Seamal five and Datapod for the first match. So they should be oh, getting yeah. in here shortly. Yeah, they are indeed in. So I can switch on back to this, and y'all are gonna get the full screen, Ryan, and then we'll cut him out of the picture. Bam! <laughs> At some point, hold on. <laughs> That's weird. Why are you still here, Ryan? What are you doing? I don't know. Uh -oh. <laughs> there he goes. Okay, okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> drop out. So cool. All right. Adios, Trin. Thanks, buddy. 
Cool. So I think we're just about ready to get going with our first one. It's going to be oh, Seamow yeah. and Datapod. Can you believe Seamow won the first role on the D32? Because he has been around the Discord for forever. He's always participating in these hoop cups and whatnot, and life is good. For the record, everybody, if you're longtime viewers of my random streams here, unfortunately, I don't have the Dolce Cam going tonight. I, I promise you, she's doing great. She's asleep right now. But there's a lot of things going on with the game stream and the Ryan stream. I want to make sure that all works first. <laughs> So whenever our players are ready oh, here, we yeah. can get going with our first match. Ryan, you can see everything fine on your end? I can. Looks great. Looks great. Dope. All right. Oh, and we are getting into it. Awesome. Excited Dope. to see what characters we have. Yep. Bridget uh, makes sense there. All right. So Testament. Testament versus Bridget. All right. Interesting matchup. So Testament, you know, going to be setting uh, setting the traps with, uh, you know, Nets and uh, or webs, some people prefer. Uh, nets and uh, trees, got the EXE beast. Meanwhile, Bridget doesn't really have to follow the, the conventional rules. Going to be flying around, I would expect, setting the yo-yo, but we'll see. Bridget is one of those characters that you can really have a pretty, uh, you know, there's diverse play styles. So we'll see uh, how Datapod chooses to, to play it here. Yeah, for sure, right? And I think that uh, if you've never really uh, fought either of these characters, the easy way to think about them is off the bat. Testament is a heavy trap character, right? He wants to make you make mistakes by running into the things that he's putting down on the ground. Bridget wants to fly around the screen and not engage with any of that, so... We'll yeah, so this is th this is a little bit tough if you're if you're newer and you don't have much experience against uh, Testament because it does require some level of um, tracking, you know, where stuff is on the screen, which is really the the most annoying part of, of fighting the character that takes you know practice. It, there's really no substitute except for experience. Wow, great block on the overhead there, by the way, from uh, Seamount. Doesn't block the second one though. Yeah, that overhead is reactable asterisk. It is pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the good thing is Bridget doesn't really have that many things to worry about up front. Wow, the super hits. That's going to kill, yeah. The super yeah, hits and nice. broke the tree, Datapod, stealing the round. See now, uh, grabbing defeat from the jaws of victory. Ooh, just missing on the uh, overhead. So Testament's overhead is his uh, 6P, which is oh, yeah. universal anti-air, but for Testament, it also happens to be an overhead. And that nice one is away. really fast. That is really on the human fringe of reaction. Yeah, I think it's less about the speed and more about the animation. It's kind of a subtle animation, not not very distinct. So it's a little hard to actually realize that, you know, it's 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 coming. All right, nice little mini mix up there. I mean, again, Bridget doesn't really have that much to work with as far as, you know, just simple mix up. So it's more more of a hit and run kind of character on wow, the super hits almost enough to win the round. Seamau is sitting on burst. Are you going to try to use it somehow? Now let's see. Might, might have to just try to win. OK, yeah. And 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 uh, Datapod gets it there. I was going to say, might just have to try to win the round and uh, save the burst for the next round, but uh, I, I see a couple of people in chat saying uh, the game sound is maybe a little low. Oh, is the game sound low? Sorry, everybody. It's it's Guilty Gear. I think that is actually possibly the first time in history anybody's ever said, hey, Guilty yeah. Gear accent core is a little quiet. Can you turn it up? Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me know if this is good, everybody, okay? Oh, but yeah, yeah, I like what I'm seeing so far. I like uh, Seamow doing some, some you know, good, just simple pressure. Uh, and Datapod with some oh, good, yeah. uh, I mean, he's utilizing 6K, which is, is great. Um, it's really important. It, it is one of Bridget's, like I said, only real mix-up tools. So <laughs> going to it three times in a row here. Wow, just uh, a rush down oh, here. Yeah. C -Mau. Right, and nice. Seamow is trying to go for the Badland loops there, but those are very character specific in terms of what buttons you have to push afterwards. So I, I don't know if it's actually like a great like starting combo route, just because of how specific it is. Yeah, I mean knockdowns are so powerful for for Testament. Like you see here with that knockdown, he was able to set a tree and uh, get an EXE beast out. Oh, he actually hit with both trees there because he set the second one after the EXE beast. <laughs> All right, gets the knockdown here. Wow, super meaty 6k actually hit. Alright. See Matt getting a little bit of space. Oh, doesn't confirm the knockdown there. Okay, EXEB is gonna knock down. Wow. Whoa, what side was that on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I would say um for Seamal I, I would I would take a closer look at some of the block strings. Alright, let's see what he does off the throw. Um this is the conversion. That that's tough too. That's that's a little bit tight. So like there, he set the EXE beast, but then he jumped. 
Um, once you have the EXE Beast on them during the knockdown, you really have a lot of freedom to pressure them however you want. You don't really have to jump. So um, I would I would maybe be looking to just run up to them, lock them down with the EXE Beast, and then while they're in block stun, uh, just mix them up. Just real simple high-low with the overhead. You don't really have to get too fancy with Testament. And uh, the thing is the EXE Beast, when it comes from behind them, when they block it, it turns them around. So it's very difficult for them to... They can't really dead angle, they can't really hit any buttons. It's it's uh, it's pretty pretty strong. Yeah, and something else I'm noticing, Ryan, because you and I were doing some match analysis last night to sort of practice for this, um, and something that came up last night and is coming up now is Seamau's not really finding opportunities to use his meter, and like a lot of other characters, Testament does have a very easy meter dump, which is FB Skull, or doing yeah. that, uh, but honestly, throwing out FB Skulls can put your opponent in such a bad situation, it can really be a round winner sometimes. Oh, nice. Gets the conversion off the throw. This is a chance. Oh, doesn't get the knockdown, though. Yeah. The knockdowns are just so crucial for Testament. Mm. So, um, good try there from from CMAO. Nice stuff from uh, from Datapod. But yeah, I would definitely just say, um, you know, it's so important. Testament, really, when you get those hits, you really want to get those knockdowns because just being able to set EXE Beast and then mix them up is so, so powerful. So, um, you know, if, if it's the kind of thing where, you know, you want to do simpler combos just to guarantee the, the knockdown, uh, you should definitely do that. Because that's even, that's not even like a beginner thing. That's That's just a... Oh, Guilty Gear yeah. thing, you know, the knockdown is that important that sometimes you go for the easier combo just to, you know, guarantee the knockdown. Yeah, 100%. So. And I think that something that's interesting about Guilty Gear X and Core, right, is if you ask a lot of people, they'll be like, game's hard, right? Like, game's so difficult. A lot of characters do have, like, one very powerful, not complex thing. And I think for Testament, a lot of that is, like, you do a meaty EXE beast. Their life sucks, right? Like, and ultimately, that is just such a fundamental bedrock of his game plan that you can do it basically any skill level as long as you can do the motion for it. And I think that, like, that is just so important to him. Yeah, like, what I would do is just start with, um, like, Look at your knockdowns and get used to like knockdown and then EXE beast and then learn two strings, one with the overhead and then one with the low. And just just start with that, just two options, very simple. And uh, once you get really comfortable with those, then you can mix up because he has a lot of variations with where he puts the overhead in the in the block string. Mm -hmm. And that's really when it starts to get like very tricky. But just to start with, just have one overhead string and what and he can even be just starting with overhead as the first button you know what i mean not even chaining into the overhead just one that starts with overhead and one that starts with with a low and just start with that you know and just get the basics down and, and get 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 kind of a game plan flowing so yeah it's it's not uncommon for testament to win around literally doing like 2k 2d beast or 6p like uh gatling it's a 2d beast right like that is just so potent it is ultimately just yeah. really hard to deal with high low yeah and then uh Again, just good job from from Datapod. He did a lot of stuff right there. Um, you know, hard hard to say too much when uh, the win was was fairly convincing like that. I would say that the six K was was great. At some point, you will have to mix in some other stuff besides six K, but you know, it, it was working really well. So no reason to stop doing it. I would say maybe look at mixing in three K as well. Three K is uh, a, a great button. It goes over lows, staggers on counter hits. Just a really solid button as well. Really, uh, just strong in in pressure. So. Yeah. Um, also, it didn't come up much in that matchup, right? But things to keep in mind, uh, Bridget's Delayed Wake Up is incredibly powerful against characters like Testament who want to run yes. uh, powerful Oki. So just something to keep in mind that it's always an option on the table for the situations that you did wind up on the ground with him running oh, at yeah. you. Always remember you have Delayed Wake Up. That's so strong. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. Absolutely. Cool. And it looks like we're going to be getting our next match set up here, which is going to be Sven versus Sudoku. Going to be a soul versus a pot. Ryan, gut reaction. How do you feel about the soul pot matchup? Uh, I think it's probably pretty even. I mean, I don't really know, um, like, for sure what, what the consensus is, but I would have to assume it's just pretty even. Um, soul has decent mid-range pokes, but Potemkin, no slouch in that regard either. He can definitely keep up. Gunflame, pretty easy to flick, uh, you know, relative to, to some of the other stuff in the game. So uh, very reasonable to, to flick most Gunflames. And obviously, Potemkin has the damage output to keep up. So uh, oh, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, uh, it's ultimately hard to get a consensus on a lot of matchups in Guilty Gear. People just have such strong opinions, even at like the highest level of play, it feels like. Yeah, exactly. Wow, just no fear, run up, wild throw. All right, setting the, oh. setting the tone. What a mag. Uh, that, so that's what we call in the business a Canadian burst. A burst that's a little bit too high up to hit anything, unfortunate. 
Yeah, so that burst was a little unfortunate. Wow, just wake up Hotbuster. Not not a not a terrible option. You know, Ryan, I asked you what your gut reaction is. My gut reaction is this is a manly matchup. They're just doing things to each other that hurt a lot. Yeah, I mean I like what I'm seeing here from, from Sven. He's got some good strings. I like the uh you know uh, string into 2D into Hammerfall Break. Wow. Oh, my god, that was sick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, here's a chance here. Uh, I don't know about going into Wild Throw there. This is going to be pretty scaled. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit tough to finish that combo. Judge Gauntlet. Try okay. to go for Judge Gauntlet there, and I think that that was, uh, I believe Fafner is minus like at least like 13 or something, right? So going yeah. for Judge Gauntlet there in that situation and where Sudoku's probably going to respect is a little bit overly risky, I think. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, nice Banner Bringer. Oh, it didn't get the conversion, but that's okay. Nice, very nice. Blocked the Banner Revolver, oh, yeah. got the Pop Buster. Oh, missed, missed Pop Buster. The worst feeling in the world. When the Potemkin goes for Pop Buster, you jump and they accidentally get 6p and you get hit in the air. Absolute worst feeling in the or world. Or Mega Fist and they just like smoke a backdash or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. Big JH, what a clean combo off the jump in. That takes a long time to get used to, I think, in Guilty Gear, to be oh. honest. I thought we were going to see a real big boy combo there. That was um looking like the start of something nice where you do... 2H, Hammerfall Break, and then uh, you can actually link Jump P into an air combo. I, I think that's what he went for. That that combo's tough, so I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised he would uh, he would try actually. But we we do appreciate the Moxie. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, go for it, man. <laughs> Love it. Someone so, in the chat says the soul has no regards for safety. That's kind of how you have yeah. to play the character, dude. That, that's every soul. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not the soul player. That's soul. That's just soul. No, no regard for human life whatsoever. So yeah, I think um, Sven, uh, or excuse me, uh, Sudoku just has to, um, he's just got to make a little bit more out of his hits um, because uh, Sven is doing a really good job when he gets in of making it hurt. Yeah, like here. Oh, didn't con- Yeah, so he's just, he's just bullying them with Hammerfall Break. And this is a really tricky thing, even at a high level, Hammerfall Break is, is very strong in, in this game compared to uh, Exert, if you're used to coming from Exert, just because his Gatlings are a little bit better in this game. So you really have to uh, be very careful. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you saw there a fantastic meter use from Sven. He recognized that his Hammerfall was going to be blocked, so we are seated just to make sure he was safe. Yep. Okay, opportunity. Oh, a little bit of a drop. That was a tough conversion, though. He's a little bit far away. Yeah, so Sudoku, this is just tough. I mean... It's hard because if you don't have Potemkin experience, you do have to play this matchup a little bit differently, and it looks like he's having having a hard time uh, making that adjustment. Because um, you can't just Gunflame recklessly because you'll get flicked, so you do have to lean on your pokes a little bit more, which uh, you know is not, maybe something that you're not as familiar with if you're used to playing other matchups. Yeah, for sure. And there's the Mega Fist smoking him out of the air, and he tried to, I think, walk a Pop Buster, got 2 H for it. Yeah, and I'm guessing that was... Oh, the Judge Gauntlet. I'm guessing that was supposed to be a DP from Sudoku, and he got 2H, but we're just the same, actually. Uh-huh. All right, Jump. nice. Jumps away. Yeah. Nice. Jumps over the slide head. All right, so so that, that air hit that Sudoku just got, the he got the air-to-air -air Jump H. Um, that also, if, if you're coming from Exert, is a little bit different in this game. You can actually get um, conversions much more frequently with uh with air, with air to air jump h in this game let me let me jump into training mode see if i can show that do it up I'm jump Just over to the ryan here. training mode okay let's bam 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 so bam, i would say bam. i would say overall for sudoku he's just got to I mean, again, that matchup is a little bit different, so it's hard to hard to say. But that matchup, you just have to poke a little bit more. Um, you know, just use use more five H. You got to try to zone him in some way, and it's hard because Gunflame, if it's a good Potemkin, he is going to be able to flick it pretty pretty consistently. So um, you know, it, it is it is just a little bit tough. Um, maybe also some IEDs, try to catch him off guard, test his anti air. Um, that would have been good as well. Try to try to get the initiative. But um, yeah, what I was saying before, let me just record him jumping here. In this game, if you hit this, in Exert at that height, you would have to just confirm into DP. You couldn't really get too much more. But in oh, this game, yeah. when you hit this, you can land in 5k. Uh, 5k is a little bit faster in this game. And I think Jump H might have more untackable time or something. So it's really uh, more common in this game to get a better conversion off of this uh, air hit. So, Do you want to use more adjectives for 5k there than just a little fast, Ryan? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's three frames. <laughs> 
a uh, very good anti-air. I don't I don't think it actually has like any kind of invuln or anything like that. It feels like it does. <laughs> yeah, it, it might be like slightly disjointed, so maybe like a tiny bit of invuln in a way, but um, mostly it's just the speed that makes it such a good anti-air. Mm. So, um, but yeah, I would say in that matchup, and and again, it's it's a little tough because I feel like I kind of have to give you advice for that matchup since that's what we saw, but. Um, you know, just more IDs. ID Jump S is a very strong tool with Soul. It hits pretty low. Um, if I just delay it slightly, is it gonna hit Soul here? This is what I was talking about at the beginning of the stream, where we're gonna learn together. Yeah, you have to delay it a little bit more to hit Crouching, but, um, oh, yeah, yeah, just a really good tool. You can also just ID Jump H as well. Um, he just has good buttons. He has a good ID. Um, and so when you're trying to make something happen, um, you can't really go too wrong with ID. Also in that matchup, um, probably okay to, um, not that, to, uh... <laughs> Bandit Bringer a little bit more. Bandit Bringer just in general, if you're looking to take a risk, oh, yeah. it's pretty high reward, so um, can't really go too wrong with that either. Yeah, for sure. Um, and by the way, chat, just as a quick aside, uh, this overlay is oh, sick. Yeah. It's the sickest overlay I've ever seen in my life. It was made by Auric, who is here in the chat. Everyone, I have a favor to ask of you. You can at Auric just like I did and say thank you, Mr. Auric, for this dope overlay. Uh, he's the best. He's really the man. Anyway. I don't, even, I don't even know what overlay you're talking about. I'll have to see later. <laughs> Wait, is it the one you showed me last time? Yeah, the Hot Topic looking overlay. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Cool. Oh, it looks like we are having our next match step up here, and this is going to be a fun matchup, Ryan. I feel like this is going to be a matchup that's going to evoke an immediate response from you. This is Haas versus Chip. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. All right, Leah, let me, let me mentally process that. All right, so, yeah. So, uh, Haas, if you're not familiar, Holy Order Soul, he is a bit of a gorilla. Um, he has a very, very low jump, and he just wants to get in. He has this great, great, what, probably pound for pound, I would I would argue the best jump in, in the game. It's definitely, like, among the best, uh, if not the best. But, yeah, Jump H, just an absolute monster. It hits at a downward angle, comes out reasonably fast. It's an H button, so you can option select throw when you do it by just holding back every time you hit it. Um, it... Ground slides on counter hit, so you get a combo. Oh, yeah. um, it's just it's just an amazing button, what, especially when paired uh, with his jump, so which is very low. Um, Chip, on the other hand, if you've seen any Guilty Gear, uh, he's he's basically the same as as the other games. Uh, he's uh, he's a pixie character, just trying to uh, hit and run, trying to get a knockdown. Uh, he has good mix ups once he knocks you down. So this is going to be basically Order Soul trying to chase around Chip and uh, you know hit him twice, basically. Yeah, for sure. I think it's important to mention when you say a pixie character, right? I think that's kind of like an older FGC term and that, that may make you think of characters who are like fast but don't hit very hard. Chip hits pretty hard and it's not like it's the case where Chip lacks offense or anything like that. He has a lot of very powerful neutral tools. His JD is just, I would say, a meme. It, that is a hell of a button and I'm sure we're yeah, going to see it quite It's actually times. pretty comparable to Order Souls Jump H. Very similar in the application actually. Downwards angle, Ground slides on counter hit, high priority. Yeah, very similar, actually. You're right. For sure. And we are so going to be... I, I, sorry, I will say, um, just in terms of Chip's damage, um, it, it, he, Chip falls in the category with a lot of other characters where they can do good damage off the right starter, but I would say their average damage is pretty low. So we'll, we'll see. Oh, wow. Big counter hit 5H. All right, wake up DP right away. I like it. Ooh, a little far. I like the fact that he confirmed though, and he, and he went for the DP. Oh, nice block on the overhead. Yeah, I do think something that's important to note here is that also uh, Chip has so much freedom in his Gatling routes a lot of the time, like just in terms of what he can go into from pretty far away and it will still connect, and there's a lot of damage that'll rack up because of that. The accidental taunt there, yeah. <laughs> So, so the one thing that is like glaringly standing out to me right now that I'm not seeing from uh, Matt here is uh, Sweep. He's doing Gatlings like you're talking about, but um, not coming into Sweep. And Chip Sweep is excellent, it, just by itself as a poke and, and in pressure. But also, you know, once you get those confirms, uh, pretty important to, you know, get that knockdown with Sweep. I'm going to cut you off there, Ryan. That was sick! He ended yeah. the round with that meter expenditure, <laughs> killed the boy, the completion. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Oh, uh, there's a sweep. Hell Beautiful. yeah! He's Beautiful. listening. Oh, 2H anti-air. Not something you see every day. All right. Nice, nice. All right, I like just keeping it simple there. I don't mind that at all. Yeah, I, I mean, ultimately, like, you'll get like 80% there. Like, if you just land like the first four chonky hits, like, you're good. 
No, absolutely. You're 100 percent right. I mean, the thing is, older soul, like when you're doing like jump H and jump D and stuff, those buttons hit so hard that you get most of the damage in, like you're saying, the first few hits. Oh my God, the damage! <laughs> nice tech, still alive here. Mac can still definitely make something happen. He's got meter. Oh, <gasps> you can see there the inner. Oh. The Alpha Plus takes it! Nice! Nice! That got so crambly. And you can see there the interaction. Chip's uh, command grab, where he turns invisible and you oh, see the leaves yeah. appear, is Strike Invul. So it will go through stuff and he will grab you, but if it's Invul on Invul, nobody will get hit. I'm actually opening up a notepad because my memory is bad and I want to <laughs> <laughs> remember some of this stuff for after. Oh, good yeah. spacing on that 2D, sniping it out is so good as a poke at those ranges. What is he doing? Whoa. He's just chilling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I, I like overall what I'm seeing from Matt. I mean, he, he has just a, a simple mix-up after, uh, after the knockdown. He's doing teleport, and that's, that's fine. That's, again, what I recommend. Just have, you know, one or two options from your knockdown just to have a, a simple game plan. So I, I love it. I love how they both, like, jumped into air dash at each other, missed, and then turned around and came right back in. <laughs> Yeah. So King Nothing just trying to get some kind of hit here. Missing barely with the 5H. Is that going to hit? No, he wow. went straight through. That's what I was saying. It's so invul. All right, DP's out. Oh, nice. And he punishes the DP. So Matt brings it all the way back. Takes game one. Very nice. Very nice. So it looks like uh, King Nothing is really... Uh, leaning on the DP once he starts getting pressured. And it's been kind of working because Matt has been dropping a couple of his strings and creating gaps, and then he's getting DP for it. But uh, as you can see there, that's the risk, right? Sometimes it doesn't work, and uh, he got punished and, and lost the game. So yeah. you have to keep that in mind. You're going to have to you know balance it out. You can't, can't lean on the DP every time. You do want to show it, and it is an important option to represent, but uh, you know, oh, can't, yeah. can't overuse it. You got to rein it back at some point. Yeah, and you also have to remember, right, like, in those kind of situations, you can also, like, backdash, and those that goes, both of those things kind of have a different suite of answers, right? Absolutely, exactly. He's going for a lot of that Gunflame Oki. Gun yeah, I, I was gonna say, but it's, it's the same thing, I think it's good. I think just having, you know, one or two, I mean, he's been doing it, like, here, yeah, he's doing it again. It's fine, because it's a good, you know, it's just a good option. I think maybe he needs like one more option, even just something simple like Needy Rocket, just something. And that was a great combo right there. That was, that was excellent. Was he gonna catch him out that? Whoa, how did that hit? It looked like he was just blocking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how that hit either. All right, King Nothing takes it, very nice. Yeah, you can see there the corner control, so important in these games, especially for Holy Order Soul. When he gets a forward throw in the corner, it just hurts so bad. Nice, Gunblaze again, is he gonna burst? Oh, he bursts at the end of the combo. It was already over. But he's got the chip passive where you can't see him coming down. It's harder yeah. to punish. Yeah, there's that DP again. Nice. Oh, so we, we've yeah. been seeing that a lot also where King Nothing is getting a lot of those air-to-air uh, -air jump P's and he's getting like two or three of them. Uh, something maybe to work on going forward would be to hit confirm that. You can just hit confirm those into, uh, into DP. So instead of just continuing to hit jump P, uh, look to see if they're hitting and then you can just cancel the DP in the air. Just get a little something a little more substantial off those air hits. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also do like jump P, jump P, jump K, because um, jump K hits upwards. So that's good too. Ooh, are we gonna see? Mm, thinking about uh, it. He was just, nope. he was on his way to chip. Just Angie, <laughs> you know, stopped, stopped for a little pit stop on the way over to chip. We are going to be getting into our last round match here between these two. Wonder how it's going to go. That last match really looked like King Nothing had the corner control, and that is what spelled disaster for Matador both times. So I'm wondering if he's going to try to avoid that this time. There's a person named Sidewinder Loop popping off in the chat. Wrong soul. You're not welcome yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like the, the game plan here. Wow, the sweep went under the overhead. That I, was, I was so... Say, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I like I really like the game plan here from from um, from King Nothing because he's recognizing that Chip is spending a lot of time in the air, so he's you know jumping around with Jump P, which is a great way to try to meet him air to air. It's just uh, you know if, if you're getting those hits and you're taking that risk of doing that, you want to be getting a little more out of it when you do get the hits, and and it's um, something that that is you know not too difficult to uh, to work into your game. I think is just when you go for those, try to hit confirm them into DP. Nice rocket. Is that gonna hit? No. 
Oh, the 2D again. That has been the... That... The, landing those 2Ds has been why King Nothing has won. He's landed them, immediately gone for the side switch, and just had that corner control, like, every time. Yep, yep. Yeah, and, and again, even though he's doing gun blaze every time, it's not that bad because it's a good option that doesn't really lose oh, yeah. to a lot of stuff. You know, if they try to throw or if they block high or if they faultless, it's going to beat a lot of a lot of defensive options. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind that he's overusing it. I'd rather that he has at least one good option and then branches out from there, you know. So I, I think that it's totally fine. Something I'm noticing from Matador is uh, King Nothing hasn't really been anti-airing him all that much, but as Chip, you have such an ability to throw off anti-air timings by using his triple jump, and I haven't really been seeing that much from him, and I think he'd be getting some mileage out of it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Order Soul is not really known for his anti-airs. His 6P is a little bit unique, so yeah, he's maybe a little bit easier to jump in on most. The thing is, you don't really get that many opportunities usually because he's jumping in on you, so. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, nothing! He went fishing, but the lake was empty. Would you say, would you say king nothing? <laughs> yeah, keep it down. Oh my god, and that is gonna seal a king nothing, gets it out in the scramble situation. You know, it's a hard knock, hard knock life sometimes for Chip, right? I mean, unfortunately, you get hit by one force break move, and then that's a quarter of your health. And we saw that at the end there. He had, like, everything going for him, and it just exploded. Yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me hop in training mode here. We'll look at a couple things super quick while we wait for the next match. Ooh, thanks so much, Omega so, Recon, for the big 3k bits. That's a lot of bits. Omega Recon, thank you so much, buddy. So, let me set this to... Limited oh, is yeah. good. Okay. So, we saw this more in game one, and then I think it started to happen less as the as they kind of got familiar with the matchup. Oh, but yeah. um, for Chip, what we were seeing at first um, is he was doing a lot of, like, sweep, and then... Uh, wrong teleport. I think oh, it's a D yeah. teleport. Yeah, he was doing a lot of this, right? Which, this is a perfectly valid option. Um, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, it can be tricky just in and by itself. So, you know, if this is your go to, nothing wrong with that at all. He, he definitely got some mileage off that. He got some of those to hit and then got another knockdown. Fantastic. Just something to maybe look at for the future that you can uh, make that, um, you know, vary your, your options a little bit is after you get a sweep, this is like the classic chip mix up is after sweep, uh, it's called a Fallus Defend Cancel. And it, it, this is maybe a little bit advanced, but it's, it's actually really not that hard to execute. So basically what you do is um, Chip has this jump 2K move, and um, you can execute it by holding one as well. So I'm doing down, back, and kick in the air. And the thing with this move, if you look at my momentum, you can see that when I do it, it immediately kills my momentum. So what you can do is actually hit uh, jump 2K, and in this case, I would do 1K, and then immediately hit another button, and uh, it's like a like a plink oh, if you're yeah. familiar with that term from like Street Fighter Four, and it'll actually cancel the startup of the move, so you get the momentum cancel, but the move doesn't actually come out. So you can do this right over their head, and it becomes very ambiguous which side you're going to land on. So this is like the classic mix-up after a sweep is you just do this, and it, it can be once you get good at it, it can be very ambiguous for the opponent to uh, to block. So maybe a little more advanced, but, you know, mess around with the training mode. Maybe you can, you know, maybe you can get used to it. So it does take a little bit of practice, but you basically just want to jump, hold down back, and then do like K. I do K and then P based on my, my layout, the arcade layout. But I just do K and then uh, P a couple of frames after. So, um, and you'll know that you get it because your momentum immediately cancels. So mm -hmm. that's something to look at. The other thing I would say is... Um, we, we mentioned at the beginning, he was doing a lot of Gatlings um, and not getting a lot of sweeps off of those hits. And I think part of the reason is uh, he was going to Far Slash a lot, which Far Slash does not chain into Sweep. Notice that I'm doing Sweep here and it's not coming out. Uh, that was 2S by mistake. But um, so you may need to look at some other Gatlings and, um, and find ones that actually do chain into Sweep so that you can hit confirm into Sweep more reliably. So, and I think this is why you see a lot of chips do um, like 6p in their ground strings so um stuff like this because 6p does chain into sweep and it has a lot of range so like you can do stuff like this you know multiple 2ks and then just 6p sweep you can just go right into oh no this does not yeah yeah this does oh no it does yeah yeah you can just do multiple 2ks so but i would just look at some of those strings and try to use some that do have the option of going into sweep um a little bit more 
And then just the last thing I wanted to show, just super quick, or do we have our next match or do we still have time? We do, we do have our right, next look. match coming up here. Yeah, let me let me do this super, super quick. Okay. So just wanted to show this very quickly, um, just this hit confirm I was talking about. So if you do meet them air to air with uh, with Order Soul, um, you can just do this. Very simple. Just use your punches to hit confirm and then just do kick into DP. Very, very simple because the kick hits up. So you can even get a ton of, uh, of you know, jump P's before you have to do the kick. Um, there, I guess he was too high, but you get the idea. So just something to look at um, in those matchups where you're you're constantly hitting them in the air with jump P. Uh, that's a good confirm for you. Cool. Thanks again, Ryan, for busting out the blackboard, helping us all out. And we're going to be getting into our next match here in just one second. Our player who was so eager that he just ran in and tried to fight King Nothing. You know, like uh, trying to <laughs> trying to take the, the throne there of the king. But it looks like... This is not a King of the Hill tournament. Not a King of the Hill tournament. As much as I wish it was. Oh, and it looks yeah. like we're going to be getting into our next one. YFNW versus Mocha. Whenever our players are ready, they can get on into it. For the record, I see somebody pinging me in the Hoop Squad Discord right now. If you're trying to ping me there, I'm juggling like 50 things behind the yeah. scenes right now. <laughs> Not the best place to contact me. If you got a question, try to drop it in the stream chat. I am looking at that. Yeah, I mean, I can only imagine what you've got going on because I've got, you know, the game coming from you. <laughs> I've got my own game. I've got my notes. i got the stream chat. I've got the Discord. Uh, it's oh, a good thing yeah. I've got three monitors. Let's just say that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> And we're, we're just waiting for our players to ready up. This is going to be um, another very funny... I feel like every matchup in Guilty Gear is hilarious, right? Like, I think it's just, like, a, a fundamental rule. Uh, and this is going to be Slayer and Dizzy. Um, and I think, uh, you know, if you look at, like, the Dust Loop page for Slayer or anything like that, the first thing it's going to say, right? It's going to say, A, Slayer is sick. B, Slayer does not like zoning a lot of the time. And he can navigate it. He does have some tools, but, like... Some characters seriously have like full screen projectile in vol like teleports or whatever, right? Slayer doesn't really have anything like that. The closest thing he's got is H Dandy, and that's a pretty big read. Um, so I can definitely see uh, some Slayers not liking Dizzy. Uh, she has the tools to just keep Slayer sad. Especially, uh, correct me if I'm horribly wrong here, Ryan, but fish is out, right? A lot of Slayer stuff hits once, um, and that fish is going to yeah. eat those. <clears throat> yeah, that's a great point, especially like basically all of his reversals only hit once. So yeah, definitely going to keep our eye on that during the match. I would say um, the, the one thing about the zoning, uh, he does have, you know, his dash is is a, is a good tool um, because of the invuln and the, the teleport aspect of it uh, to, to advance forward through some zoning patterns. So I would definitely be looking at that, but I, I agree. This is going to be a matchup of um, Slayer trying to get in and try to make up for the deficit. It's almost like you can think of it like Potemkin. You know, you, you kind of expect to take some damage mm -hmm. in the process of getting in, and the idea is that once you do get in, you're going to make up that 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 deficit. So, yeah, for we sure, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. We are waiting. It looks like for one player dropped out. We're gonna see if we can get him in. If we have to remake the lobby or something like that, we will. The Guilty Gear beta overall, fantastic. It's not the beta anymore. Now it's just life. Uh, the yeah. Guilty Gear rollback update is fantastic, but the lobbies can't, you know, like, sometimes the protons and electrons are a little bit out of alignment, so we just gotta make sure that we're all good. Um, and yes, uh, there has been a lot of character variety, which has been awesome. That's what's great about Guilty Gear, is just so many people, especially starting out, like, so much of the cast is just like, yeah, pick them, have fun. Like, there's not a lot of reasons to, like, not pick a character if you think they're sick. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, don't worry about tiers in this game. Play the character that resonates with you, the character that you think looks cool or that you like. They're they're all totally capable of, of winning in this game, so... And, uh, and also, I, I would mention that the character diversity that we're seeing is somewhat intentional. We're trying to get as many characters featured as we can. So again, as many people kind of have a chance to learn something, you know, maybe about their character, as long as, uh, you know, they can see their character, they, they might learn something, so very much intentional and sure. again thanks shout out oh, to uh, yeah. trinity who is trying to make that happen for us so yes. big thanks to him trinity is the god and we're going to be getting into this and like we were saying let's see if we see some of the things and we're just around start mop and never mind slayer's the best he can get out on anything oh big hit okay yeah counter hit it's late does ground bounce nice okay we have some pressure here nice nice okay 
I think something important that, uh, honestly, it goes under the radar and not a lot of people know it. You cannot air throw if you air dash in this game. And as a defensive option there, you saw YFNW jump and air throw at Dizzy. And jumping up and air throwing her probably would have worked. Uh, air dashing at her, I mean. And it's just something to know. I don't know if that super was intentional or not. It maybe looked like it was, but either way, very nice round there from Mocha. I like it. Mm -hmm. Try to go for the round start Mappa again. Maybe has to start digging for a different tool for round opening. Yeah, I mean, it worked round one, so why not try it again? Sure, 100%. Oh, not respecting the fish. Yeah, that's tough. Unfortunately, oh, the okay, fish... That's a real... that, that was a real mix-up. Uh -huh. I love it. That was, that was beautiful. Yeah, the fish... Dizzy, dizzy mix-ups in this game are crazy, by the way. They are very powerful, and the fish does not ask for respect. It does not wish to receive respect. It demands respect. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Ooh, try to throw. Okay, gold burst. Oh, Slayer's so scary with, with a bunch of meter, but couldn't really make anything happen. Again, the fish just plain spoiler there. Yeah, it sucks. I wonder if he could have done, like, an FB dandy or something in that scrambly situation and potentially get past the fish, but, like, you, it, it stinks because you really have to know when that fish is behind you. <laughs> like, it is, like, top priority because it will just shut down your offense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you know that the fish is coming and it's coming from behind you, you can maybe try to like get a knockdown real quick. Before, you know, cut your combo short and get a knockdown before the fish hits you, so that at least you you don't get like counter comboed basically. But uh, ooh. So, so uh, why not? Why not, uh? Sorry, why FNW is using a lot of um sweep, which. Very high reward, but we're also seeing the risk side of it, because a lot of them are getting blocked, and when they get blocked from too close, they are punishable, so they need to be careful about that. And you're seeing, you saw twice in this round, the fish ate the entirety of Pile Bunker and the entirety of Dead on Time, and that is the big risk of using fish, uh, or being Slayer in this matchup. Crosswise Heal is a great dandy follow-up to throw out occasionally against Dizzy, because it is two hits, it will hit the fish and then her, but a lot of Agreed. his other stuff is just single hit. Yeah, agreed. Oh, that's gonna hit. Yeah. Never so mind. That, that, dead on time. <laughs> yeah, that was not a fish. That was an ice uh, spike, and that it is not gonna stop dead on time. So that was a great option there. Ooh, again, not respecting the fish. Oh, and the burst. A little premature there. Yeah, and something else to know about the fish, too, is that when you hit the fish, it's like you hit a character, right? You can go into any Gatlings or any sort of cancels that you can do, so sometimes a Slayer, you can just do stuff like 5S and then dandy backwards to kind of just hit the fish and then leave. No, <gasps> absolutely. Is this going to be enough? Oh, it doesn't go for the combo. Okay. Gets the uh, jump in, though, the cross-up. He may have lost a round, but he did punch the fish in the face, and sometimes it's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a morale victory for sure. <laughs> Something, right, I'm, nice sweep. something I'm noticing is that in uh, scrambly situations, he's going for Slayer's JP a lot of the time, and I think that the two big Slayer's a huge air buttons, right, are JH or JK, and the reason is just JK is such a fantastic anti-air, and JH is like, people have called it an anti-air bait, uh, because like, it tends to just stuff stuff, and when you're coming down like that, I think reaching for JH or something is probably a better idea sometimes. Yeah. All right, nice little pressure here. Oh, wow, the reversal super. Very nice from uh, Mocha. Not quite enough. That super doesn't do that much damage, but nice. Love what I'm seeing from Mocha. Good, good, you know, usage of the meter there to close out the round. Good awareness. Love it. Love it. Man, the immediate alt F4. Is that what just happened? My man got hit by the FB spikes and just turned off his computer. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's look at a couple of things here. All right, back to the lab again. Switch to Slayer. Where even is Dizzy? Here we go. So I would say the, the simplest thing um, for Slayer here, um, the, what I noticed was he was using a ton of 2D, which is a good button, and it, it is um, a low. Um, there's a couple of things with this move. So number one, if you do it too close, uh, it's going to be punishable. So obviously you want to make sure that you're using it from a decent range so that it's uh, not punishable. I think even from like max, max range, it might even be plus on block. But um, the, the nice thing is is that when it hits, um, especially on counter hit, but as long as it hits like very meaty at least, um, you can get a pickup off of it. So just to show that very quickly, 
And this is maybe a little bit advanced, but it's really not that difficult. But if you hit this, which he did get a couple times, you can actually pick up with, with 2P. Um, so maybe something to, to look for there. And then you can get an air combo off that. So like 2P, 5P, um, stuff like that. <laughs> it is a link, so I'm missing it here, but something like that. Oh, you can also big bang. It. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah, you can do like this into this, or I, you know, I'm not a Slayer player exactly, but you know, you get the idea. Um, now, the other thing I would mention, with that said, after saying all that, I'm actually going to recommend you use less 2D. So I think you were maybe <laughs> overusing a little bit. I would say you did not use 2H at all, and I would say the majority of the time that your instinct was to hit 2D, because you wanted to threaten a low from this kind of range, you should oh, just be yeah. using 2H instead. Uh, 2H is very similar reward, and it's got almost none of the risk associated with it that, that 2D has. Um, and it fulfills basically the same purpose. It's a low. It's actually a low that's low and vulnerable. And the beautiful thing about it is that it's pretty easy to hit confirm by itself and you don't need to counter hit. So for example, if you have meter, you can just do this. And when you see it hit, big bang upper. And this is something you can practice in training mode. They just added the random block feature. So you can put the dummy on random block. And it's a great way to practice this kind of thing. Um, I think you do uh, guard random here and then you can just do this. And when you see it hit, uh, just practice doing uh, Big Bang Upper After. So something that you can practice by yourself in training mode and will go a long way. Wow, she really blocked me five times in a row. <laughs> Dude, this yeah. is a gun. So, yeah, some, something like that. I have it on. I have the yeah. stagger on uh, really quick, but you get the idea. You can also, so, if you're not without, if you don't have any meter, you can just go into 2D uh, to just to get the quick knockdown right. off of it also. Yeah, exactly. That might be a little bit harder to hit confirm, although I just did it there. Not, yeah, not, not too difficult. So Never mind, Ryan's it just sick. <laughs> it, it just takes a little bit of practice. So, mm -hmm. But but it, this is a great way to, like I was saying, when you have that instinct that you want to attack them low from, from this kind of range, instead of doing 2D, I would recommend doing 2H. 2D is also good, but it, it is a little bit riskier. So um, that, that's my, my oh, recommendation yeah. there. 100%. Um, also, yes, if you're keeping track in the uh, chat, it is a low that low crushes. So yes, it will make yeah. itself whiff. Yes, oh, yeah, if two yeah. Slayers do 2D or 2H at the exact same time, they will just both win. They'll just both power pose and nothing happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? Uh, oh, yeah, we were talking about Jump H. Um, yeah. I did I did see him using it a bit. Um, you know, this is just a classic Slayer tool. Um, just really high reward, very hard to anti-air pretty quick. So something else you can just kind of go to. Um, we can show some of that Dizzy stuff you were talking about also. I think it was a great point. I have no idea what Dizzy's inputs are. Okay, there we go. So... Let's just do a fish here. So one of the things that you had mentioned, Bones, was uh, the fish actually are like, it's like similar to Eddie or some other characters where you can kill the fish and it acts as if you hit the player. So you get you can cancel out of it. So like there's really common stuff like you can do this and then you can actually cancel out of your uh, 5K. So you could do something like this um, to simultaneously get rid of the fish and then immediately go after Dizzy. So something a little more matchup specific uh, that you could look at as well. Um, but yeah, I would say just as far as the matchup goes from the Slayer's perspective, it's just very important that you respect the fish. Cause like we were saying at the beginning, most of his stuff is one hit. So, you know, a little, little tough to really contend. Yeah, hundred percent. And also um, you threw it out there and I, I just realized I didn't see it too much um, unless I was totally missing it. 5K is such a fantastic, mm -hmm. just, like one of the best buttons that man has ever made right like it's plus on block links into itself um it is just such a space controlling monster and it's really important to throw it out there like that as a block string is so hard to deal with sometimes yeah 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 it, it wasn't as good in exert because it didn't link into itself in exert unless i'm like completely misremembering uh but in this game it does link into itself so like you're saying you get this is like a totally valid pressure string you do have to learn the timing because this is a link, but uh, yeah, this is totally valid in this game. Yeah, people are confirming in chat only only on counter hit and exert. So yeah, um, you can just do like four of them, and then honestly, if you're starting out and you're just trying to get some decent damage at any time, you can cancel five k into FB Dandy into Bunker if they're crouching, and it does an unholy amount of damage. Oh, yeah. It just does so much. It actually, wait no, sorry, that works on standing too. There's a lot of fun, not incredibly complicated Slayer combos you can do that hurt a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, and I, I know all the advice I just gave was uh, from Slayer's perspective, just to mention, uh, you know, good stuff to the Dizzy player. 
I liked most of what you were doing. So, uh, you know, besides just improving on some of the stuff you were already doing, you know, making your mix-ups a little trickier, you know, maybe adding and throw in your mix-ups a little more. But overall, I liked what I was seeing. You were already doing some really real mix-ups and getting some good conversions off your straight hits, which, you know, you, you had the right strings, you know, like 5H, 2H and stuff like that, or uh, was it 5H sweep? I forget now. But, um, but yeah, so really, honestly, not too much I can even say. Uh, you're, you're definitely on the right track already. So good stuff. Yeah. For sure. And I do apologize if me and Ryan focus on the people who are taking the L's in these matches. I think there's just usually a lot easier things to grapple onto and give feedback. And also, I think uh, losing is fantastic in tournament, right? Because you get to learn exactly what it is that killed you. Exactly. Exactly. Not not to mention also uh, the people who win, we may see them again. So maybe we'll have another, another opportunity later tonight to, you know, analyze them a little bit more. So... For sure, for sure. And I think we are ready to get into our next match here. Bam! Um, it looks like it's going to be a repeat of two characters, but I think this matchup is going to look a whole lot different. Um, this is going to be Dizzy and Potemkin. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm uh, a little bit familiar with Thai. He is a, a frequent on uh, Sejam's stream. Played Sejam a couple times. And uh, it makes sense that our player named 360 plus PP is a uh, Potemkin player. Even though that's not the input, but you know, we respect the hustle. It's, 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 a, it's a state of mind, though. You know, it's, it's a lifestyle. You know, it's like, it's like FAB, you know? It's like, doesn't matter what game he plays. It's FAB. It's a way of life, you know? <laughs> uh, versus Dizzy. Immediate round star 5S. Such a friggin' good button, especially because it would munch right through Hammerfall, right? Uh, sorry, which, which button was that? Uh, what, was this his multi-hit standing normal? I thought it was 5S. Oh, sorry. yes, yes. Uh, I forget if it's far slash or six slash, but yes, yeah, that would absolutely destroy Hammerfall, absolutely. Yeah, so Thai doing a really good job of, of zoning so far. So th this matchup is really gonna put uh, Potemkin's ability to flick to the test. Um, going to be really important in neutral, especially the way Thai is approaching the matchup. Uh, going to be pretty important that Potemkin flicks some of the easier stuff to flick. Like this ice spike here. Yeah, it's tough. I think he tried, and that's why he got hit. So as long as you're trying, I, I think it's good. Yeah, ooh, looks like he just kind of missed his pot buster input there. Unfortunate for Omar. Yeah, I got 5P. Okay, gets the jump in. All right. Mega Fist, you know, sometimes a jump back Mega Fist is just what you need. It didn't matter what you were trying to do. Yeah, I mean, it is overhead. Catch some snoozing sometimes. In the corner, empty jump, nothing. I feel like Omar is being surprisingly patient for a pot player. Usually when they're close to you, they are doing a half circle back. That's just life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ganta, Mega Fist twice. Oh, tech and then gold burst. Okay, all right. So Thai does take it there. And Thai definitely is aware of the power of that button in this matchup. He is not trying to get Hammerfall a single day in his life. Yeah, and thank you to uh, Heathery in, in chat. Uh, yeah, that's why I was confused, because I, I knew it was a different input in Exert. So that, that button is 4S in Exert, apparently, and in this game, it's just far slash. Okay, I took so. the average. That's why I said 5S, you know? Yeah, exactly. Close enough, right? Like, we, we know what we're talking about here. <laughs> But yeah, that, that button is very good. Um, all right, so we got a, a Ooh, character, character switch, switch here. I'm going to go into the, the other grappler in the game here. I was just going to make that joke. <laughs> That's not a joke. He's actually... <laughs> yeah, it's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, nice little hit confirmed to Ice Spike. It didn't combo, but it worked, so... And you saw there the power of the Gatling. Uh, even if you hit the fish, just being able to go into another normal can really catch Dizzy trying to just run, like, uh, offense without thinking that you're going to hit her. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right, gets away from the ice uh, spike there. Whoa, Whoa accidental. Well, yeah, I don't think he meant to do that. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it is unfortunate. It was just far enough away to make it entirely whiff, too. I like the awareness there from Thai. So Thai setting out the fish, but then not actually pressuring on wake up. Because Soul's DP does hit multiple times. So the fish is not necessarily going to save her. Wow, it just, uh, just flicks him off. <laughs> I like it. I like it. If you're going to go down, you know, go down in oh, style. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> That is the most player expression thing I've ever seen in my life. Guilty Gear is a perfect game. <laughs> oh, yeah, the fish. Yeah, fish keeping him in the corner. The fish laser is so oppressive. 
I love what Thai's doing right now. That was a great backup, set the bubble, and then very tricky to use the second air dash. Dizzy does have two air dashes to uh, immediately go back in, so it was kind of like a, a trick there, making it look like he was going to zone. Wow, oh, that shipped, shipped Omar. Yeah, Omar was not, unfortunately, using Faultless Defense. I know it takes a while, I think, especially if you're not really used to Guilty Gear as a whole, um, just to get used to using Faultless in situations like that. But at a minimum, right, I think actually incorporating Faultless into your game plan casually is pretty difficult uh, to get used to as a mechanic. But at the minimum, if something's going to chip you to death, just get used to Faultless thing. Like, get that into your muscle memory because you, that's exactly when you should be using it. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree 100%. It definitely takes some time. You have to get some level of comfort with the game um, oh, yeah. to understand when you want to faultless in pressure and, you know, how much meter it expends and stuff like that. So I 100% agree. Just at a very... Oh, I hate this color. It's uh, just at a very simple, you know, level. Just put in your mind, if I'm going to get chipped, I should I should faultless, you know, and just uh, start with that. Um, so just real quick, um, it looks like we're almost ready for our next match already, but, um, you know, great stuff from Thai. I think we'll see him again. I'm not going to spend too much time on him. I overall like what he was doing. Just a couple of quick suggestions for, um, the Potemkin player. Um, obviously you, you went to Mega Fist a couple times. Good option every now and then. Love it. Uh, you may want to experiment a little bit with 2S. This is a great button in this game because it does vacuum. So doing like simple chains into 2S can be very tricky. You don't even have to get fancy with Hammerfall Break and stuff. Eventually you'll probably want to work that in, but just simple stuff like this into Potemkin Buster can be very, very tricky. Um, the other thing is uh, when you get knockdowns, um, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give you just a very solid base. You want two good options. So a low, which uh, 5K is an amazing low. This thing has a million active frames, so when you get a knockdown, it is, uh, I have it on all block, but when, when you do get the knockdown, um, it is, oh, it's not random. It is uh, very easy to time this as a meaty. Very, very easy. Um, and you can get it like extremely meaty. I was, I'm trying to get like max meaty here, but like that. Um, so yeah, so that that's a really good low option and it chains into good stuff. And then once you start setting up with that, just 6K, very simple. There's very high level, like advanced stuff you can do off 6K. Don't worry about that for now. Just 6K into sweep and get another knockdown. Very good, you know, option. Or 6K into mirror. Very, very good option. So, and it's a great way to just spend your meter with the Tempkin. So, yeah. 100%. And it looks like we are about ready to get into our next one. There's three players in the lobby. I don't know if we're just going to be doing a free for all or what it is that we're looking at here, Ryan. Robin. Round Robin turn Yeah, just King of the Hill here. Oh, yeah. Not sure. We may have to tell I'm, one I'm of them to get out. I'm going to take five seconds and grab some water while they're starting. All right. Two seconds. You grab some water, Ryan. How's it going, Chatteroonie? Y'all chilling? Y'all having a good one? Yeah, I'm not sure who right, this I'm, is. Yeah. Wow, don't do fast. a lot of water. Don't do a lot of water. <laughs> so like a mini fridge? Oh, yeah. Looks like it's going to be Log and Zabinx, I think. Not sure who this Eureka fella is. I'm going to kick somebody. Okay, he's gone. Never mind. Okay. Figured it out. Figured it out. Eliminated by Robokai2H because you didn't know yet to FD it. We've all been there, dude. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a very weird thing because if you have Guilty Gear experience, your brain tells you, okay... I'm blocking something air to air. Mm -hmm. Typically, you don't have to fall list those. Or your brain tells you, I'm blocking a projectile in the air. Don't have to fault list those either. So what is it about this <laughs> air to air projectile that suddenly I have to fault list? It's just like a yeah. weird anomaly. I think it's because it's technically a grounded normal coming from Robokai, because it is his 2H. So it has grounded normal properties and that means that it requires uh, an fd so very strange very unique kind of thing uh don't feel bad i i still do that myself so <laughs> yeah i was gonna say like you can know that it does that you can play hundreds yeah, of exactly. matches <laughs> experiencing it you're still gonna get hit by it occasionally and just go like why <laughs> there have been times when i have seen it coming at me and i know it's gonna hit me and i think to myself there's something weird about this what is it that I have to do here again? And then it hits me and I'm like, oh, right, I have to FD. So, you know, it's just like one of those things, exactly like you're saying, it just takes a bunch of experience to get the instinct to FD it. 
Yeah, because it's like, even in situations like, okay, I'm jumping in on Robokai and I see it, right? Like, yeah, I'll have to eat. Easy peasy. But what about situations where you get popped up in the air, you air tech, exactly. and there's this thing flying up at you off screen? No, exactly. Exactly. Cool. And we're just waiting here for our players to get started. You know, they're both, they're warming up their hands. It's cold. They're, they got trying to make sure they're in peak gamer condition. This is, by the way, going to be Bike and Abba. Nice. Okay. Very interesting matchup. Very interesting. There's... There's some potential for some really like high level stuff here where like ABBA does Danzai when they expect a counter so that you can like armor through the counter and like crazy stuff like that. We'll see uh, We'll see what we actually get out of this matchup because this could go a lot of different ways here. So I, I know what you mean and this is not me downplaying ABBA players at all but it's really funny to hear potential for high level stuff like doing Danzai. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but it, it it is. I know it sounds funny, but it is. It definitely is. Yeah, 100%. Oh, very nice. He mean, he's swinging. Oh, trying to go yeah. for the command grab, just trying to get the party started. Yeah, and it looks like Log is uh trying to find an opportunity to get into Moroha here. That is always step one with ABBA. Okay, very nice. I believe that's 6H. I honestly am not... Oh, and there's Tanzai hitting. Um... Her normals are just, they're all just swinging the key, so, you know, some of the normals, especially in regular non moroha mode, wow, the dizzy. Zabinx got dizzy just like that? Oh, man, that's brutal. Is he dead? Oh, oh okay. Nice, nice. That was sick. That was sick. Yep, yeah, that sounds about right for Abba. Yeah. <laughs> all right, love the blood pack there. He saw that Zabinx backed up, so I love just using the raw blood pack to get into moroha mode. Absolutely love it. Nice simple combo here. Oh, I love it. Okay, so that that's a little bit more of an advanced combo. He went for the Rekka combo there, and you do have to delay the third hit of the Rekka. It actually might not even be possible what he tried on lightweights, but um, cool to see that he's aware that that combo exists. So, very nice. Dang, and just like that, Log immediately taking that round. And, you know, Biken is consistently... Oops, I didn't uh, hit the spectator button, I guess. Bam. Uh... Biken is uh, consistently rated very highly by people who play Guilty Gear, right? Like, she's frequently yeah. cited as one of the most powerful characters in the game, but um, also has very little life, and against a character like Abba, that might be the difference between you getting hit twice or three times to be dead, right? No, definitely, definitely. I mean, tiers really in this game, until you get, like, really, really high level, the tiers just don't matter. I yep. mean, you know, the stuff that makes Biken top tier in this game is not going to matter until you're really playing like some amazing players so you know and and the problem is her her disadvantages do come out at these lower levels like you're saying the low life so um you know it could be it could be tough actually um you know learning a character like this if it's reverse just to keep himself alive you can see there the portrait is flashing he's very close to being stunned and there it is yeah yeah all right, and yeah, just a simple jump in, a couple of hits, all that was needed to close it out. All right, so Log uh, looking pretty strong right now. Nice. Okay, gets the grab into the into the uh, key change. I I like what I'm seeing. Log looking pretty strong, honestly. I mean, he, he looks like he's got good awareness of. Um, there's that delay wreck again. Good awareness of the matchup too. You can see him doing like some strings and stopping, trying to see if there's a counter coming out. Mm -hmm. So definitely looks like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, it is really important to hold back almost sometimes against Biken, but unfortunately getting caught there by the Rekka, and now he's in Goku. This is very bad. Yeah. All right, yeah, and Log just kind of runs over Zabinx, so tough break there. Um, I don't even know. Um, I mean, I can show some stuff. I don't even know that it <laughs> needs to be shown. No, no, no. I mean, there, there's plenty to talk about, but... Uh, it's just stuff that, you know, I could easily talk about. It doesn't have to necessarily be shown, but I'll, I guess I'll show it anyway. Um, you know, I feel like we, we just have to talk about Biken's counters for a second. Yeah, and maybe this will also, sure. uh, um, you know, kind of show some people in chat that maybe are not as familiar with Biken, what she's all about and why she's so strong. So the, the kind of quote-unquote gimmick, for lack of a better word, with Biken is uh, she basically has free... Alpha counters, whatever you want to call them. Alpha counters, V reversal, dead angle, whatever whatever term you want to use to call it. Um, she, she gets them for free. She has a bunch of them. And they cost no meter. So every other character in the game... Uh, let me just do like a very... Oh, this is not a good character to pick for this. Let's do this. So if I record a simple block string here... So every other character in the game can do this, right? Where... 
I spend, oh, it's on 170 meter. Well, I'm spending meter. That's that's Biken's alpha counter, um, her, her dead angle. Which Every character in the game has. For the record, mm -hmm. uh, Biken does have a bizarrely good dead angle. <laughs> Not that you yeah. frequently use it, but. Yeah, yeah. But alternatively to doing that, while she's blocking, she can actually input back, down, back, down, and then any button, and every button does a different, essentially, alpha counter. So for example, one of the most common would be S, which looks like this. Uh, she also has H, which looks like this, better for long range stuff. She has uh, P, which yet, yeah, I have to wait till the end of the string here because it doesn't have invuln, but it, it's more of an antier one. She, she goes uh, upwards. And then she's also got K, which is like a, a invuln run. You can actually run through things or run behind things. Um, and then she's got D, which we could talk at length about D counter. There's all sorts of stuff with this I'm not going to get into now. Oh, I'm not hiding D. Um, what's happening here? There, that's D counter. The D counter has follow ups and puts them in all these special states. I'm not going to talk about that, but this is what makes Biken so strong because every character basically has to play differently against her because of the threat of the counter. And uh, we didn't really see that much here, and they're potentially very powerful against ABBA. Now, of course, I mentioned before the match started, Abba does have counterplay. She can use Danzai when she predicts the counter coming and actually armor the counter and absolutely demolish Biken. But they're so fundamental to Biken's game plan, I think you still have to use them to some extent. And the fact that she has so many and they get they have different uh, purposes and different um, kind of utility, you can mix up what they do. And you know, if you think that she's going to anticipate it with Danzai, you can do K-counter and just run past her. Um, stuff like that. So um, I think it's kind of crucial that you use them. And uh, I would definitely practice. It's the kind of thing you can practice in training mode, just like I am now. Just get used to um, the input, you know, just because it, it is a kind of a weird input. You have to go from from back to down. Um, and, you know, on like S counter, you can get a combo off this because of the stagger. So I would definitely look at that and, you know, work on, uh, you know, working that into your game. Yeah, for sure. And we're just waiting for our next... We're actually in top eight, Ryan, if you can believe it. Already? Yeah. Already. Oh. Trinity is an absolute beast. Sorry, one second. Um, yeah, and to kind of just read off who is in top eight right now, to do a quick poll, we have uh, Eureka, El Gamondo, Zonermane, Johnson, uh... And Ragnall, Seth, Sven, and BTF. Sven, we've seen before. Zoner main is a hoop cup uh, resident by heart. And yeah, it looks like uh, the first one we're going to be getting here is Eureka Elgamondo, winners top eight. Nice, nice. All right. So, and for, for everybody watching, you know, this is a little bit of a learning experience for us also. You know, we're trying to get a feel for this. We're going to be doing more of these. So, um, you know, this was... Uh, the biggest tournament that um, Trinity had had the opportunity to run, especially I think like specifically on a weeknight. So we, our number one priority, you know, as much as we want to help people, our number one priority right now is making sure that we don't run all night. So, you know, we're trying to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Once we get a feel for it, we're refining a little oh, bit because yeah. our second goal is to help as many people as possible. And the way we do that is by highlighting as many people as possible, showing as many matches. So, um, you know, expect uh, in the in the future for the next ones, um, you know, that we have a, a little bit better feel of the timing and we can, you know, show some more matches. I'm, I'm shocked that we're already in top eight. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's, we, it's, you know. we basically told them free for all, just play your matches unless we're calling you for yeah. stream, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. I will also take this opportunity, I'll probably say this again later, but anybody who entered the tournament, I know, you, you know, it was probably, um, you were looking for the opportunity to get some feedback and get some direction on, on your gameplay. If you did get eliminated and you didn't have a chance to play on stream, which is going to be a majority of people, uh, you can always enter again in the next one, or I'm going to start to do um, reviews on my stream probably once a week. So if you were in this tournament and uh, you didn't get a chance to get featured and you want to send me some replays, reach out to me. I'll, I'll be posting about it on Twitter. You can reply to my tweet and uh, I'll have a way for you guys to submit matches and, and I'll try to review them on my stream. And you, you just send me your actual tournament matches from the tournament. So I want to make sure everybody, you know. I feel I feel bad, you know, they, for the people that are excited. They want they want feedback, and then you know they didn't get on stream. So, for sure. Um, and Ryan, I want to talk about a sticky issue with you really quick. Here's the fun sticky sure. issue. 
Uh, mm -hmm. One of our players who just stepped into our yonder lobby, right? Oh, They've yeah. They've got over a thousand wins versus three hundred losses, which is theoretically <laughs> not that. That's a good score, right? Um, mm -hmm. We did put in the rules. We said this that if I think me personally, I am the judge, jury, executioner. If I think you're too good for this beginner's tournament, I will yeet you out, and you will become a buy. You should take this as a compliment, and you should enter other tournaments, which there is plenty of. Uh, but we'll let our match play out here, and then we'll do the analysis uh, after. Afterwards, uh, we will say congratulations. <laughs> You're too good. Leave uh, if we have to, and we'll give the other player the W. Just so, just so everyone knows before we're stepping into this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's obviously completely subjective, right? Like, what do you consider a beginner? Yeah. And e even at like intermediate levels, there's plenty of stuff that we could talk about and room for improvement. So, you know, this isn't really that serious of a tournament. Um, we just want to make sure, you know, that it's the right environment for the for people that are like truly beginners that that want to learn. Um, so like, like you said, but, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. No, no big deal either way. So, yeah. and I mean, you know, it's really easy to just think that you're more of a beginner than you are. And again, take it as a compliment, right? If someone like me is just like, no, seriously, you're too good. Please leave. It's not me like, uh, yelling at somebody or anything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're just waiting for our players to ready up here. Uh, also, thanks so much, everybody, for chilling out and watching this with us. I hope this has been fun. Um, also, yeah, I didn't have the Dolce cam, but she is right behind me hanging on my bed. Everybody, this is my bunny Dolce. Thank you, Dolce, for keeping us all company. Cool. Nice. It looks like we're getting in there. Oops, I got the big Ryan cam up. Get out of here, Ryan. <laughs> all right, so we got Order Soul versus May. So, uh, so first May we're seeing, uh, seeing Order Soul again. But uh, excited to see May. Excited to see May. Mm -hmm. I, I like I like May, except for her voice. But this is perfect because I don't really have high game oh, sound yeah. currently due to the setup. So this is like peak May for me, honestly. Yeah, everyone told us in the beginning to turn the volume up, and uh, you know, I'm a little angry, but it's okay. Yeah. All right. So a little bit of uh, feeling each other out here. I love the charge here. Yeah, just get the level three. Love it. Okay. All right, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, this is kind of what I would expect. Uh, you know, Order Soul trying to meet her in the air using his good jump attacks, you know, jump K, jump H. Uh, May is just naturally going to spend a lot of time in the air regardless of the matchup, so um, it's going to kind of be on Order Soul to meet her up there and, and bring her back down to the ground. Oh, hits the level 3 rocket. Doesn't quite get a conversion, but that's okay. Got a little bit of damage off it. That's more than enough. Jackhound. That could have led into huge damage. I don't know what it's like to try to juggle uh, Haas with those, though. Yeah. It looked like he was a little bit far, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like what I'm seeing. Yeah, both just, just swinging. See, what's what's important here is that in when you're playing like this and, and you're trying to, you know, you're trying to just... It, it, this is like... There's a lot of jokes about, like, air footsies and stuff like that in games like this, but really that that is what this is, where both players, you're not just, like, playing footsies on the ground, you're kind of swinging in the air, and it's kind of due to the nature of May being a very airborne character. But what's important is that when you swing like this, perfect, is that you are swinging with buttons that actually do something when they hit. You know, you don't want to just be getting straight hits and that's it. You want to be swinging with things you can actually convert from and know how to convert from them. So that was a perfect example of that huge counter hit 5H. Yeah, for sure. And May has such a, a powerful assortment of air buttons to throw around that give her gigantic reward on counter hit and stuff. They just huge, like, melty blood pop-up counter hit states. Oh, nice. Got Caught him with the overhead. Uh, that, that force break is an overhead, weirdly enough. It's mostly used in combos to, to pick them up off the ground, but it is in itself also an overhead. Right, nice little punish there. Good block on the overhead. Yep, you always have to remember that Charge 6H is indeed an overhead, and my man Eureka is zooming. Yeah. Whoa, Whoa! the backwards hitting. Okay, and he went for the combo, missed the ID, but he went for it. That's good. Aim for Got the rider, not the horse. Gets hit by the 2D. It is... Uh, uh, vertical dolphins recover bizarrely fast on whiff, and you always have to be ready for it. Oh, wow. A little too quick on the cancel there. The overhead kiss, uh, even though he didn't jump, he was still throwing Vuln from the block stun. The six age loops. <laughs> oh, there it is again. That overhead, very tricky. All right, I like the burst. That's not the error. Gets the ground, uh, ground slide. 
Yeah, so Eureka has the right idea with these combos. He's just, you know, that, that part is hard. The part that he keeps dropping, he is trying to do like IED jump P, and it, it is tricky. It takes some practice. Yeah, for sure. But uh, but but the idea is there, and that that's step one. So that was such fantastic. a beautiful DP on reaction to the dolphin. Eureka's trying his best to adapt to the dolphin neutral. Oh. The level three DP hitting on the way down. All right, rocket. Oh. oh. Okay. Nice. Got behind. Nice little punish. Wow, Maze jump is so fast. She actually got over the gun blaze again. Backwards hitting jump H, and he gets the conversion. Sick from Eureka. Great presence of mind. He did that twice. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was. We talked, we, we talked a lot about jump H in the last Order Soul match, but here it's really shining now. Mm -hmm. Again, he's got that KOF like short hop, and if it counters and you're sliding on the ground, even from that far away, you saw that he got that Gatling, which got him the win. Yep, yep. So yeah, I mean. Uh, what I was saying before, I, this is something that I've been seeing lately with with other May players as well that I, that I've been uh, you know analyzing and, and looking at. It, it's you're you're getting a lot of straight hits, but none of them are really leading to anything. Like here, what is this going to lead to? Yeah, see, like he, he dropped, and you know, there's nothing wrong with dropping. That was a little bit of a weird height. Maybe he thought he was going to close slash, and the idea was good. But it's important that you get conversions off these straight hits. Otherwise, in a matchup like this, you're never going to be able to keep up. Because Order Soul is going to hit you once, he's going to do half your life. Beautiful air throw there from Eureka, chucking him back into the corner. See, like, all these oh, jump yeah. H's, he could be getting stuff off of these. Man, you nice. see, that is okay. one of those cases where May's uh, air acceleration is so important that she hit him so high up with that JH and he blocked it. But by the time they reached the ground, she was plus. Yep, yep. And that was a great finish there. Again, um, we haven't seen Eureka aware of that overhead. And so uh, May, very good use getting that overhead for the last bit of damage. A couple of hits. Big 6H. Uh, again, a little too soon. Okay. 6H, no overhead kiss. Okay. I waited a little bit too long. It looked like to press the button there. Nice. Perfect little combo. Excellent. Okay, got some momentum here. Nice, nice. Okay, one more hit. Nice! That that might have been a DP save Oki there. That was interesting. Oh, level 2 banner revolver. God, that did so much damage. El Gamondo going for yeah. the Yomi counter from full screen. Oh! Oh, nice! <laughs> the D-hoop set behind. Comboing into the horizontal dolphin. That was sick. That was sick. Man, he timed that so perfectly. Hell yeah. We're going to be getting it's into funny our last too, one. It's funny, too, because I was going to mention, I was going to wait until after that, uh, but it, that was a perfect opportunity to talk about it. We haven't been seeing a lot of hoop sets, but I actually think that that's, it looks intentional, especially now that we saw him use it there, because against Order Soul, it's such a fast-paced match that you're not necessarily going to have time to set a hoop. You know, in the time that it takes you to do that, he's already hitting you with jump H. So, you know, it's similar to like Venom, where you know, as a Venom player, I can tell you, you're not going to have time to summon a lot of balls against Order Soul. You got to get the knockdown first. So, you know, I think that's uh, kind of what we're seeing here. So, that that's great awareness if that is the case. For sure, for sure. Both of them just flying around. Eureka kind of gets the first fast confirm, but ultimately 2 pay 2 pay 2 2 d is just there for the knockdown, not doing a lot of damage on its own. Alright, burst out. Just taking some notes here, actually. See some stuff I like here. And it looks like, I could be horribly wrong, someone pointed this out in chat too. I think that El Gamondo might be, um, oh sorry, the names are actually switched, my bad. Eureka it looks like may be trying to break his run with slashback instead of barrier yeah. which is not a great idea uh that is yeah. more meter expensive and also you can't block for like 20 frames yeah i i did notice that as well i was going to mention that afterwards i was going to show that in training mode i definitely agree oh, with that yeah the big that is uh, it, it, if that is not intentional that is a problem that definitely needs to be fixed yeah just use two different buttons it's okay yeah yeah <laughs> JH trades almost always in Soul's favor. So this is this is game three, right? It's one one. This, this is game three. It's one one. Yeah. Whoa, oh, wall nice. stick, but didn't have enough quite time to convert off it. Going for the pressure. 
All right, just gets a little 2H, a little bit of damage, not bad. Oh, again, the <laughs> counter hit 2H. He tried to swing there, but an interesting property of Gold Burst is unlike regular Burst, they are not vulnerable at all. You cannot punish the recovery, even if it's from high up there. So you saw his button is whiffed straight through May. That's true, although I will say there's one caveat there. You can throw it on the way down, because it, it's strike yes. in Vuln. So if you have godlike awareness, you can actually air throw it on the way down. But uh, that's that's pretty... I would not expect that. <laughs> it's pretty advanced. Someone even, in the chat... Even at a very high level, you, you, you don't see that, so... Someone asked in the chat, are questions okay? Questions are fantastic. I'll uh, ask all the questions yeah. you can while Eureka potentially is about to close out this round. Gets the throw. You activate Gold Burst by just bursting whenever you're not in hit or block stun. Or on the ground. Yeah. Alright, so... Open up training mode. Fantastic stuff there for our players, Eureka. Wait, why are they going back in? It's not first three, is it? What are we doing? Trin, help! Trin! Did we, was it not 1-1? One, one? Did we miss something? Or I, I, did they miss something? I think it was 1-1. One, one. Can anybody in chat confirm? I, I thought that it was. Help! Yeah, people are confirming it was 1-1 one, one and that was 2-1. They may just think that it's a uh, first of three all the way through top eight, uh, which it's not. So this is yeah. just a match for funsies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? I guess we'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, sure. But uh, yeah, maybe when they come back, take yourself off spectators so that they don't uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. queue up again. But um, yeah, it's pretty funny. Got to keep in mind, you know, for, for, for those watching, we do have people who this is their first tournament and that's that's awesome so yeah they might you know. think every round is a first to 100 unfortunately oh, they okay they just realized <laughs> they just realized the disrespect they're clapping it up showing off for the hey, crowd there we go. all right nice, if one nice. of our players can just quickly kill the other one or just kick your router that also works yeah that that works too all right so let me hop in training mode here and we'll all look right. at a couple of quick things that was a great match though um that's a dope match yeah let's see here okay so first of all uh, I'm gonna execute this from the May side, but uh, yeah, for who was it? Eureka was the Order Soul player. Yeah. Uh, Wait, hold on. Gotta just sec. take a second. Let me just switch mm -hmm. over to you, Ryan. Oh, Bam. sure, sure. All right, you're good. All right, so we gotta take a second to talk about FD breaks. So what we were seeing in those games were, I guess you would call it like a slashback break. Which, um, so I actually made a video on this, um, uh, having to do oh, with throws. Yeah. So um, you can check that out on my uh, on my Twitch page, but. Um, basically, when you dash in this game and then you stop, you get this like slide animation, and this slide animation is very bad. You can cancel it into normals and stuff, so like stuff like this, but you cannot block during it. So if your goal is to advance and then block, this is not what you want to oh, be doing. Yeah. And this is why when you watch higher level play, you see this a lot. This is called an FD break. So basically, you you dash and then you tap FD and it and it stops you, and you don't get that slide animation and you're blocking immediately on frame one. Um, so what you don't want to do is do that with slash and heavy slash because uh, you will do a slash back and if you don't slash back anything, you cannot block for a certain number of frames. So um, want to be very careful with this. Now with that said, I actually didn't even know this myself. Like I said, we're all learning tonight. It actually looks like this completely stops your momentum, whereas there is still a little bit of a slide with FD. So maybe there is some application for this if you want to get like really, really you know, technical with, you know, your movement. You want to be very, very precise and stop on a dime. But uh, I would say, in general, I wouldn't recommend doing this unless you really, really know what you're doing. So, um, yeah. So just use any buttons that are not uh, dust and then specifically not slash and heavy slash and you will get a faultless instead. So that's number one. The other thing I just want to mention real quick before we jump into our next match, uh, for our, our May player, um, uh, a couple of things I noticed, um, you were getting some some hits like like this, um, and then like going straight into sweep. There was actually one spot in particular where you hit this and then went straight into sweep and it actually got burst. Uh, this is a very common thing that a lot of characters can do uh, if they have a chainable 2P, is you can actually make your string kind of burst safe. So you can throw in like one 2P into sweep, and this is gonna be essentially like completely burst safe. Uh, you wanna be holding down back while you do it, but, um, let me see if I can, uh, this might take too long, but let's see. While you're doing that, let me just say in the chat, someone says that only used for run up and block. Kind of, except just remember that in general, being able to safely stop can be useful even if you don't want to like oh, block. Yeah. <laughs> like you might want the possibility to block. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's just it's just like better than having the slide animation where you have the potential for getting hit. Yeah, and you can throw. Exactly. So let me see if I can do this here. So if this hits, yeah, see? So basically the idea here is that you, you're you doing a jump in and then like Soul, for example, Kai does this also, Soul does this. Anyone with like a chainable 2P, you basically can hit 2P and you see on my inputs, I'm holding down back. And what's gonna happen is with the right timing, uh, and you can look at this in training mode, if they burst this, um, you're just gonna get a block because your, your 2P is gonna stop chaining. So, um, yeah, I mean, it depends on the timing with me. You might have to do it a little slower, but um, yeah, just something that you want to look at um, in uh, in training mode. And then the other thing is when you do get a 2D with May, uh, you can cancel that into hoop set. Um, unless I'm am I wrong about that in this game. Uh oh, Ryan's lying. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, there we go. OK, yeah, yeah. Oh, is it not a cancel? What is happening here? I don't know why it's only happening sometimes. Again, we're we're learning tonight together. I'm not. I'm certainly not a May player, but uh, it is a cancel, right? Okay, yeah. I think I'm just doing it too soon or something. But yeah, something that you want to look at. Oh, is it half circles? Oh, that's why I'm doing quarter circle. That is exactly why. Thank you. Um, so yeah, this is something that you want to look at um, for your Oki. I don't even know which hoop set is the right one. I think it's K. Um, maybe it's P. P, uh, I don't know. I don't know which one is right, but um, maybe even D. I don't know. But this is a great way to lock down the opponent after you've knocked them down and force them to block, or at least try to try to convince them to block. Obviously, if they want to DP, they can DP. But uh, but uh, yeah, people in chat are saying D and H also can work uh, depending on the spacing. So um, yeah, just something to look at um, to improve your Oki. You can still do basically all the same stuff you would normally do after the hoop set. It just gives them something else that, uh, you know, especially for characters that don't have reversals, you can basically force them to, to block on wake up. So, yeah, fantastic. And with that, Ryan, I think we're going to go ahead and get into our next match, if that's OK with you. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I figured since we're running pretty quick here, I would spend a few extra minutes there sure. in, in training mode. But yes. yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't jump into it. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, you know, Guilty Gear doesn't have a lot of what I'll call the uh, the Puff Peach matchups. There's not going to be a lot of surprise top eight matchups that take like 20 minutes. Guilty Gear is usually pretty fast. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that that's why I was very interested in having this set up with the training mode, because the matches sometimes go so quick that we can't even, you know, touch on everything, so. For sure. And whenever we're ready here, let me just give Fire the starting gun. Oh, my chat room just said, welcome to the chat room. Welcome, me. Glad to be here. <laughs> I don't know why that happened. And we'll get started here in just a little bit. By the way, everybody, thank you so much for dropping all the follows. I hella appreciate all of you. I'm just not reading them all out like an uh, auctioneer because I'm trying to make sure that we leave room for the analysis. Yeah, exactly. And and going back to a few minutes ago when someone asked if questions are okay, I would say not only are they okay, they're encouraged. Uh, I'm trying to keep an eye on chat, um, and uh, you know I'll, I'll try to answer some of the questions and some of the downtime. But even if we don't get to the questions, a lot of helpful people that are very knowledgeable. I see Mr. K. If you're not familiar with Mr. K, he's an extremely knowledgeable player. Been, he played Exerd, you know, oh, through the yeah. whole lifespan, got a bunch of top eights under under his uh, belt. So, um, you know, there's there's definitely some knowledgeable people in the chat that can answer some questions if we don't get to them. So. Uh, I think everybody is here to learn, so by all means, please ask any questions that you might have. For sure, and there is also just a bevy, I, I believe is the word, the noun I'm going to use for today, just a tremendous amount of people in the Hoop Squad Discord who are quite good at this game, even if they're not like, you know, not everyone needs to be Elven Shadow to give you hella good advice, right? Like, even someone who's just good and wins locals and stuff like that, invaluable stuff can come from them. And they're all hanging out there. If you're just looking to play some Guilty Gear matches and learn some stuff, there's a lot of really, really great teachers in the Hoop Squad Discord. Definitely. Absolutely. And yes, Zoner does play Venom, so Ryan gets to be in his natural habitat. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> who, do, who does Johnson play, though? I got no idea. That, that's <laughs> We're going to find out. <laughs> that, that's more important. Whenever they ready up here. Elvin doesn't know anybody besides Foss. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Elvin would be like, uh, did you try throwing a donut? <laughs> that usually works. Yeah, I mean, that, that's like the, like, I don't know, is paradox the right word? Or like, you know, it's like some property of Guilty Gear where you have these people like Elvin who've, who've played the game for, 
I mean, he's played even like significantly longer than me. I remember when I was first learning, I used to read his blog from when he lived in Japan. He used to he used to have like a blog. This was like before YouTube and like all the stuff. Um, he lived in Japan for a while and he used to, you know, write blog updates. Ah, I went to Mikado today and I played against FAB and got my ass beat. And, you know, he talked about the people he played and how the matchups went and stuff. So, but but the the, the kind of duality is he's been playing forever but he's only played faust so you know he knows everything there is to know about faust but yeah it's it's kind of funny you could probably ask him something about some other character and he, he wouldn't know he would only know it from the faust perspective you know how to how to deal with it with faust or how it interacts with faust but you know that's kind of the funny duality with uh with guilty gear it's such a the characters are so distinct and so unique that uh, if you get a lot of experience with one character, it doesn't necessarily translate to, to other characters. Very weird that way. Hold on, everybody. Off camera, we have a little bit of a lobby issue. I was wondering what the holdup was. We're just going to go ahead and remake it. Don't mind me. Gotcha, gotcha. Bam. All right. We're going to wait for our players to get in here again. The way I always think about it is whenever I have slight issues with, like, online tournaments and stuff, it, just imagine that uh, somebody tripped over the power cord with the CRT, right? Like, and everyone's just like, ah, and we all got to plug it back in, you know? It's okay. Take a step out for a sec if you, gotta, if you have to. Grab some water, grab some tea. Um, somebody's asking questions about FRCs. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I was looking at that also. Rupture was asking, what's the most crucial FRC to learn on a character? Uh, I mean, that's going to depend, obviously, character to character. And I would say some characters, you don't even necessarily have to learn FRCs at first. I know that's something that a lot of newer players think is uh, a little bit intimidating. Um, you know, it, it is something that is, is a little more advanced. But uh, depending on your character, you may not even need to learn any FRCs. Like, um, who's a good example? Maybe maybe even like Order Soul. You know, he's got the FRCs on, on like the, the charge at the end of the specials and stuff like that. Which, uh, you know, those are useful, but definitely not critical to playing the character. You could spend your meter on other stuff, on, on you know, Fafnir is an amazing force break. If you just spend all your meter on Fafnir, you're going to do just fine, you know? So, I think it really varies from, from character to character. Yeah, someone mentioned Milia. Milia, you could, you could completely play Milia for months and never use an FRC. She does have useful FRCs, but nothing that is critical to her gameplay. Now, of course, there are characters that... They're a little more useful, a little more, you know, a little more integral to their gameplay. But, you know, it's uh, varies, varies by character. Mm -hmm. Totally. And speaking of Millie, we have Amelia stepping up here. I'm so sorry. Zoner main is going I with Axel instead. We are I doing was <laughs> lied to. All right, guys, it's been good. Uh, have All a right. good night. Bye, Riot. <laughs> All right, well, this is the classic uh, rushdown versus zoning matchup. So we got Millia versus Axel here. Oh, nice. Goes right after the pin. Good awareness. Yeah, Rushdown Axel versus bomb. zoning matchup. Uh, one of these characters do 80% of your health. Warning, it's Axel. Yeah, I mean, if he gets the right starter, he, especially in the corner, yeah, you can do a ton of damage. Okay, wow, that looked like actually traded. Benton that traded? It was hard for me to see, actually. All right, so some interesting uh, matchup knowledge already on display here from Zoner main. He, he did wake up 2k. Really interesting move with Axel. It's extremely low profile, and he actually went under the disc and then recovered in time to block it. So that's uh, some really detailed matchup knowledge already uh, being used. Yeah, for sure. And Johnson there finishing it out with the super. By the way, I love Zoner Maid's dust combo there. Just JD, JD. I'm with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Looks kind of similar to my dust combos, honestly. I never use Venom's dust, so every now and then I get it <laughs> accidentally, and... It's usually my combo, too. It's like, ah, shit, we're in space. What do I do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, good burst. Rolling in. Joss is doing I'm... a fantastic job. Yeah, uh, sorry, not to cut you off, but he's just doing such a good job of staying outside of Renson range, which is not easy to do. <laughs> and I was also going to say, Zonerman is doing a great job. I love the idea that he had there with just using the Force Break to control the space in front and above him. This is the kind of matchup where you gotta be quick and you gotta control space quickly. You don't have time to set up. So, um, yeah, I, I like what I'm seeing from both sides, definitely. Jeremy saw that the TK bad mood, such a powerful option. Oh no, wake up super doesn't work. Had the right idea too. Knew, knew that he was gonna get the hit and went in for the combo, but the force break disc does kind of vacuum them in. So he dashed a little bit too far actually. Sure, the meaty pressure, the 6 age. Oh, he... Oh, nice. Nice. Very Damn. nice. So 
that's that's similar to what I was showing in training mode a little while ago, actually, where you know it's a good habit in this game to be holding back or down back. Uh, I mean, it's it's more instinctual for a character like Axel who has a charge move, but any character should be doing that because in those cases, like in a multi-hit move or just depending on when they burst, you might just accidentally block their burst. I, I I can almost guarantee you he was not expecting that burst there. He was not doing that with the intention of blocking the burst. He was just holding back anyway, and due to the timing of the burst, he just inadvertently blocked the burst, so... Yeah, uh, like, honestly, Guilty Gear Burst, incredibly useful tool, right? But uh, they have a lot of weaknesses. There's a lot of times where they'll just lose. It's not like Burst and some other games where they have a lot of, like, protections on them. Like, they can totally just get accidentally stuffed. Oh, yeah, you can absolutely burst and make it worse for yourself, 100%. Right, <laughs> a combo again, might not kill that. you until you get your yeah. base burned, then it does. Just like that, the air-to-air -air exchange is going to close it out there for Johnson. All right, so yeah, getting get into a little bit of you know higher level play here as we, you know, obviously get further into the bracket. So seeing some good stuff. Also, it makes sense why Zoner Main didn't start with Venom. I actually think this matchup is incredibly difficult in this game. Um, so it makes sense that he started with Axel, but here he is uh, switching to Venom. So we'll see if uh, he can make something happen here. Th this matchup is tough though, so we will uh, we will see. For sure. And a reminder, everybody, uh, if a Dark Angel's on the screen, just make sure you turn down your speaker volumes. It can blow out your speakers. <laughs> wow, round start doublehead morbid. All right. That sounds like a man who's sick of this matchup, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. One of us is dying. I don't care who. You you tell me. That's that's what Dad says. Wow, yeah, actually, and I, 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 I a mad struggle. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's fishing right now. He's just looking for the big hits. Okay, corner throw. But honestly, okay. that is a sign of somebody who's probably played a matchup more than they care to admit. It's like he's being so Weasley right now and really not trying to get like the set play for mid screen going too bad. Yep, yep. Yeah, he's using a lot of H Mad Struggle. Maybe we'll look at that afterwards. Yeah, I mean, Johnson, like you're saying, he, now he's struggling to get substantial hits. Okay, burst. Yeah, right. He's just he's jumping around. He's not letting him get the ground and pressure going. It was a little too far to get the two D there, unfortunate. Ooh, didn't quite get the conversion. Okay, here we go. This is a substantial hit. Oh, but he doesn't complete. That combo hit weird. That it looked fine at the beginning. I'm surprised it uh, didn't work right. The big Slayer JH the oh. God. Morning. Oh, wow, TK back went over. That is unfortunate. That's that's really rare too. Venom has one of the better dead angles in the game. That is uh that is very unfortunate. Fortunately, it's a full moon and your dead angles looking like shit. Oh my god, there's actually only nine seconds left. Yeah, is Johnson gonna realize and run? No, he's, oh, he's going, going in. in. All right. <laughs> oh, and he burst. Oh, no, the burst. That that burst was actually like zero percent to win because there just actually wasn't enough time after the burst. So that burst, definitely not advised. That was never going to work. Nice, gets the knockdown. Oh, yeah. You know, and going in there in that decision, really not a, a bad idea whatsoever. Like, because uh, trying to stay away oh, can get yeah. you really smoked against Venom. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, Milia is so fast, and especially because of the threat of the pin, it's really hard for Venom to play a traditional zoning uh, game in this match. But uh, yeah, but you don't want to just sit back and do nothing and let him set up. You want to at least be threatening. Hairpin there for the set play. That looked like, I don't know what that was supposed to be. I don't think he just meant to do dust. Yeah, no, I, I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be force break and he didn't have meter, so he got 5D. I think he was trying to force break carcass probably. All right, takes this round though. Zone remains staying alive here. I, I, I somehow I could feel he was gonna start with 6H. I was almost gonna say he should use a little more 6H, but it didn't work for him, so I'm glad I didn't say that. Uh, but I guess I will admit that I was thinking it. Yeah, unfortunately, you you tapped into the Venom Collective and cursed Yeah, him. exactly. Ooh, hairpin Ooh. to get over the ball. Yeah. All right, I mean, Zoner Main is in a good spot right now. He's gotta try to hold this corner, maybe. Yeah, tough. It's, it's hard to hold the corner against Milia. She's just so fast and so mobile. Mm. Yeah, there's that force break. So I was talking about this uh, last night, actually, while we were doing some analysis that, uh, you know, 
as far as just spending your meter, it's good to just have one kind of go-to move, and it looks like that's exactly what Zoner Main has here. His go-to is when he has his back to the wall, Force Break Stinger, and that, that's honestly a, a fantastic option. Gets the full charge. Oh my god, wow. I got the burst. Yeah, got all the chip, and got the wrist gauge up, and got the hit. Oh, but this could be the end here. Yeah, Johnson gets that last hit and takes it. Johnson does indeed get the last hit and takes it there. That was such a tricky, tricky schmix. You saw how he came in, like, uh, he had two seconds to block the, like, block the high and then recognize, oh, shit, there's another one, and he just got smoked by it. Yeah, tough stuff there. I mean, that, that's just a tough matchup. Um, let's look at a, a couple of things here. So, yeah, I mean, it was that was mostly good um, from um, Johnson's perspective. There weren't really too many... Uh, too many things I can I can point out. I mean, he was doing the right conversions. He had a couple combo drops, but that's that's normal, especially off some of the weirder hits. The one thing I would say, just from a, a macro perspective of, of like the game plan, is especially we saw in game two how uh, Zoner was trying to fight more in the air and making it difficult for um, Johnson to get substantial hits. Right. So if you think about it, you know, the more time you spend in the air as like the venom side of this matchup the harder it's going to be to get knocked down because she's going to have to hit you air to air and then somehow convert using pin or, you know, get a knockdown in some way. It's going to be much trickier. So what I would say for uh, for Johnson, maybe something to consider or think about or, or mess with is once they start taking to the air more, what was happening is that Johnson was playing his normal game. He was jumping around and swinging. But the problem with that is that Venom's buttons, for example, this like jump H, if he's doing like retreating jump H, you're just gonna run into it and get knocked down, which is kind of what was happening a lot. Um, so if you notice that they're being really squirrely and jumping around, you can actually kind of flip the script on them and you can start to play more of a ground-based game. And when they're jumping around, you can use your mobility to get under them and anterior them. You can just run up and you know start 5 peeing, or you know, if you see them jump, you can actually jump and jump K. Jump K is a great air to air. But the thing is, you want to do it reactively, not preemptively, oh, yeah. which is what he was still trying to do. So just something to, to look for if they're really trying to be evasive and, and jump around a lot. Um, that's maybe something I would I would think about a little bit more. Oh, um, yeah. From the other side, just something real quick for, for Zoner Main. One thing that stood out to me like a sore thumb because I, I felt the pain. It took me back <laughs> instantly, you know, 15 years learning Venom. Um, I, I can still remember sitting sitting in my room looking at my CRT practicing this exact thing for hours um, because it is so fundamental and that is K-Ball Oki and any, any Venom player is going to immediately know what I'm talking about. So we saw this exact sequence in the match where he got a sweep, did K-Ball and then, oh no, a disaster, right? I set the K-Ball and oh my god, I messed my Oki up, I completely whiffed, flew past them. Uh, you know, it's it's actual nightmare scenario when it comes to Venom. You work so hard, especially in a matchup like this, to get the knockdown, and then uh, you flub the Oki. So here's what I'm going to recommend. This this is pretty actually difficult. Um, it, it looks simple, but it is actually pretty tough. This this ball is kind of like in the worst spot because you want to do a running jump, but if you don't do it immediately, um, you're just going to jump past it and, and not hit it. So the nice thing is in Axe and Core Vanilla, you had to just grind it out and learn how to do it. In this game, because they added the other four formations, you can actually uh, give yourself an easier variation until you get more comfortable doing doing that one. Because that one is the better one, but this one is just as good. So what you can actually do is, instead of doing K-Ball, you can do the D variant of K-Ball, which is you hit D after the ball. So this is normal K-Ball, and then this is the D variant. And all it does is it moves it forward slightly. And this basically completely eliminates the possibility of you missing the ball. Now, it, again, it's not quite as good because the ball is going to hit them sooner, so your Oki theoretically is a little bit worse, but don't worry about that for right now. The idea is that you can do the exact same Oki. Um, see, th this, this is kind of the weakness, but again, don't don't worry about that so much. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. But um, by, by moving the ball, you basically eliminate the chance. This is like, I picked the worst character to show this on. Because um, <laughs> Milia doesn't get hit by the second hit of sweep uh, from that range. So something like this. You basically eliminate the possibility of missing the ball, but you get essentially the same Oki. And there there are even applications that where even at a high level, I use this sometimes, like if I want to switch sides, I'll use this ball to switch sides. So it's, it's also just good to learn because even when you get into more advanced stuff, you're going to want to do it sometimes anyway. So um, just something to look at, you know, just to kind of 
ease into the Oki aspect of the character. Um, you know, it, and maybe that was just a, a one-off and, and he's really good at that Oki. And if you're comfortable doing this one, uh, whoops, if you're comfortable doing this one, by all means, you know, do, do the do the normal K-Ball Oki because it is a little bit better. Um, but, you know, for those Venom players out there that are struggling with it, uh, there is a, a slightly easier option that you can start with, so. Dope, fantastic. Um, and I wanted to say very quickly before we get into our next match, and I will let our players kind of get in here uh, and ready up, but um, I, I was just talking to Trinity, our wonderful bracket runner. Uh, ultimately, there's a lot of demand for these tournaments, right? And we're seeing, we're kind of hitting a certain level of play at this point, which is great, right? Like, I'm so glad these people are here knuckling up, trying to learn and stuff. I made a decision, unless Ryan wants to veto me. He has that power. But I think that everyone would agree. Everyone in top eight, congratulations. You graduated. I think you should join our unrestricted hoop cup tournament to play more Guilty Gear. We should let other people get on in here. So I think everyone in top eight, you've graduated, which is my nice way of saying you're banned. Get the heck out. But we will, <laughs> that's after this. We're going to see who's going to win this, which is going to be dope. But. Yeah, I, again, it's a subjective thing, and I think, oh, like yeah. you're saying, due to the demand, it might make sense just from a, you know, from a logistics standpoint, just to try to get some of the people out of the bracket. That's not to say, you know, we can't help you still. Um, you know, I'm still available. You want to hit me up on Twitter or whatever um, for advice. I can still, you know, take a look at your matches. Like I said, I'm going to start to do analysis on my stream as well. So, you know, hopefully there'll be some other avenues for you to get some advice. But, uh, but yeah, we do want to try to, you know help some of the even newer players so for sure and for the record we're planning to do unrestricted tournaments alternating each week on tuesday so next week is going to be an unrestricted weed cup you can hop on in play it and then we'll hop into a beginner next time anyway getting into this match robokai versus soul my man is getting blasted oh, into yeah. the corner yeah yeah some some nice uh fafnir combos there like like the one i'm seeing so far also coco yes ryan is my dad i thank him very much for commentating with me tonight <laughs> So for those not familiar with Robokai, oh, very nice. That was that was a sick little sequence there. For those not familiar with Robokai, he's a very, very unique character, uh, very um, heavy into the resource management aspect of fighting games. He has uh, multiple meters there, as you can see, multiple unique meters. We can talk about that maybe a little bit after, but um, he's a very, very unique character. Yeah, for sure, and I think that uh, learning Robokai can be really challenging as a result of that. Seijam was just talking about how Hotashi was trying to learn him and was running into some issues. Um, yes. But I think that one of the things to keep in mind is there's a lot of moves that'll just make Robokai's heat, which is that little thermal grade at the bottom there, go ballistic. And if you're trying to look at Robokai and just trying to see how he operates, I keep your eye on that because that is the big dangerous meter for him. Yeah, so um, Soul making a little bit of comeback here. This looked like it was going to be a, run around, uh, a runaway round for Robokai, but... He's in trouble now, although he does have, yeah, I was going to say, he's got a lot of meter to, to shoot some missiles. So just to, just to give you guys a quick idea of how, how Robokai works, basically all of his special moves have different levels. He's got three levels. And depending on how much meter he has when he does the move, will determine what the level is. So his basically his special moves get better the more meter he has, but then they also spend that meter. So every time you do a special, it takes you one block of meter. So very uh, unique playstyle because of that. Yeah, and the most dangerous, simple thing to keep in mind is when Robokai has a lot of meter, you're going to see these missiles where you saw there yeah. came back and tagged Soul, and the leveled up missiles are so dangerous. Yeah, the level 3 missiles split and they home in. Very obnoxious move, honestly. But we can see Ragnar doing, Ragnar's doing a fantastic job at Riot stomping around to avoid the missiles as soon as he sees them go up in the air. Yep, yep. That's going to be it for the first round. Ragnall's going to take it. I would like the chat room to know, by the way, I do have Ryan's webcam open to my left. Every time we see that soul super force break, whatever you want to call it, that soul cinematic move that he has that costs 25 meter. Uh, Ryan's entire face just turns red. His whole room is just bathed. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, the, uh, the Fafnir follow-up uh, looks super cool <laughs> in this game. <laughs> it's like the giant fireball follow-up, yeah. Nice one here. Let me just switch the names. Do you like have any gut reactions to this matchup, Brian? I feel like this is oh, almost yeah. a kind of a straightforward one. It is pretty straightforward. I think it's a, a little bit challenging for Robokai, uh, but you know he's he's got tools he can use. He's just got to be a little bit careful. And you know a lot of the stuff that I would say probably makes the matchup a little bit bad, uh, we haven't even really seen yet. So maybe, maybe I'll talk about a little bit of that stuff afterwards. But uh, you know trying trying to stay away from some of the matchup really you know matchup specific stuff here. But, um, yeah, I mean, this, this matchup can certainly go either way. For sure. And that was a fantastic 6-H there from Kennedy after that wall bounce, because he hit a little bit of damage, but most importantly, he was about to explode. 
And 6H yeah. is the big tool Robokai has to cool down. Yeah, so I think we're going to have to talk about Ride Stomp after this match, just due to the <laughs> amount that we're seeing it. Uh, we definitely, I think this is probably something that, you know, every beginner either does if they're a soul player or fights against if they fight soul players is, uh, you know, Ride Stomp. It's like, it's one of those moves where when you're first learning, you're like, man, this this move is obnoxious. There it is again with a big counter hit. But yeah, um, once, like once you kind of understand it and, and, and develop a little bit of an instinct when you see it, uh, you realize it's it's really not very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it should be page two of the- Oh my god, went for the double after it whiffed, jeez. I was gonna say, I feel like Riot Stomp oh, should be yeah. like in page two of the Guilty Gear manual. It's like, this is Riot Stomp. This will define the game until you learn to work around it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Alright, nice. Fafnir follow-up. That should be techable. Although, I don't- Robokai's super heavy, so maybe he wasn't able to tech that, actually. Yeah, Robokai nice. is- Nice! Great throw. He's a very cursed combination of Kai's weird hitbox and being a thousand pounds. Yeah, exactly. All right, nice wake up DP. Is he going to return the favor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of telegraphed because he had a hundred meters. So it's like, you know, you got to expect something on wake up. Uh -huh. So maybe uh, not giving the meter enough respect there. Was that two? That was two. Just like yeah, that. That's that soul rounds, um, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Guilty Gear matches are, are quick, man. Yeah, and right, Kennedy's so going to be going out here at this point in the tournament. GG's, Kennedy, thanks for playing. And we're going to hop on over here to the Ryan training mode corner. So, all right, I wrote down a couple of things. Let's look at uh, let's look at Ride Stomp for sure. So, and we'll even look at it from Robokai's perspective. Oh, let me do it this way. Um, So while this is loading up, just a couple of things I noticed uh, for uh, the Robokai player there to maybe look at. A couple of opportunities you had there you were uh whipping missiles a little bit close while he was dashing in this is like the one weakness with the missiles is that um they do take a lot of time it, well it takes a lot of time before robokai is recovered and so the weakness is like if the opponent just runs in once they and they can even do it on reaction to seeing the missiles they can punish you a lot of the time so you got to be very careful if they're really running at you you're not going to have time to to do this so you really want to make sure that you you know are are the, the pace of the match is kind of, uh, you know, right for you to, to be doing missiles. If they're just running at you, maybe you want to be using more Horsey or Far Slash or something, kind of slow the pace of the match down um, before you start using this. Because this is extremely powerful, but not if they're already running at you, because that's, that's the natural counter to it anyway. So. I was going to say, Ryan, just to state my curiosity, does Horse beat Riot Stomp? Uh, let's find out. I don't know. But we're gonna look at Ride Stomp anyway. So I, I, my, my, I'm gonna guess that it does. At the very least, I expect it to trade, but it might just beat it outright. Yeah, it trades. Man, even level yeah. three horse trades, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they have similar hitboxes, right? But so the, the thing to understand with Ride Stomp is uh, it's an overhead, but uh, it also hits you high up. So for m most characters, the easiest solution is you just six p. Um, so when you see Ride Stomp, you just six p, and it's gonna beat it clean. There are some characters, this is not going to work, you, you know, but most characters have a, a, a go-to anti-air option that is going to beat Ride Stomp every time. For some characters, it's like 2H or things like that. Um, I think I think Order Soul is maybe the character that has the most trouble. He doesn't have like a, a very simple solution like that, but I think every other character has at least one button that is just going to beat this clean. And notice, look at how late. I mean, I'm intentionally doing it like extremely late there. I'm doing it so late that it's actually whiffing through. So because your 6P has upper body invuln, you can do this very late and it's still going to work. As long as you get it out before he hits you, it should work. Um, there, there are also sometimes options where you can like low profile it to make it whiff like this. And in these cases, it's a character by character or move by move kind of thing. You'll have to experiment in training mode because sometimes you want to make it whiff and then you get an even better punish after it whiffs. Um, you just have to see who recovers first and, you know, if, if your move is actually a punish. So in this case, that might be a punish. I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we can test it super quick. Send the block. Let's see. No, not a punish, but... Um, but, you know, sometimes there's stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so if, if, you're, if you're losing to Riot Stomp, which uh, a lot of new players do, uh, you know, take the few minutes in training mode, look at your options, look at your 6P, look at any other options you might have that are very simple. You want something that's easy to execute and that you can do instinctively. And uh, just practice it until you develop that instinct and then uh, you'll never lose to Riot Stomp again. Then then you'll start losing to Riot Stomp uh, FRC. And that, that's, uh, 
that's even more fun. So, <laughs> or riot stop in the that's corner. For day. Yeah, that, that's for that's for another day. Okay. That's for another that's day. a riot stop uh, two hundred one. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Cool. Then I think we're just about ready. Bam, to hop on into our next match, which is going to be Log and BTF. Which there's rumblings in the chat that this might be Abba Justice. Oh boy, we haven't seen Justice yet. I'm not sure, or they might just be talking about it. Let's find out. Big Ryan, get out of here. Well, I see a Justice, and I do indeed say an Abba. So this is an yeah. on-paper matchup that people like to talk about. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I don't know too much about this matchup. Um, I assume it's just horrible for Abba to try to get in. Yes. Uh, I'm assuming that the zoning <laughs> is just absolutely obnoxious. So maybe we'll look at a couple things in training mode to see, um, you know, see if there's some 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 options there. But uh, yeah, it, it, this may be a matchup where Abba actually wants to spend a little more time in non Moroha mode, just because of that role, which we've already seen him use multiple times before I could even say the sentence. So nice. The okay, overhead. going to the overhead slash unblockable. And there yeah. go the nukes. Yeah, and it's going to be a knockdown. Dude, okay. that was amazing nuke navigation. Yeah. My man was in there. <laughs> yeah, that was great patience. Oh, two knockdowns. Yeah, okay. Love the Goku here to reset the Maroha meter. That was beautiful. Oh, da wow. Donzai actually got punished. Oh, my God. I got a check of hell. We got free frozen over. <laughs> and this could be it here. Yeah. <laughs> He died so fast. <laughs> yeah, oh, he could have maybe tried to blood pack and, you know, try to make something happen. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. Ooh, twice we've seen that now. He's ID'd and uh, he's not getting enough blocks done. So he's getting thrown when he lands. Getting caught with the overhead there. Nice throw again. Okay, burst. Ooh, that's a little bit of a sketchy burst. I think that combo has the potential to be burst safe, but... Didn't see it there. Ah, uh, he had her cornered it, but unfortunately that combo drop was so... Okay, counter! Oh, the counter. Yeah, ca the counter is going to make this matchup a lot harder. Not a lot of other characters have the ability to... Oh my god, the FB teleport. Not a lot of characters have the ability to just straight beat, like, mid-screen Donzai, but Justice is one of those characters. Yep, yep. Yeah, similar to what we were talking about earlier, where, like, Biken... Um, well, actually, I guess we were talking about it the other way, right? Where the Abba can try to um, predict when Biken is going to do a counter and then do Donzai. Similar here, you can try to predict when the Abba is going to do Donzai and then counter it. But he's so. putting down the key and he's picking up a guitar. That matchup sucks. Let's try a different one. Yeah, I can see this matchup potentially being way better. HCL is probably extremely annoying for... Uh, there for it Justice. is! <laughs> With the end, there it is. Yeah, gets a knockdown. You can probably react to most of the missiles as long as you're in HCL range and just hit her before she recovers. So it's it's kind of like a beam. Wow, I don't think I've ever actually seen Justice's air throw until right now. <laughs> All right, nice pressure here. I like what I'm seeing from Log. Oh, and also, of course, uh, we haven't seen it yet, but uh, Eno also has stroked the big tree. So uh, yeah. I'm assuming, although maybe I'm wrong, but I would assume that it goes under the low missile. Um, so Justice is one of those characters where I really don't know that much about her matchups because she wasn't in vanilla, and that's where a lot of my knowledge comes from. So, you know, <laughs> when it comes to Justice and her matchups, there's still a lot I don't know. I think that uh, the... Correct me if I'm horribly wrong here, Chad. I know we got a lot of really good players out here, but Justice, to me, reeks of the, in the discourse very similar to, like, Oh Sagat, right? Where it's just... It seems like there's a lot of characters that she just makes miserable, and then, like, the other half of the cast it just rolls her over, right? Like, she just, yes. like, can't do anything about it. Yeah. Very polarized. Yeah, very, very exa I'd say the exact word I was going to use. Very polarized matchups, yeah. Not a lot of even matchups when it comes to Justice. Yeah, and Eno is basically, she's got like a, a Grand Viper equivalent and also like a gun with HCL, which definitely yeah. can make Justice's life a little harder. Exactly. Oh, nice, okay. I will say uh, BTF is doing a fantastic job when he gets knockdowns that he's just running just a very simple 50-50, just overhead or low every time. You know, not trying to get fancy with it. Not that Justice really can get especially fancy with it. You know, she's got, like, you know, missile FRC and stuff like that. But, you know, just, I love just run the 50-50. All right, but Log, you know, when I see somebody switch 
characters just in just period in in guilty gear i'm always suspect because like we were saying before the characters are all so unique and they take so much dedication to really learn but then especially to switch to eno i was like very you know suspicious but uh that was fantastic i yeah. mean he definitely knows what he's doing with eno he's he's making it happen so for sure. The, the, it's definitely paying off. And I'm not, not to disrespect Log Eno's whatsoever, but there's someone in the chat said, like, Eno is so hard, right? And that is a lot of people's immediate reaction to Eno. But Log's game plan with Eno so far has been relatively simple, right? Like, he's not going for the hand-breaking combos. He's, like, going for, like, the simple stuff that, like, you can do with a couple hours in training mode. And it's just, you can play anybody in this cast with, like, a little bit of effort. Yeah, I think that's a great point because there's so many misconceptions about, you know, the difficulty of learning oh, this game yeah. or learning certain characters, and I think you are 100% right, and it's worth repeating. If you look at what he's doing, he's not doing, like, HCL FRC, and he's oh, still getting yeah. plenty of damage off of his hits. Could he be, you know, doing more optimized combos? Of course, but, um, you know, like, this combo right here, look at it, this is perfectly fine, you know, and, and that that is not a difficult combo to execute. So, you know, do not be scared off by what you might have heard about, you know, certain characters or you know the execution in the game or anything like that uh oh but just like that btf is actually round up is he gonna make logs counter pick look a little I less faith. i have faith i think i think logs gonna bring it back this game oh big counter hit could have gotten a conversion off that actually didn't didn't see it oh that's punishable great punish yeah that was a fantastic burst gets the air throw Hot, nice, hot. The double overhead. Yeah. Small drop there, but that's okay. Still has the corner pressure. Nice jump out of the stroke, the big tree. Oh my god, that actually smokes the teleport. That's actually that's so bad <laughs> for justice. Yeah, the teleport, I think maybe calling it teleport is maybe a little bit of a <laughs> maybe a little bit of a misnomer because uh, as far as I know, it's not like invuln really. I think it's just like really fast. It's just fast, right? yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so yeah, no, no, you're good. I'm just, you know, for, for people watching, it's not, yeah. uh, I don't even think it has, like, any involved, so you can just hit it. It's just oh. that it's so fast. Oh, get... projectile phone, okay. Bounce around by the nukes, and he does oh. indeed get hit by the FB. Okay, FB run really fast. How about that? He yeah, gets hit yeah, by yeah. the, FB, Dash. the Dash. FB movement. Um, and unfortunately, log, log, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood, and it's better than bad, it's good. Log is going to go out at this point in the tournament. Let's hop over so here to Ryan even... Tree. I don't even know. Let me let me think. Uh, I had one thought of something that I wanted to show. Um, the problem is I, I do not play Eno, man. So there's really this is this is I, I don't even know what I'm going to show here exactly because I'm not going to be able to execute it. But so one one thing that I did notice um, we were talking a little bit. I know I, I mentioned that uh, Log did jump out of some of that pressure at some point. So. Um, we saw a string, it was something like uh, like this into Stroke the Big Tree, or maybe it was 2H. Um, so something like this. Uh, is it half circle? Yeah, it's half circle. So something like this, right? And the correct response there is to jump out. You do not even want to block. Well, let me rephrase that. The, the optimal response there is to do a low because Stroke the Big Tree is low vulnerable and she's in counter hit state. So if you have the great reactions and you or you anticipate the stroke the big tree, you can just stick out a low. I think the more common or the more uh, risk adverse solution there, the more generalized solution is to just jump out of the pressure. And that's actually what we saw Log do. Now from the Eno's perspective, if you see that they're jumping out of your pressure, you have to cancel into something else to start beating the jump to prevent them from just jumping out of all your pressure. Because it's so, you know, this is what Eno lives for. She wants to to, to to get in, you know, get you in the corner and, and, and rush you down. So the last thing you want to let them do is just jump out, um, you know, for free. So the, the like, real answer here is actually the hard stuff that we were talking about, which I don't even know what the input is. Yeah, it's like half circle back forward kick. So, you know, you'd want to do something like this. And that will actually help catch the jump. And, um... You know, once you get more advanced with the character, the thing is, you don't need the FRC. Just catching their jump and knocking them down with this, that's good enough for now. Ideally, you want to FRC that and oh, really yeah. punish them. They get hit by that, they're eating, you know, 40% um, if, you're, if you're doing, you know, good combos here. So, um, but e even just, uh, you know, just doing that by itself just to stop the jump is, is step one, I would say. The other thing you can do, I have no idea what the input is. Um, 
whatever note is. Okay, quarter circle back P. So you can also do stuff like this and then just aim the note up. And depending on the character and their jump arc and, you know, that kind of thing, if they I bead, that is also very likely to catch their jump. So the point that I'm making here is just you, you need to have options to stop their jump because it's so crucial once you lock them down. You can't let them just jump out for free every time. You got to hold that position. So, yeah, for sure. And we're almost ready to get into our next match here. Let me just thank Log for the big raid. I guess he was streaming his tournament run. Hope you had fun, dude. Um, yeah, and I was just going to say, Happy Little Resets is in chat. If you don't know, Happy Little Resets has oh, the distinction yeah. of winning that big beginner tournament that the Plus R tournament did a while ago. And it was like, it was set up in a way where it was like you wanted to enter it to get disqualified. Like you wanted to place high to like get shot out. Um, Edge LR is a fantastic ABBA if you're looking for ABBA pointers. Although I imagine if you ask him, how do I beat Justice? Uh, he'll just be like, yeah, your, your Eno's looking great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I want to take two seconds. If they're ready to go, we can start. I'm just curious for myself. Um, I'm going to jump back in training mode for a second. I'm just curious about uh, ABBA versus Justice. Um... So something that I've, I've shown before on my stream that works with a lot of characters is uh, when they're shooting the missile, if I can remember how to do it. 2-2. Two, two. Oh yeah, 2-2, two, two, right. Um, and then you have to hold it. So a lot of characters can extend hurt boxes into it. And uh, you, you do take one hit, but um, it basically gets rid of the missile for you. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing this ABBA, I probably have to be in Moroha. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at this later, maybe, but she might not have anything, but the idea is that you throw a hurt box way out, out in front of you, and it eats the hit and then retracts your hurt box, so maybe something to think about. But anyway, into our next match. Yep, into our next match, and this is the polar opposite of Justice versus Whomsever. There is no zoning happening here. There's two DPs back to back. All right, some horizontal dovins. All right, there's a DP that connects. Oh, a little early on the wild throw. I like the idea, though. Wow, just run up DP, okay. Maybe he was gonna RC that if it was blocked, but didn't need to. Wow, but just went into the follow-up, not even confirming it, just doing it? <laughs> I, he might have confirmed that. It, it did look like it was a little delayed. It's hard to say, though. If he did confirm it, then he's a god. You know what, we'll give him the credit. Hell yeah, the confirms! Yeah, exactly. Third strike, baby. <laughs> Hell yeah, single buttons. Trying to go in the Dolphin. That was actually beautiful evasion from Ragnar there for the Dolphin. Yeah, so this is a... Uh... The May player we saw earlier. Actually, we saw both these players earlier, right? Yes, we did. These are two. We're getting to the later end of the bracket now, so a lot of these people should be uh, coming up again. Yeah. So this is, uh, again, just they're both swinging. Um, I think last time we saw this oh, May player yeah. was up against Order Soul, if I remember correctly. Yes. Um, I'm thinking of a different May, but um, pretty similar matchup, honestly. I mean, Order Soul, obviously, you know, different angles on his buttons and stuff like that, but the idea is the same where they're both kind of just swinging. So, <laughs> you know... And, and again, I think I'll reiterate what I said before. You, the point is that you want to make sure that you're swinging with things like that. Fine, where man. Really Ryan stumped away from the dolphin and came back in and kicked her off. <laughs> yeah, you want to make sure you're swinging with stuff like that, where when it hits, you're going to get a payoff. You know, you don't want to be swinging. Because every time you swing with a button, especially if they're also just swinging, you know, wildly, every time you hit a button, you're taking a risk. So if you're going to take that risk, you want it to be worth it, right? If, if you hit them, you want it to pay off. So... Yeah, for sure. And someone in the chat did say, something to keep in mind in this matchup, May has one of the most dynamite, dangerous 6Ps in existence. Um, mm -hmm. And even at a basic level, if you do a bad Riot Stomp and she 6Ps you, you might have genuinely just lost a round, because you might be yeah. stunned. <laughs> yeah, if, if she anticipates it and starts charging, like, around the time he starts the, the Riot Stomp, she could literally stun him in one combo. She could stun him in, like, two hits? <laughs> like, it's even yeah, a yeah. combo. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's something to keep in mind. When you were saying earlier about how Ryan Stomp is so important to play around, May has one of the most solid, simple game plans for dealing with Ryan Stomp. It's kill him. Yeah, and for those that don't understand what we're talking about, Ray's, uh, uh, Ray, uh, May's <laughs> uh, 6P has a special stun property on it. It's it's uh, got like special values where it stuns abnormally high for a 6P. So if you get hit by like just two counter hit stun, uh, two counter hit six Ps, for example, you you may just get stunned depending on what character you're playing. It does not take much. It does it, it does like it's like one of the highest stunning moves in the game. So yeah. it's got something insane like a four times dizzy multiplier or something silly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, something ridiculous. And 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 she can charge it as well. And as you charge it, that only 
uh, amplifies the, the amount of stun it does. And there, there, we just saw him charge it a little bit. That was like a half charge. But I, I love it. I mean, if he's using right side... Oh, that was a full charge. That almost worked. <laughs> I think if he could have held it longer, it might have. But I think he actually reached max, max charge and it let go by itself. And I got that does a lot of chip, dude. I've never really realized before. Yeah, you're talking about the Fafnir follow-up? Yeah. Yeah, it does a lot. It does a lot. Wow, that was safe from the DP. Another riot stomp. Crazy question, Shadow. The score is correct. Can anyone fact check me? I just want to make sure. Simon so went for the going for the FB there made a lot of sense, right? He wasn't super sure on the height, and just when you do FB, it's an auto clean hit, so he just wanted to make sure that he got the rest of it. That was great. Yeah, exactly. Especially on May. May being a lightweight and kind of a small body, it's actually pretty hard to get the clean hit. You have to hit her like there, there was actually kind of no way he was gonna get it without doing the force break there, because you have to hit it so high up. Yeah, okay, it was wrong. Ragnall won. Thank you, everybody. Sorry, I, I was laughing way too hard at that right stop dolphin interaction, but that is actually it. Um, and Ragnall takes it. So what? I'm I'm assuming that was not like winner's final something. So it was two out of three. It I don't been, know where but... we are in the bracket. I don't have the bracket up. There. That's losers. Um, oh god, what is this? Losers quarters. Uh, and then Got we're gonna it. play the other remaining losers quarters match, which is gonna be Zoner Main and BTF. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so let me let me jump in training mode. So it's it's funny because I, I want to take a second to talk about um, more what what we've already mentioned a couple times and what we talked about actually last night when we were reviewing uh, a May match. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. No, this was this was a couple of nights ago on my stream. Uh, I played a May player uh, last Cody. I don't know if he's out there. Uh, another uh, frequent of Sagem stream and uh, the Discord and. Um, I think this is just an important thing, uh, just kind of in general, but especially in this kind of matchup and with these characters. Again, the idea of you want to be swinging with buttons that actually like lead to things. Sometimes you don't have that option, and sometimes you're using a button because it's really good in the situation, and you don't care that it doesn't lead into anything. That's fine. But in these kind of matchups, when you're both kind of swinging for the fences, you want to be using buttons like May Jump H um, or, you know... I mean, really, this is like the main one that comes to mind. I don't even know what else to, to suggest because this is the main one that, that kind of goes with the point I'm making here. But, um, you know, we saw a lot of like jumping around and a lot of dolphins and those are great. But um, I mean, horizontal dolphin, bad on block. It's it's minus on block. It doesn't really lead to much. You know, maybe if you're in the corner, you maybe get something off and on counter hit or if they hit some high or something like that. But for the most part, you're not really getting anything. Whereas when you hit with this, this is this is the, the party starter. Um, and I was showing this on stream the other day. It's it's a little bit toned down from Accent Core Vanilla, if I understand correctly, but it still has a ton of unteckable time. And the thing that I want to point out is just look at this hitbox, okay? Um, why can't I hide? Uh, my select button is not working for some reason. Um, but you can kind of see it behind the menu. I don't know why my select button's not working, but you can see it behind the menu. I mean, this hitbox is is insane. This is just such a good button um, to be just kind of throwing out there. And it's it's a terrible pun, but you're fishing uh, with May. Uh, this is just like, you're not, really, you're not really trying to do anything. You're just fishing for hits here. You don't really have to do anything. They will run into this, um, especially if they're playing wild, you know, doing riot stomp, stuff like that. And again, when you hit this, it is, it is pretty simple to um, to confirm the hit. Again, I'm, I'm not a May player, um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's it's pretty easy to see the hit and then and then confirm it. And on, on counter hit, it's like you have all the time in the world. On counter hit, you can like IAD and still like get a pickup and stuff like that. I think in this game, the way most people do it is um, like you charge dolphin after you do it or something, and then you just like land in dolphin. I'm not I'm not sure. Again, I'm not a May player, but something like this. And then you can always FRC and get a bigger combo. But the idea, again, is just I, I want to try to, you know, push the the, the high level idea that you want to be you want to be using buttons that actually lead to conversions and ideally lead to combos and knockdowns. Um, you want to be getting you want to be getting paid off for your risk when you're when you're taking a risk. So yeah. um, just something to look at, um, because I, I, I've been seeing more and more a lot of May players. They, they use a lot of the single hits like, you know, horizontal dolphin and vertical dolphin. And, you know, there's a place for those. But. I don't think you're gonna, you know, once you start getting into some higher level play, you're you're it's, you're gonna have a lot harder time closing out rounds because you're gonna have to hit them a hundred times. Whereas, you know, they're gonna hit you two three times and 
you're gonna die. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, and I think that uh, something I'll also throw in here is if you're hanging around the Hoop Court El Gamondo, you're looking for some May knowledge, uh, we do have a res resident big May nerd named Smang. Uh, he knows all of, like, the oh, yeah. stupid-ass, like, 6P loops to kill someone off any hit. So if you want to know any of, like, the higher-level combo theory of what to do off stuff, I would hit up Smang. He's usually around the Discord. Yeah, um, she does have... Uh, and here, I fixed my slot. Oh, yeah. I think my stick was locked by mistake. But, um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hitbox. His hitbox is just... It's insane. But, um... Yeah, there are character-specific conversions and stuff for Mei, but um, you don't have to get caught up in that. She has some universal combos. They're obviously, you know, weaker and, and shorter, but they're totally fine, and they work on basically every character. So, you know, start small, and then like any other character, you can work in the character-specific stuff later on. So. Now, you want to talk about polarizing Ryan Hunter. You want to talk about that word, right? Yeah. Like, so we yeah, saw yeah. earlier a matchup, a lot of people were like, fuck Justice. This matchup yeah. sucks. This one, Justice players are like, Axel should jump off a bridge. They complain about it all the time. This is not yeah. good. Yeah, and I see, I see in chat, uh, uh, Inbluk says, Zoner versus Zoner, that is that is not really what you're going to see here. <laughs> he went for the Thunderbolt? When it comes, <laughs> when it comes to zoning, uh, Justice really just cannot keep up with Axel in this matchup, at least from, from what I would expect and what I understand. Between between 5P and you know stuff like 2H and especially Renson, if he is just in poke range, she just can't zone. She just can't really get um, the nukes out on screen. So yeah, you're gonna see stuff like that where she's gonna be using, you know, force break dash to try to get in and stuff like that. I would expect a lot of counter from her to try to counter the pokes um, and try to, you know, get some get something started that way. But um, yeah. yeah, very difficult. The hard part is uh, the thing, but we're saying this, BTF's making it happen. So I'm not trying to say this matchup's unwinnable by any stretch, but Justice has to be a lot more considerate over what she's doing. Went for it again. <laughs> and for the record, I always call that move Thunderbolt because I don't know if any of you have played Dudley in either Third Strike or Street Fighter 4, but he's got a weird ass move that's similar and you also like never see it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think uh, I like the idea of him using it there uh, because he had meter to RC and I'm guessing that was the idea, but then he just didn't RC it on block. So. Um, very weird. Oh, he only has it in second impact in Street Fighter. What a weird fucking move. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, smokes him out the air. Trying to go for the air fishing. Yeah, and these air tech situations are also so bad for Justice because she doesn't have an air dash. So if Axel sees you, you're sniped. Like, that's it. Yeah, I mean, he's he's making it work right now. Okay, gets tagged by the 6H, but that's okay. Uh, just, just jumping in. I mean... Zoner main's got a... Oh, that's gonna hit. And she gets version. so much damage off that. Oh my god. Wait, you know what's like... It can be really frustrating if you're learning this game. Justice is a zoner who has a wake-up reversal that she gets a lot of damage off of. And just like that, BTF yeah. takes it. I think the, the main problem here is zoner main just not not zoning. Uh, letting, letting her kind of jump in and, and kind of maneuver. I mean, maybe I'm, you know overestimating the, the that aspect of the matchup but i would expect that axel should really be able to lock her down and just make it a, a nightmare for her to move and we're just say, we're not seeing that so. i'm gonna say ryan i think the matchup solved i think we're seeing the meta develop i think that uh <laughs> looking pretty good to meet you yeah i mean B btf is definitely he's, he's definitely making some hard reads but they are they're working i mean he's he's making the reads like he, he had some some kind of yomi you know force break dash that that were hitting uh extended limbs and stuff like that so He's making it work. Yeah, for sure. And you saw there the round start counter from Axel, and I was actually wondering if BTF was going to do a round start counter, but it was the other character. All right, here we go. Zoner main now with the corner pressure. That's a curse right. sentence. Zoner main with the corner pressure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keeping her in the corner. Gets the 6H. Okay. Get that angle out. Oh my god, he gets punished for it! We, yeah, we saw that in game one. You gotta be careful how you burst against Justice. She does hit you from pretty far away, so it's not uncommon to see a burst just naturally whiff like that. Oh, and the 6P? One more hit could do it here. He got oh, hit by the nuke! I was gonna say, he's sitting on 100% meter. I thought he was gonna do the the Thunderbolt again and just <laughs> RC it. I think, I think, honestly, no joke, I think it's a fantastic option in those situations. Once, uh, if Justice does get some momentum and get some nukes out, I think it's a great option to just, uh, you know, kind of reset the situation. Sure. It's one of those, uh, it's like a class of moves that are like, only do this in EVO Top 8, where it's just a move that is like, usually kind of like, suicidal, but it's like, oh, in those situations, totally do it. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's a totally viable move anytime you, you know, are willing to RC it. Sure. Oh, nice. Wow, beat that. Oh, down, great. Down. Yeah, that goes yeah. straight through the nukes. That is definitely like an on-paper reason why this matchup isn't preferable, but... ETF's made the big justice comebacks before, but the Renson. Very nice. All right, trying to stay alive here. Zoner main putting around on the board. Ooh, a little high for the Renson. Uh, there's the Yomi counter, but it doesn't pay off. <laughs> Tagged low. And so what I was saying before when we saw BTF, he does a great job once he does get some momentum of mixing up the, you know, just running that 50-50. The fact that those lows are working is kind of a, you know, testament to the fact that he's put the fear of, of the overhead into Zoner main. Yeah, for sure. And ooh, the... The fun Axel combos, not quite the ender, but who cares? That's most of the damage. Yeah, he exactly. He got most of the damage. That, that's good enough. Blockable, that's going to put him so close to dead. Any one more unblockable or quick hit. 6 H the RC doesn't make it fast enough, but he does it again. Yeah, I, I love the idea there of the uh, 6 H RC just to close out the round. Like you said, didn't quite uh, get it fast enough, but great idea. Great idea. So 1-1 one, one here. All right, we're going into potentially the last, or I know for sure the last match here, uh, VTF versus Zoner Main. Zoner Main is surprisingly not playing uh, the conventional Zoner, but what's gonna happen? Uh oh. Okay. Okay. Whew. Got scared for a second. Yeah. <laughs> All right, game three. Oh my god, okay. he went for it. His Zoner Main has gone for the hard read round starters a lot of the time, and they've been, you know, not really getting him in too much hot water. So we keep seeing the situation where BTF backs up and kind of gets out of the range of, of uh, Axel's pokes, and then Zoner Main's instinct seems to be to uh, run and jump, and he's 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 uh, kind of getting himself into trouble because he keeps jumping onto missiles. Uh, I think uh, he can play the matchup a lot slower. I think he can just, you know, when she moves back, just he moves forward. And, uh, you know, just stay in your poke range. I don't think he needs to get too overly aggressive. Man, the full screen footsies there for BTF are great! He's as you, <laughs> as you were saying it, as you were saying it. I was just gonna say, sounds amazing, the Renzo, but doing the full screen was, teleport to punish that, that was amazing. Yeah, that was the most godlike whiff punish we've seen all night. Whiff, whiff punished Renson with the with the force break dash. Super sick. See, like here, just, just dash up and block, you know, just get back into your optimal range. I think you could probably play this matchup, like, extremely risk-free you know mm -hmm. the wake up throw works out though this should be a good grip of damage for him axel bomber it is a black beat but we'll allow it oh it gets the reset jumped into the burst i wonder if he was trying to throw it <laughs> nice again with the command grab not gonna be enough but really low a lot of meter <gasps> nice love it just mm -hmm. spend the meter i love it i love got it got it yeah and she had ultimately too much meter there to really like it. you had to be scared you had to go for something yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like the patience to respect her meter. Great. See, that Zoner Main's been having a lot of trouble getting at that angle where that uh, anti-air is, like, working for him, but finally kind of yeah. walking backwards into the spot where it does. Gets the FRZ Zoner Main flexing! Nice, nice. It's funny, I actually wrote that down on my notepad because we hadn't seen that much from him, uh, and I wanted to make sure he was aware of that, so I'm glad to see him uh, using that. A little Ooh, late, but that's okay. It. So here, yeah, you're gonna have to be patient, but okay, gets tagged a little bit, that's okay. So here just, okay, gets through it. I was gonna say just run up and block, but that was kind of okay. I mean, he wound up getting thrown, but he did get through the missiles. And just as one of those characters, he gets a lot of damage off of her throws in the air, teleport to throw off the AA timing. BTF is making this comeback happen. Yeah, this is scary. This is scary. Zoner main just needs one hit here. Oh, oh that barely missed. No punish! Oh, oh, it's oh. Yes, he sees the counter hit and converts! Sick! <laughs> Such a nice use of the force break. Saw the counter hit, got the conversion. That was awesome. Man. That was sick. I thought BTF was gonna do it. That was so scary. That is, you are sweating bullets if that man is just walking at you with that much health left. <laughs> that was sick. That was sick. That was a great match. Honestly, there's not really too much uh, to go over there. I think it was mostly just, you know, higher level just kind of big idea stuff. Like I mentioned, I think uh, Zoner main just um, had that instinct to jump. I don't, I don't think that that's necessarily necessary, uh, necessarily necessary <laughs> uh, in, in the matchup. Let me 
look at something here for a second. Where is Axel? There we go. I'm learning all sorts of stuff about the character select screen. You know, for me, it's just there's just one one face <laughs> and then a bunch of blank space. It is noise. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if we look at something like this, let me do it a little more realistically. So something like this is what we were kind of seeing before. So, you know, he'd be standing at this range and then all of a sudden BTF would jump back and his instinct was to jump. And here's what happens, you know, even though you may, you know, get this, although I should have recorded her blocking high, but you know, she's blocking high and then you land on the missile, you get yourself into a lot of trouble. I think the instinct here can just be to dash forward. You know, you don't, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to jump. You know what I mean? It's very, very easy for Axel to get back into his optimal range in this matchup. Now, of course, uh, BTF was doing a really good job of using like the force break dash and stuff like that um, to, to, you know, kind of mix up, um, you know, the pace of the match and and make, uh, you know, make it difficult. But, um, you know, you can still defend against that by moving forward and, and FD breaking, which we covered earlier. And, uh, you know, then when you see the missile, very trivial to just hit 5P. Um, you know, again, I don't think you have to get fancy in this matchup. You just want to, you just want to control space and you can kind of react to what she's doing. And if you just stand at your 5P range right here, you really don't have to commit to anything. If she tries to missile, you can just straight up react with 5P. And if she jumps, you have all the anti-airs in the world to, uh, you know, to anti-air her jump. So obviously you got to watch out for the force break stuff, but, um, you know, I think that's probably why this matchup is considered so difficult for, for justice, just because... If, if they're not willing to take any risks from the Axel side, it's like, how do you really, what do you do? You know, yeah. <laughs> it's like, how do you get started? So. For sure. And I think that, uh, yeah, Zoner Maven is probably just being a little bit overzealous trying to jump on in there. And thanks so much for the big PG treble continuing their big gifts up. Appreciate you, homie. Um, and I think, uh, if you can believe it, Ryan, we're actually going to be getting into winner's finals. Sick, sick. Which is going to be crazy. We're going to get into winners finals, which is going to be first to three for the record. Uh, it's tournament standard rules, so it's going to be Eureka and Johnson facing off uh, winners finals. Very cool. Johnson was the Milia player, right? Yep. And Eureka was the Haas player? Hushmark? <clears throat> no, so yeah. wait. I don't Haas, remember. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And awesome. My memory is so good. Get out of here, Big Ryan. All right, uh, Johnson <laughs> and. Eureka Haas. It's winner's finals, everybody. I will now ask you, if you have it, if you can find it in your hearts, in your chair, in your pockets, please make some noise for winner's finals. Johnson and Eureka here at the first Beginner's Guilty Gear Cup. Oh, yeah. All right. Opening uh, with Far Slash. I like it. So this is going to be another very offensive matchup. Both characters just want to run their game. They want to get uh, knocked down, want to, you know, pressure the opponent. Um, so we will see uh, who kind of gets the upper hand here. All right. Early burst. Okay, the 2H hits, but uh, he doesn't get a combo off that non-counter hit, so not a big deal. Yeah, and so, again, this is a little bit similar to what we were seeing before, but uh, it is a little bit different in this matchup, I think, just due to... Oh, counter hit 2H. But yeah, due, due to the uh, difference with Order Soul's jump arc, um, you know, it's just... Uh, she, she probably does want to spend a little more time in the air in this matchup. Just stay on top of him. Uh oh, doesn't have the pin anymore. Wow, wake up throw actually catches the gun blaze. Big opportunity. Doesn't have pin, but doesn't really need it. And blocking it out. Two gets. Oh, that was a brilliant use of FD. That was like a staple. Yeah. Like that is the why you use FD, right? Pushed her out so far that her 2D actually whiffed and she couldn't yep. cancel it. Pushing her back to neutral. Let Eureka breathe and get out of the corner. Brilliant use of FD. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. That was that was great defense. Catching nice chase. <laughs> yeah, chasing down the back dash with the rocket. Whoa, tricky. I actually didn't know which side he was on there. That was very tricky. Oh my Big god. Count. Dude, he's just slugging at Johnson and it's working. Block the burst, but not quite in time to punish anything. Oh, here we go, though. Another chance for some mix up. Nice DP safe Oki. Love it. Gets the throw. Eureka does not oh. have a burst, so he's got to hold all this mix. Again, the DP doesn't work. Pokey again. Gets the hit. No conversion, though. No, oh, gets chucked. Johnson's comeback dreams. Maybe we'll be dashed. Eureka with the... Oh. 
Fafnir from downtown. <laughs> that is a low, ladies and gentlemen. My man said <laughs> from downtown. God, that is that being a low is cursed. <laughs> yeah, from like two thirds of the screen that hit. I, I think he's uh, stuck something out. I don't know if that I, that was like especially far. I don't know. That was wild. But uh, yeah. That was that was great timing. That was that was great. I mean, they're both playing great right now. I, I like what I'm seeing a lot. Yeah, this is dope. And you're definitely seeing people in the ma uh, chat are talking about like how this matchup is. I don't think that's super relevant uh, in terms of like what we're seeing right now. But something that is immediately noticeable is like you see this quick little sequence. Look how much damage that did to Milia, right? Like that is something that is just on paper. Look at the numbers. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. All right, burst. I like the burst there. Uh, from a strategy standpoint, because uh, Millie used the pin, so now she doesn't have access to it. It's on the floor. She's trying to go back for it now, I think. Did she get it? She just still doesn't have it. There's an icon in this game, right? I think they added it in this game. For what? Sorry. Uh, for, for when she has pin. Uh, maybe not, because she does. She did have it there. I, I could have sworn she did. Yeah, there's no icon. I don't think so. It's just... <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I could have sworn they added it. Am I going crazy? Is, isn't there an icon in one of the games for when she has pin? Maybe I'm going crazy. I'm losing I, my mind. I, I don't remember there being one. <laughs> oh my god, jumped up and threw. I wonder if he was trying to suss out a burst. Rika's fiending for souls. And there's the pin. Doesn't pick it back up, though. Trying to close out the round without it. I mean, he just needs one hit. Oh, and the burst. The hero burst. Trying to make it happen right now. Wow, just... Oh my okay, god. Well, he gets the burst out of Johnson, so it, it does wind up paying off. I'm going for burst to burst though. I feel like there's a school of thought here, but ultimately Eureka uh, has to like deal with worse Oki situations, which is where his burst is really useful. And Johnson dies in about six hits, which is where his burst is really useful, right? So yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I really there's really not much to say. I, I like what I'm seeing from both sides. I like the buttons that Eureka is choosing to use to try to control the space in front of him and keep Milia from just dashing or air dashing in. He's using a lot of far slash. Um, a lot of, you know, jumping normals, obviously, with, with Order Soul Jump H and stuff like that. But um, especially the grand normals, I'm very impressed. I like what I'm seeing. And uh, Johnson is just doing a good job of staying mobile, and he's, he's, he is getting opportunities, like right here. Yeah, HLR um, was pointing it out. Uh, that was quite a slash back uh, smash earlier that didn't really work out for him. That is so risky. Oh, what a roll, but didn't uh, get anything off of it. Actually got himself thrown. Okay, nice uh, little stance cancels there. The stance cancels almost disproportionately make everything sold us more, plus the Canadian burst. Oh, Canada, that is too high up. Yeah, unfortunate, unfortunate. So one thing I guess we can talk about also for, for some of the newer players that aren't familiar with Order Soul. Uh, I say stance cancel. Um, it's maybe not like a traditional stance cancel. Uh, Order Soul has like a, like a Dragon Ball key charge, basically, where he can charge up his special meter. And um, you can cancel it very quickly after you start it. And it's a special move. So you can cancel your normals into the power up and then cancel very quickly out of the power up. And so it, it gives him like this kind of stance cancel pressure that you would see from like a, if you're familiar with like Sea Viper from Street Fighter 4 or something like that, it's very similar to that style of, uh, of cancel or similar like Johnny, if you're familiar with Johnny, um, very similar. Surprisingly less loud than Sea Viper stance cancels. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so if you don't really know what you're looking for, you might not realize that you're seeing it pretty often. Like right there, he yeah. did sweep and then uh, did the stance and just very quickly canceled it. So um, it's just uh, it's just tricky. It gives him like another dimension on his normals because it you know obviously changes the frame data and stuff like that. For sure. Um, and yeah, it is one of the biggest tools he has is kind of keep his offense going. Because Haas ultimately, uh, like fundamentally, he's not as mobile as some other characters. He's got some issues, but like once he's actually hitting you, life is pretty hard. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so he's using Rocket a lot more. Um, hard to say if it's because Johnson is fighting on the ground more and he's recognizing that, or if he's just using it in more spots, you know, when uh, when she's likely to be on the ground or, you know, when he's already pressuring. So, But he's getting a lot of mileage out of Rocket all of a sudden. Which yeah, so is pretty cool to see. I didn't mean to not say Haas isn't fast. I just mean Haas can't jump to the top of the screen and fly away like some other characters. 
Yeah, 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 exactly. There's a difference between speed and mobility, right? So a character can be fast, but they don't really have a lot of options for where they're going to go. So even though Haas is not especially slow, I wouldn't say he's fast, but he's not slow, he's kind of average. But the thing is, like, where is he going? You know, he's got a low jump arc, so he's either running or he's doing a low jump. Whereas, you know, Milia is both fast and mobile, where she's not only quick to move around, but, you know, she's got the, the double air dash, and, you know, she's got, like, all this, uh, you know, all this actual mobility, you know, she can change her jump arc with pin and, and stuff like that, so. And there, the disc Oki, yeah, you can't, but surprisingly kind of worked out for him because he did get yeah. launched out of the corner, right? So. Yeah, I think if you're, if you're Order Soul, you're happy about that, right? Like, you'll take that hit to get out of the mix-up, so. Ooh, finds a throw. There's, it's so even. Wow, what a punish, but nothing really for it. Negative. Yeah, Jolson was actually an almost negative there. Yeah, negative. Still negative warnings. Got to be careful he doesn't lose his meter. I mean, it's pretty close to the end of the round, so it's not that big of a deal, but yeah. So what, what is the score right now? I don't see the scores on my screen. Ooh, sorry, the score is actually 2-1 right now. Eureka. Nice, nice. Okay. HLR says there isn't enough 6-H. Haas 6-H sure is good. Are we seeing the character switch, or is he just catching his breath? Just catching his breath. Okay. Gonna fight or Holy Order Soul with his brother Soul. I believe that is the lore. Please don't fact check me. <laughs> so uh, the one thing I would say at this point, just from watching these matches, is uh, Johnson is doing a good job. Like he clearly understands the the basic game plan. We're gonna see it here again. Knockdown into Disco Key. Perfect. This is exactly what I was gonna talk about. So he 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 already you know knows. I think it, he was just getting a lot of opportunities with knockdowns where he didn't have pins, so he couldn't set that up. But what I was about to say is um, he's getting a lot of knockdowns and he's setting disc, but he's not really getting anything off the mix-up still. He's being respectful of the reversal options, you know, specifically DP, and that's great awareness. But it looks like even though he knows some ideas, he doesn't have the mechanics down of what to actually do to both be uppercut safe and also mix up, which Milia can do, which is kind of one of the most disgusting parts of the character. And so uh, I'm really happy to see that secret garden at the beginning of that round because that is uh, one of the ways that she can that she can do that. Yeah, and something else to call out there that happened in that match is that uh, he did a great job of putting down the disc in a situation where he could have potentially gotten reversal thrown, and then he jumped over and baited the 6H, which counter hit him and got the conversion off of it. That was a really great use of disc. Great movement here from Johnson, faking with the uh, double air dash and getting the knockdown here. But uh, again, great defense from Eureka. See if he can block it again. Yeah. Ooh, oh, wait. the accidental front. Accidental, or is my man popping off? Who knows? But nah. he gets back in. <laughs> oh, and he, he had the hit there, but he did that air dash a little high. Um, or maybe hit the button too soon when he landed. It didn't come out. Got himself thrown. Now he's in a bad spot. Oh, man. Big hit here. Oh, oh the first made it worse. What a punish. Stop. A Are you serious? <laughs> that was ridiculous. He got like, that was like optimal punish. He, he caught the burst. I, I got to talk about this for a second because that was insane. He caught the burst on the way down with jump H, jump D. And that's hard enough in combos just to get like the jump H, jump D, delay, jump H, jump D, to catch the burst on the way down. He also switched sides to put him back in the corner. That was, that was ridiculous. Damn, Eureka really did have a, a Eureka moment there. That was some, that was some shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, his, his third eye opened for sure. You know, Ryan, people often talk about like, what does it mean to have a bad burst? What does it mean to be a good burst? That, that burst was a little rough. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a nuance because there's a very fine line between a bad burst and a good burst that just doesn't work out. Yeah. I think I think the when you talk about a bad burst, it's a burst where it's the kind of thing like you should know better. You know, like you burst in a spot where it was an option select or, you know, it was always going to whiff or something like that where, you know, if you have more experience or you've done your homework, you're going to know that this is not the right spot to burst. Yeah. Uh, I think anything other than that, it's kind of out of the territory of being a bad burst and sure. then it becomes more like, you know, it didn't work out like that burst was okay and the person dropped their combo or they dropped their input and it happened to whiff or you know that they hard baited your burst you know that doesn't mean it was a bad burst that means they read your burst you know there's nothing wrong with that so it's a it's a very fine line there there's definitely some some nuance there yeah 100 percent. And, I, and I, I think with that said at this level i don't really think there's many bad bursts because like i said i think there's an expectation there that you should know better when you burst badly 
and uh, you know, we're learning here. So you know, it's it's a learning experience, and and that takes a lot of experience, and it takes in a lot of cases it takes matchup knowledge, and uh, that's really not something that you should necessarily expect at at the you know at the beginning stages. That's something that you worry about much later on once you've got a, a, a good you know comfort level with your character so yeah 100 percent. that was great um yeah exactly there are no dumb questions in class right i totally agree uh mm -hmm. but yeah that was a sick match that was really really awesome yeah that was great that was great the the little bit of feedback i mean again we're getting into some higher level play here so my feedback is going to get uh you know less less obvious and, and less uh distinct but uh, the one thing I would just say from from Johnson again, you know, maybe uh, take another look at some of your Oki that's DP safe and really tighten that up and really get get you know your your options there for your highs and your lows in. I also feel like maybe I was just you know not not paying enough attention. I feel like I was not seeing a lot of six K. Uh, certainly not necessarily in the mix up spots for Oki, but I think you could stand to even just use more six K in your block strings like. You know, you get a random ID and you're pressuring mid-screen. There's nothing wrong with doing 5K, 6K S disc, and just get a knockdown. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be used during Oki, like with an H disc. You can just use it in your string, or or also like 6K into hair car, and just get a knockdown. There's, you know, yeah. it's it's a it's a strong tool. So maybe something to look at there. Uh, TK Bad Moon, but again, now we're starting to get into some of the more advanced stuff. So you know, but um. Yeah, over, overall, that was that was a great match. Is there anything you wanted to go back to the lab for, Ryan, or do you want to just get into the next one? I think we just keep moving. Honestly, okay. again, you know, there's nothing really that stands out that I could really show. And and again, as, as the level of play gets higher, it's going to be harder for me to show stuff because I don't play these characters, you know? So I can show, like, really simple stuff, but, you know, oh, to start yeah. showing, like, here's how you do DP safe Oki with Milia, <laughs> I, you know, I have no idea. So, yeah. you know. For sure, <laughs> I just, I just, I just know that it exists, so I'm gonna make sure that you're aware of it, and then uh, it's on you to, to do the homework. Yeah, so I totally agree. Um, cool. Then I think we're ready to get into our next one. As a reminder, that was our winners' finals, and we're gonna jump down here to our losers' semis, which is gonna be Ragnall and Zoner main. So theoretically, should be Soul versus uh, either Venom or Axel, whichever one Zoner main is feeling like taking out for a stroll today. Uh, any gut reactions to either of those matchups, Ryan? Um, sorry, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I was reading chat. What, what is the, <laughs> the matchup here? The Zoner main. Uh, Zoner main Axel. and Ragnall. No, you're good. Uh, Zoner main, uh, and Ragnall, which is going to be Soul versus either Axel or Venom. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, both matchups are pretty similar. Soul's just trying to get in, uh, and either Axel or Venom, they're just trying to control the ground, um, trying to kind of stay planted firmly on the ground and, um, just keep Soul out basically. So. Mm -hmm. This matchup, I would say, Venom specifically, it's pretty different than Exert. Um, just due to the difference with Fafnir and some of the, um, like the the risk and reward on some of Soul's pokes are a little bit different in this game because of his changes. So you know, getting hit by certain things, like getting hit in the air by you know, bar slash five H or something, you know, it's just it, it's just different, different of the matchup dude i you know i thought for a second that getting hit by like cross a uh, mad struggle from the back like that was like a weird one-off that happens all the no. time <laughs> it happens all the time it happens all the time yeah that it has like a ton of invuln it's like basically full body invuln if i'm not mistaken uh once he starts doing the flip so it's very common people try to hit something from behind and they actually stick their hurt box into the hitbox so that happens all the time it's a third strike chun problem where you try to walk up behind her yes. if you whiff super r2 and you just get kicked in the face that's exactly what it is yeah except imagine that chun has invuln on that last kick which she doesn't but imagine if she did think about how easy it is to stick a, a button through her you know what i mean yeah so sure for sure all right but with that said ragnall takes a quick game one okay here's a big hit nice oh no oki though okay Oh, the ball! That uh, that's that's such a bad feeling with Venom when the ball actually gets in the way of your combo and messes up your knockdown. Yeah, right. It's like it's. I thought my balls had me. Oh my yeah, god! He exactly. went for like the loop. <laughs> so again, I think that Fafnir. Oh, nice, nice conversion. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna say, I think I think that Fafnir follow-up should be techable. Um, it knocks you down pretty quickly, but uh, I I think it should be techable before you hit the ground. So I think a couple of people are getting knocked down here in some of these situations where they they don't need to be 
Yeah. But uh, not a big deal. And I will say as a non-Venom player who will say that parts of this character are very strong, FB Stinger is very strong. Uh, that is yeah. a, just such a powerful option for Venom to just for 25 meter basically say, like, I would like it to be my turn. Um, and you have to be very specific with your options to beat it if you actually want to fully beat it. Yes, no, absolutely. Immediately the one Venom player I know in chat says it's honest. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, simple combo, a little, little bit of a drop there, but that's okay. Yeah, I wonder if you should have gone for DP into DP Ender at that height instead of uh, Banner Revolver. Yeah, probably, probably. But, I mean, the idea was there. I am I think if you can hit Banner Revolver there, you probably get a better combo. So, you know, going going for something potentially better. Sure, Matt Shark, he's just letting it whiff yeah. this time. <laughs> Yeah, so I was I was gonna show that earlier. Maybe we'll show it after this match. I'll I'll, I'll show a little bit about H Mad struggle. Yeah, for sure. Oh, and wow, the gunflame actually went past the stinger. It didn't cancel it, and That's... the trade was not in uh, Zodermain's favor there since he died. That's really funny. Something I wanted to point out there, and I think it's such an important concept in Guilty Gear, is you saw how Zodermain baited the anti-air by jumping up, falling down, double jumping to make Ragnall's 2H with, and then came down with the GH and beat it. And that's just like a fundamental aspect of this game that I think it take a lot of people a while to get used to. Yeah, and actually I'm going to make a note of that because maybe we'll show that also because you're, you're talking about it from the Venom side, doing it to Soul, but actually that's like an extremely legitimate tactic for Soul in this specific matchup. So maybe we'll do that as well. Are you sure that's not like cursed uh, tech to reveal Venom's weaknesses? <laughs> no, no, I, I need to. I need more people to do it against me, honestly, because when it's so rare that when people do it to me, I, I can't adjust fast enough. So I played uh, Zidane for eight hours uh, like a week ago and uh, couldn't stop myself. <laughs> and I, I'm not saying like eight hours, like as an example, we played for eight and a half hours straight. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, and we saw there uh, 6H, such a powerful tool for Venom a lot of times to control that airspace. It is nerfed from Accent Core uh, pretty hard, but still fantastic buff. Ooh, and there. Letting, letting Soul get away with the Riot Stomp. I mean, he didn't get hit, but Zoner main... Oh, wow, the flip actually timed well to stop the <laughs> Riot Stomp. But yeah, I mean, that that's just something that takes a little bit of practice. You just have to kind of be conscious of it until you get the instinct. But uh, yeah, when you see Riot Stomp and you're not doing anything, it, that should be a slam dunk 6P. Yeah, for sure, right? Man, he's doing a great job of converting off those uh, Force Break Stingers. Yeah, and he's also, Zoner Man's really comfortable just shooting it out there and then blocking. And he's like, hey, are you really going to try? And uh, yeah. Ragnall has been taking the bait, right? So. Yeah, exactly. And we've seen that a couple times. He's burst the uh, Fafnir follow-up. So nice timing on the burst. Kind of what we were talking about before, right, where bursting well comes with matchup knowledge. Mm -hmm. And uh, Zoner Main correctly understands that Ragnall is using a lot of that Fafnir follow-up. And so when he sees the Fafnir, he's bursting, and he knows there's a high chance he's going to actually burst out of the follow-up and waste a bunch of Ragnall's meters. So. Yeah, for sure. And I love that RC usage there from Ragnall just to make sure that he got the hard knockdown. Because it is so important, and he catches him with the Carcass Raid. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, choice there had the anticipation that he was going to jump did h carcass which is kind of what you do when you want to shut down an air approach uh and again we're seeing his his gut instinct when he sees right stomp he's jumping back it's not the worst thing but it actually you can get yourself into trouble I, again I, I i'm just going to push this a little bit because i think it's pretty important you got to develop the instinct to, to 6p it because even just jumping back when you make right stomp with soul recovers like instantly when he yeah. lands so if you wait and you jump back kind of late, he's actually going to have the situational advantage there because he's going to be recovered on the ground and you're going to be in the air above him. So I would actually even say if you're going to jump, jump forward so that you're jumping away from him. Yeah. Um, jumping back, you know, yeah, you're, you're not having to block it, but you're potentially putting yourself in kind of a bad spot. It's also just like, if you think of Soul, like, he just, he lives and thrives in scrambles, right? Like, he wants to create scrambles because he just disproportionately usually benefits from them. And that's exactly one of the situations where, like, don't give him the scramble. Like, even if it feels like you're evading it, exactly. you're making it worse. No, exactly. Exactly. Ooh, the Force Break Stinger just barely missing there. Yeah. <laughs> Good uh, block there on the Carcass Raid. Recognize it. Didn't, like, overly press. Yep, yeah. All right, little punish on the Grand Viper. You can get a little bit more than that, but 
as long as you get a knockdown, I'm not going to complain. Yeah, for sure. That's like, it's so important, right? And even, he punished uh, DP earlier with 2D, and it's like, great, like, just get the knockdown. Yeah. yeah, literally, like, that's not an exaggeration. Especially, like, Venom in a lot of cases, he's not going to get a ton of damage off of those kind of punishes. So the most important thing is that you get a knockdown. If you're not sure that you can get more than that, just take the knockdown. Unless you are 100% sure just take the sweep, it's totally fine. Yeah, 100%. And we are getting into the potentially the last round here if Zoner Main can close it out against Ragnar. And this is first to two as a reminder, we drop down to the uh, semis. Trying to fight out of the corner here. Oh, I love what he just did there. Oh, so he did jump P, jump S, I'm talking about Zoner Main here, and met him air to air, but then he saw that he was blocking, so he double jump canceled the jump S. It's actually something that I wouldn't expect to see at, at a lower level here, because that's something that you kind of are forced to do at a higher level, so you don't get air thrown because they're blocking your air to air. Um, so that, that's really sick that he did that, actually. Yeah, but then to compliment our boy Ragnall here, that conversion off that trade for Gunflame straight up did like 60% of Zoner Bane's life. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, Zoner Bane going for the Guts Crush kind of combo there with the Dubious Curve loop. I always struggle to say that. Dubious um, Curve. Yeah, got got uh, one rep and then kind of missed a second when he tried to 2S a little too soon, but good awareness to try to go for the kill there with that combo. And Ragnall's trying his best to keep it scrambly, and even then, dude, with Bandit Bringer, he's plus. Like, it doesn't matter what you were doing. <laughs> yeah, Zoner main trying to close out right now. He bets his burst that he can uh, win this round. Might come back to bite him if he can't close it out, but so far he's hanging in there. Yeah, and unfortunately, Zoner oh. main doesn't have any meter. <gasps> Oh my god, oh, this, is, this is so close, yeah. And the thing is, Ragnar has burst, but if he gets hit with the right thing, he might not even be able to burst quick enough, but he closes out the round, so going into round three now, and Zonermain doesn't have his burst. I think it was a fine burst last round, it was just, you know, it was a little bit of a bet. Anti-air 5k, but the second one loses. We are in double Linguini territory here. Whoever wins this round takes it all home. And again, just a simple punish on the Grand Viper, nothing wrong with it. Oh, the no. big hit, what do we got off of this? Love it, just simple. Love simple it. and did half his health! <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You don't have to get fancy. Oh, big, big uh, hit there. Back here on block, chip. Yeah, good awareness to Faultless. Oh, good awareness. Oh, oh, and that is gonna be it. Ragnall takes it. Coming back, because Zoner main definitely looked like he had the advantage there for a while. Man, that was crazy. Holy smokes. I'm gonna jump in a training mode here with Venom. We'll show a couple of things. So I think uh, we need to talk about two things here, uh, both relating to Mad Struggle. So something happened at the very, very end there that I wanna just talk about very quickly. Um, let me set the dummy to, let's see how can I do this. Okay, let's set the dummy to Mad Struggle. Oh, oops, so sorry. actually, let me, let me do it exactly how uh, how Zoner Main did it. Okay, so here's here's the sequence that happened towards the very end. Then we're, we'll talk about something else, uh, somewhat related. Um, so he he got a jump in H and then did Mad Struggle on the way down, and in this case, it actually hit. Um, the jump H hit, and I believe it was counter hit, and it comboed into the Mad Struggle. Okay, now when uh, Ragnall saw that he got hit he burst. He saw that he got hit by the jump H, so he burst. And uh, the burst actually worked. And I just want to talk about this for a second because this is an example of, I would consider that a bad burst uh, under the assumption that the player has the matchup knowledge that they should kind of know better. This is a, a kind of spot where you don't want to burst and it's kind of on um, zoner main for kind of not, uh, not, not being blocking at the time. So a good habit to get into, and this is not only for Venom, this is for any character. This goes back to what we were talking about before. Anytime you're doing a string, a block string, a combo, anything, if you can be holding back, you should be holding back because you're just gonna get accidental burst blocks a lot of the time. Um, and this is a perfect example of that. So if Zoner Main had done this sequence and been holding back while the mad struggle was happening, this is what would have happened. But not that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that either. I did it a little high. Like this. Mm. So you can see that the match struggle is not hitting fully. And uh, as soon as I burst, Venom lands. And then because he's holding back, he's, he's blocking. 
So this is just one of those things where it just takes a little bit of practice, a little bit of mindfulness, but anytime you can be holding block, you kind of want to be holding block. And for, for characters like Venom or Axel, it comes a little more natural, Potemkin also, because you, you're naturally, you want to be charging anyway, so you're holding down back a lot of time anyway. But this is true for, for any uh, character, really. And it doesn't cost you anything. You still kind of do, you know, if, you're, if your goal was to land and then do, you know, 2K close slash, you can still do that. You're just holding back the whole time. So yeah. you don't really lose anything. It's just a different way of doing it that has this added benefit of, hey, sometimes they're just going to burst into your mad struggle and you're going to block it sometimes. You know, there's just no downside. Yeah, uh, sure. The other thing I'll just uh, show very quickly, because I see it looks like we have our match lined up here. Uh, since we've talked about it a couple times, I just feel like uh, it'll be fun to show chat um, how this move works. So this is H Mad Struggle. So it is not a follow-up to this. It is a different move. So this is S Mad Struggle, and then this is H Mad Struggle. The H version, when he lands, he goes into this flip, and the flip is basically fully invuln. And so uh, just to show you guys really quick, because this is a, similar to Riot Stomp, uh, I think not as maybe, uh, you know, you don't see it as often as Riot Stomp, but this is the kind of move where you have to know how to punish it or it's going to really trip you up. And the way that this move works is it hits three times. Um, it is minus on block, but it's not that minus on block. But the third hit, let me just record this here. The third hit is crouchable. And it's a little unintuitive because you have to stand block the dive part. The dive part is a high, but the flip is a mid. So the idea is that you stand up and then you crouch and the third hit whiffs and then you have a lot more time to punish and it's counter hit recovery. So, you know, it's very simple to then punish it once you make the third hit whiff. So that's kind of the idea. This is maybe a little bit more advanced, but just to throw it out there, just uh, I see a lot of people, you know, they get hit by this. And the tricky thing is when he does it backwards, you do have to wait. You want to wait until he gets into the flip. You have more time than you probably think you do. And you don't want to do something like like uh, this, if I can time it right, that, and stick something out, that was far slash, and uh, you'll get yourself hit, because he is involved. So, um, yeah, so that's a little lesson on on H Mad Struggle. Let's see if I can reproduce that one more time. Yeah. Good. You're out here so. saving people's lives, talking about Riot Stump and H Mad Struggle. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, good good, good stuff uh, from, from both players. Uh, I have some stuff I want to talk about with, with Ragnall, but we're going to see him again, so I'll, I'll yeah. save that. We're going to see him again right now, Ryan, as exactly. we're getting into our Losers Finals. If you can't believe it, everybody. Man, this tournament is now schmoovin'. I'm all about this. So we're, our Losers Finals here is going to be Ragnall versus Johnson Milia. Super quick, I see a question in chat. Uh, Sarjwa asking, H Mad Struggle is not invuln in Exert, correct? Question mark? Uh, no, it is exactly the same. It is identical. Uh, maybe some of the frames are slightly different, but the function of the move, I wouldn't be surprised if the frames are exactly the same, actually. Um, it, it is the same in Vault in Exit. Ooh, we got the black screen. All right, everyone give us your power. There we go. We're in it. Johnson versus Ragnall. Losers finals. Once again, everybody, I'm going to ask if you can find it in your hearts. Please, for the love of God, make some noise for our two players here. They are here in Losers finals. All right, so we got some, a lot of really nice movement. I, I like, I, we're seeing, you know, earlier I was showing the FD breaks. We're seeing both players using that uh, FD break uh, technique to control their movement on the ground. Kind of kind of important in a fast-paced matchup like this. Oh, great punish. All right, the burst. Wow, we're so, I feel like he's barely gotten hit and he's already losing most of his health. Yeah. And I mean, this is the life of Milia, right? You, you gotta, and this, this is why I was saying before, it's so important when you get the knockdown, you gotta, you gotta be ready. Um, you gotta, you gotta have your Oki ready to go. You gotta know what your options are if you want to be safe from DP. And and it's not to say you have to. Um, sometimes you have a choice. You gotta just go for the Oki. You know, you just gotta hope that they don't do it, and you have to hope that they're gonna believe that you're gonna do something safe, and uh, just run a strong Oki. Um, you say that as he gets DP'd back to back yeah. and dies. But notice when I started to say that, he didn't DP the first time. And notice that Johnson, he set the disc and he was so close, I think he was scared of the DP. And he actually IED back, which, not to get too into the weeds here, but that's actually kind of the worst thing you can do. Because he he not only didn't do any Oki, that wasn't even DP safe. If he had DP'd because he IED back, he would have just got hit anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's like the kind of thing where that's why I'm saying sometimes you just got to throw caution to the wind. 
and just, you know, if they DP, they DP, just run it, you know what I mean? Ooh, fantastic um, punish for that branded bringer, but now he's getting punched in the face! Oh, that's so much damage! Yeah, I mean, this is looking tough. He's He's got to get a knockdown. Here we go. Oh, he didn't quite get the roll all the way through. But but again, I like I like that he went for something. Oh my god, Hair Car so, actually beat it! What a TP! <laughs> did, was, did he react? Like, did he see the car coming? Maybe. I oh, don't know. That was don't from know. far away. <laughs> Certainly possible. I don't know. Did he catch a license plate on that automobile? Like, what the hell? But yeah, I mean, I think I think at this point, you know, we're getting into the, the level of play where missed opportunities become more and more important. You know, for some of the beginner players that we saw earlier, you know, it's more about, you know, your, your room for improvement is more about big ideas, you know, making, you know, get, getting knockdowns and, and, you know, having a mix up and stuff like that. We're getting into the point now where, you know, these players are already kind of past that point. And now it's about missed opportunities. And I think we're, we're really seeing that here where, you know, how many times can Ragnall riot stomp and, and it has, we haven't seen it get punished once. I mean, that's just, you know, that's going to win or lose you games depending on which side you're on, you know? Yeah, for sure. Um, and it's because it's worth noting, Ryan, it's not like you stop Riot, uh, like you hit Riot Stomp and that's it. You can really hurt him for doing Riot yeah. Stomp, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, in this kind of matchup, you could potentially win the whole round, like right there. If he had six feed that or that, <laughs> uh, you know, it oh, leads to yeah. a full combo. You take him to the corner, you get a knockdown. You could win the whole round off of that one hit. So, you know, it, it's a big deal. You know, it, it is a big deal. Oh, he tried to RC it to get the jump and the wake up DP again. Johnson trying to go for the 6k. Yeah, and, and you know, when when you're playing against a player like uh, Ragnall here, who he's taking a lot of risks, right? The downside to that is they're risky. They can be punished. But if you are not punishing them, this is the hardest play style to beat. You yeah. know, it's it's on you. It's 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 almost a little unfortunate. It's the reality of fighting games, but it's on you to punish them, and they're they're basically handing you an opportunity. And if you don't take it, it's gonna be real hard to win. That was fantastic. That was fantastic. The was combo fantastic. was on point, and then the secret garden in the corner won in the game. Easy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it's kind of what I was talking about before. You know, use the secret garden to get some strong Oki, and that's exactly when he needed to close it out. And maybe it's the kind of thing where, you know, if he knows DP safe Oki that uses the pin, maybe he should be a little more, uh, you know, uh, conservative with the pin in neutral so that he always has access to it when he does get the hit so that he can know that he can always go into the, you know, the, the strong secret garden Oki when he does finally get the hit. You know, if he doesn't know good options to do without the pin, maybe he just needs to play for now in a way that guarantees that he has pin when he gets the hit. For sure, and I like how in the middle of that point, Johnson died. That was a rough <laughs> round. <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, it, it's going to be tough if, if he's not if he's not taking advantage of the opportunities that Ragnall is giving him. You know, with a lot of DPS that are getting blocked, a lot of riot stomps. You know, what other opportunities are you going to get? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's 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 that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's uh, to, like, talk about what you were, the point you are making earlier, right? Like, Soul, it's not really the player. Soul as a character is, like, an exam, right? And there's that's just, like, a character archetype where it's, like, can you deal with the wacky things I'm throwing out in neutral? It's, you rolled up, it's time, like, did you study? Are you ready to beat my Riot Stomps? And if not, like, that's really rough, right? Yeah, exactly. And, it, you know, in, in some cases, there are characters, like, we, we saw it a little bit. I didn't really point it out, but, you know, um... Our, our last uh, Venom player, he was kind of preemptively stopping Riot Stomp by doing like P-Ball and then just like sending it slow to try to just control that space. There's some, you know, characters that can preemptively kind of stop him from doing it. But Milia, I don't really think is one of them. Milia is the kind of character you have to let him do it and react, you know, and, and stop him that way. So a little tougher. Yeah, and I feel like, um, correct me if I'm horribly wrong here, but the read I'm getting is Johnson is trying to play a very active game right now, and I think he should be maybe slowing it down actually a little bit and just waiting and, like, seeing what he can punish. No, absolutely, and th and that that's more of a playstyle thing. It's not even, it's not a it's not a Milia thing, and it's not even necessarily a matchup thing. It's a this player matchup thing. If You know, it's a playstyle thing where the counter to this type of playstyle is to let them hang themselves. But again, the trick is you have to, 
hang them. <laughs> you know, yeah. they're they're handing you the rope and you're choosing not to hang them. And you know, I, I know I'm being a, a little bit hard on on uh, Johnson here. It, it it is easier said than done. This is not a simple thing. Mm-hmm. You know, don't 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 get confused that you know I'm I'm expecting that he is able to do this. It is just that this is this is what you need to do to overcome this type of play style. Um, you know, you need to go into the lab, look at your punishes, and look at some of these more specific situations. You know, how do I, you know, practice reacting to to ride stomp, and then what's my best combo to really punish? You know, when I when I block a ride stomp. Yeah, hundred so. percent right. And I think that um, it's yeah. There's always like the hang them like let them hang themselves analogy, right? And what's interesting is that sometimes that doesn't work, right? Like sometimes that's actually not a good idea. Like there's some characters where you don't want to play like reactive, and I think right. as Milia, it feels very natural to try to play a play style where you're flying all over the place because it's what she's good at and trying to hit buttons. But like totally fine, you slow it down. You got a good ass six P, right? Like use it. Like that's why it's there. Um, but absolutely, that's I, a great point. Yeah, and, and it, it can be a, maybe a little counterintuitive if you play a character like Milia and you're you're used to controlling the pace of the match. You're maybe not so used to relinquishing some of that control and letting them run a little more free with the knowledge that okay, I'm going to let him run around and you know think that he's you know that he's flying all over the place, but really I'm just going to let him do this and then I'm going to I'm going to punish. Yeah. For sure. And just like that, if you can believe it, that was all three yeah. games. So we're going to be getting into Grand Finals. Eureka versus Ragnall. Hoss versus Soul. This is what the world's come to, Ryan. Yeah, so... And they're letting you know, it fly been, out. Hell yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of matchups that I that I don't know, uh, like, theory on. But this is actually one that I do know a bit of theory on. And it's actually thanks to Mr. K, who I don't know if he's still in chat. But um, we had a discussion, or rather, he had a discussion... Uh, with Hotashi, just using this matchup as an example, he is a he is a Haas player himself, uh, Mr. K, that is. And uh, it's funny, because we just spent so much time over the course of the night talking about Riot Stomp, and uh, apparently it is a major problem in this matchup, because I mentioned earlier, Water Soul is, like, maybe the only or one of the very few at the least characters that does not have a simple answer to Riot Stomp. His 6P, uh, as far as I'm, I understand, does not beat it. And he doesn't really have a crouching move that hits upwards in a way that's going to hit it. So it's actually a major problem in the matchup. And because of his jump, it's hard for him to jump oh, yeah. over it as well. So it's actually like the most legitimate matchup to actually just go wild with Riot Stomp. You have to do like a lot of preemptive stuff to hit him out of it. You can't really react to it the way we've been talking about for the last 10 minutes. Yeah, so. for sure. But Eureka wins it out in the last little bit of a scramble there. Also, what's good, Moondog? Hope you're doing well. I just saw you were in the chat. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting, right? How it is, like, uh, general advice is all well and good, but it is... Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> 6P. 6P is so sick when it hits. It looks so cool, but, yeah, <laughs> We didn't even see is, the animation. It is, uh, just got blasted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is a very specific, you know, use. Use. Yeah, and it's like, um, it's sometimes general advice... Well, he tried to slash whoa, whoa, back whoa, in! Whoa. <laughs> Ryan, I'm incapable well, I... of making a point in this match. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, all I can say is I hope he enjoyed his stay in the beginning of Racket. <laughs> Get the hell out of here, Eureka, you're bad. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to show off with the slashbacks. That was definitely unnecessary. I'm not even sure, not only was it unnecessary, I'm not even sure that was good. Because I think <laughs> it's the kind of thing where it's like, you slow the projectile down by slashbacking it. So I think maybe Soul would recover before you'd even be done. I'd, I've never seen that before, I don't know, but yeah. Hey, GG's Johnson. Thanks for playing. Hope you had fun. Yeah, and there you see another Ride Stomp counter hitting. I mean, the, the good news for Eureka's side here is that uh, Ragnall's combos are are pretty simple as far as, you know, soul combos go. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I would much rather see a newer player do a simple combo and complete it and get a knockdown than try to do the advanced combos and drop it every time. Mm -hmm. uh, like, not even it's not even a question. If you get the knockdown, I am happy. So, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but, you know, at the very least, from Eureka's side, he's not taking max punishment on some of these hits. Interesting that Eureka punished the TP there, but then jump canceled. I wonder, was that an execution mistake? I'm not sure. Uh, I missed that. Uh, I was so deep in my point, but yeah, probably. <laughs> I, I so. Maybe he thought he was going to hit it in the air, and he didn't realize that he landed. I, I didn't see it, but... Yeah, interesting. Well, Ragnall takes the first one over Eureka. This is this is quite a match. This is so hard to keep up with. 
So Ragnall is the one in losers, right? Yes. So he's got a reset. He's okay. got a reset. For those of you who maybe this is your first tournament and you're not super sure how it works, Ragnall's coming from losers, so he needs to win this first to three and then win the next first to three also because he's got to knock Eureka down into losers. Exactly, yeah. Eureka has not lost to anyone yet, so he's still in the winner's side. Yep. Oh my god, and he wasn't sure if he could punish the burst, so he just waited a while throw. That was a clean answer! Nice. That was a clean answer. And, you know, when we've been talking about answers to Riot Stomp, the, I the ideal answers are quickly six Ps, the stuff that you can execute extremely quickly. The DP will answer, you just have to be on top of your game because it takes longer to execute, so you have to react that much faster. But it if you can do it, I mean, that's, that's a great answer, so... For sure, and Ragnall's IADing back a lot, and I'm wondering why. The meaty Riot Stomp? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, big opportunity here. Oh, a little drop. Oh, chip. Yeah, it's gonna fall us to avoid the chip. Okay. Yo, oh, my the stun! God, he got some he hit, he hit. <laughs> Okay, the burst. The hero burst, he's the main character! And he gets the trade. I was gonna say, just start Fafnir and just spend the meter. So normally when you get those six H's like that with Order Soul, it's pretty common to see two in a row because they, they don't shake out of the first one fast enough or especially if it's counter hit like that. Uh, wow, he shook out super fast. I'm actually <laughs> shocked. But usually what you'll see is like two and then a Fafnir because uh, if you do Fafnir quickly, I think it's unshakable. I don't think, I think it's a true combo. I don't think you can shake out realistically fast enough. Uh, maybe the computer can, but not a human. I wonder if uh, part of that shake out that fast was somewhat of a DP input. Yeah, yeah, because he did DP right away, right? <laughs> like, immediately. Oh what is happening right now? Explosions. My right, man six, is eight, six, eight. Oh my god, he's out, though! Again, he's going for the IED, and I'm wondering what the, like, the thought process is there. Wow, just the DP out of nowhere hitting. And the, <laughs> I was going to say, he just needs chip. I wouldn't be surprised to see a riot stomp. And there it is. Yeah, he's playing footsie with the 6H, literally. Nice confirm into the Grand Viper. Whoa, what a trade. Yeah, we, there's been a lot of wacky clashes in this match. So nice little combo there. I'm not convinced that that's worth the meter unless you're going to get the kill there. But, you know, again, I would rather that, that uh, a newer player err on the side of spending meter than not spending meter. But, you know, we're getting into the territory here where some of these players are, you know. These, you know, two, these two fellas like, know what they're doing. Yeah, exactly. They, they, they could probably start looking at stuff like that, you know, so that's why I'm bringing it up. And I think what's important to note here about Ragnall, right, is that a lot of people in the chat are just like, damn, like, these people are popping off. This is crazy, right? Including us. But, like, what's really important to look at is when both these players are just blocking, because that's really what's, like, determining this neutral. Like, when they're both being patient is, like, when they're like, okay, I'm going to wait for my turn. And then they do their crazy soul things, right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Nice burst. Kept himself alive. Uh, Couldn't quite get the punish on the DP. You knew it oh, was coming. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. Oh, and he he got a slash back there and uh, got punished for it. He couldn't block. Yeah. It, it, what you... was, was, it, was it Eureka at the beginning of the tournament that we pointed out the slash back yes. with the FD breaking? Was yes. that him? That was him. <laughs> okay, yeah. My man's addicted. Yeah, so it, 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 that was a good example. I mean, it happened very quick, so probably a lot of people didn't see it there, but... That was an example of what we were talking about, where he actually got punished. If he had done an FD break properly, you know, with with FD instead of slashback, he would not he would not have gotten hit there. I mean, maybe he wasn't blocking, but sure. he could he could not block there because he did a slashback. It's so important. Just to, yeah, just to reiterate for for anyone who wasn't here earlier when we talked about it, once you input a slashback, it's a uh, it's only a very small window that you actually get. It's like a parry, and then after that, there's a long period, 20, 30 frames, something like that where you just cannot block. You are locked out of blocking, so very risky. I feel like Reset says he's doing slashback on accident. He's used to S and HFT and Exert. Maybe. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. D yeah, exactly, because slashback doesn't exist in Exert, so that's very possible. Oh, oh nice pickup, okay. Yeah, Got a little extra damage off of it. Wow, I cannot believe that 6H didn't hit. Dude, I can't, like... Sometimes Riot Stomp feels like a teleport, man. It's like you can't hit him when he's going to the wall. He's out. Yeah. So for those asking, SNH is Blitz and Exert, but it has to be neutral on the stick and SNH, whereas Slashback is back. So if you hit back SNH in uh, in Exert, you'll get a Faultless. Did you slash back the Bandit Bringer? I saw that he tried, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is a good reaction. That is a, that is a good answer. That is my preferred answer, personally. 
Blast into the corner, leveling up. He's doing a pretty good job avoiding the Riot Stomps. Which again, and you know, we talked a lot about punishing the Riot Stomps, but in this matchup, just avoiding them is is good enough. That was, in this a, matchup, that was a good old fashioned Street Fighter anti air DP from Ragnall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, big punish? No, oh, you gotta punish that. He actually I FD'd wonder... it, and I think it pushed him farther than he thought. <laughs> exactly, and yeah, I wonder if uh, he even meant to sweep, or maybe he was trying to Fafnir and got sweep instead. Possibly. So oh all these rounds are just going down to the wire. Oh, and the burst, no punish! No punish, oh, he stops him! Oh my god, they're both... <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh my god, Ragnall with the skin of his shinny chin chin! Yeah, Ragnall's staying alive. Okay, the knockdown. Ragnall theoretically just needs to win this round or reset the whole damn bracket. Okay. Oh, he had the clean hit. He didn't go for a combo. You can actually combo off that if you get the clean hit. Okay. I like the patience there. Eureka hit the DP and then dashed up and then just stopped. Wanted to see what Ragnall was going to do on his wake up. Right. Uh, six. That was the whole extension. That did actually nice. get him punished there. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I'm wondering if maybe he shouldn't just always do that on Blocky. It's just kind of going straight into it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he does have meter to burn, but if you're getting, once you start getting punished, I think it's, yeah. you know. And, and there, he, he did it and didn't do the follow-up, yeah. so fantastic. Hold him back. Adjustment. We see yeah. the RC, we do. Backing off. Look at the risk gauge on Eureka! Oh yeah, look my at the meter god! <gasps> Good burst. Okay. Good burst. Yeah, staying alive, staying alive. Yeah, he was just literally dead if he didn't burst. That was a burst to avoid the bracket getting reset. He gets smoked out the air the combo! Oh, couldn't quite get a finisher, though. Oh, nice air throw, OTG. Oh my god, wake up, yeah. Trilpin! Yeah, he actually tried to pick him up. I didn't even think of that. Oh my god, and Ragnall finds the last hit. Eureka just couldn't get the chip to, to close it out. Just like so what that. Is, is it, what is it, what, is it one, uh, two, two oh now? Ragnall? It's zero, zero. That was straight. Oh, that was the reset. All right, all right. Ragnall bringing it back. That is a reset. Yeah, no, we're in it. Oh my god, that was crazy. Nothing, dude. Yeah, these these, it's these so, are great matches. These are great matches. It is great matches. It's so... To just to sound like a complete casual for a second, because we're doing a lot of in-depth analysis today, right? But on a hype level, it's so cool that Soul's like the main character of Guilty Gear, because he is just so freaking fun to watch. Like, he's just so great. <laughs> No, definitely, definitely. And it's it's fun to watch, like, this is something that you obviously can't see in Exerd. You know, Soul versus Order Soul, they're so similar, but they are very different. So it's it's actually, like, a fun way to kind of, you know, put a twist on, like, the quote-unquote mirror match. Because um, they are really very unique characters from each other. Oh, shit. Somebody redeemed the channel points reward for me to give Dolce a treat. Where is she? Damn, Rich. Ooh, okay. Hold on, we can do this real quick before we start. Oh, Dolce yeah. is sitting down on my little chair here. All right. <laughs> Dolce! Dolce! Thank you very much, Power Orange, for giving Dolce the big tree to Rooney. I see Eureka in, in chat here. Um, I'm actually curious if, if you're listening right now. Uh, how long have you been playing? Because you don't have that many games, but you, you're, you're pretty good already. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Yeah, Dolce is co-commentating. This is actually just a screenshot of Ryan. It's like a GIF. Oh, okay. You've been playing since Rev 1. So you're just new to plus R, I'm assuming. There was another cheat request. I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, Ryan. This is very important. I hope you understand. Oh, I believe me. I right. understand. There's One. nothing more important. One more for Dolce. Thank you, Dolce. Thank you, Star Platinum, for giving Dolce the big treat. Okay, we've only got one more left. Other than that, she's uh, no more treats for Dolce. <laughs> uh, this also makes so much sense. So we're getting some insight here as to what's going on. So Eureka is telling us in chat that... Uh, they played Slayer starting from, they've been playing Guilty Gear since Rev 1, and they played Slayer. So just the entire concept of FD breaking is an entirely new experience because Slayer has the, you know, he doesn't have a run, he has a dash. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just moving around in the air, it's, just, it's all, it's a totally different, uh, and this is what I was saying before, you could spend years playing one character and then have a have a pretty high level mastery of that character, and then you decide one day, I'll learn another character. 
you will be shocked at uh, you know stuff that does not translate because the characters are so unique. Obviously, there's some fundamental stuff that, of course, is going to translate, but it is almost like you know learning a new game to some extent, where some of these characters just require things that are totally unique to them that no other character offers. So, yeah, for sure. Um, and I think we're just waiting here for Ragnall, maybe to catch his breath. That was a pretty yeah. intense set. You know, taking a walk outside for a second, screaming at the moon. Okay, and it looks like he's about ready. I don't know what yeah, soul I players see, do. I see in Discord he, he needed a, a moment to uh, just step away and uh, compose himself, use the restroom for a second. And it's good, you, you know, take, take, it's totally within your right as a, uh, you know, as a player. Uh, for, you know, again, for those of you who are maybe new to tournaments, you are totally oh, within yeah, uh, yeah. your right. If you need a breather, you are allotted a certain amount of time. Maybe it varies, you know, tournament to tournament, but um, you're allowed to get up and walk around and, you know, catch your breath, let your heart calm down. Sometimes your, your heart's beating real fast. Take advantage of that. A lot of players don't take advantage of that. So, yeah, yeah. And do, I, do what you got to do so that you can play at your best. And I don't know what it is soul players do between rounds, you know, if it's eating entire boulders or something, but whatever you got to do to tell, cool off. Right back right, into it, so. right where we picked off, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, and Ragnall, again, with the Fafnir to follow up, catching uh, Eureka, maybe trying to jump out or something. So yeah, I think number one thing for Eureka, you know, just to start giving some of the, the insight here, now that we've seen these guys play quite a lot, he's got to fix the slashback problem. <laughs> As I say that, he actually slashbacks the, the gun kill. But the, <laughs> Sounds the like he's got the slashback solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the accidental slashbacks. I would say that's like number one priority. Um, you know, in in neutral instead of FD break, or you know when he's trying to FD break, uh, that that's that I would say is number one priority to, to fix because he, he's getting hit quite a lot actually. Yeah. Um, when you start paying attention. It's important to note also, like when we're saying that, oh my god, that just hit him. It's important to note that when we're saying that like slashback gets you hit because it has like a recovery period, it is a serious recovery period. This isn't like high level, like if you bait the slashback, you can punish it. It's like you'll just get hit in the face immediately if you accidentally hit slashback. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, big hit. Oh, nice. He he had the right idea with the combo. I, I, it looked like almost the combo was impossible because he was so far. Like, that was a perfect example. Couldn't block it. Yeah. <laughs> Got smoked, right? Yeah. Like, it happens very casually. Oh, nice 6-H hitting the right stomp. Okay, gun blaze. Big opportunity. Oh, he tried to hard read the burst. He tried to take his soul. <laughs> Dude, if someone takes a soul in a beginner's tournament, they're banned from the non-beginner's <laughs> yeah. tournament. <laughs> yeah. Rise up it, dude. Pressing after Riot Stomp. Yeah, oh, he's so not close. Not quite enough, but Chip is now a major problem. He needs to find a hit. Oh, nice. Thoughtless to avoid the Chip and got a perfect punish. That's all he needed. Clean. Just the far slash was enough. That was beautiful. By the way, I appreciate that they gone for the canon Mario and Luigi colors. <laughs> This is thrown out there. Oh, but gets a Grand Viper. Not a clean hit, but... Oh, right stomp again. Major problem in this matchup. Oh, my God. And Ragnar working on a perfect right now. Has this man in a clinic. Yeah, Eureka's got to try to make something happen. Okay, Gold Burst is a great start. Punish? No, it doesn't quite get it. Nice air throw. Here we go. Okay. Okay. He might be close to stun, actually. A couple of air throws, a couple of counter hits. Oh, my God. Wake up Fafnir, that had to be an execution error, but it worked out. Oh, jumps into the DP. Dude, I can't believe he got under. I thought he yeah. would be stuck. That was actually so mean. Yeah, you could see actually Eureka was faultlessing, but then he got crossed up and got hit. So he was trying to block there. So is that 1-0 Ragnall? 1-0 Ragnall, yes. And Star okay. Platinum points out Haas and Soul aren't related. Yeah, but neither are the Mario Brothers, so my analogy stands. Wait, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the lore. Is isn't Haas soul from like another timeline? Yeah, where, it's like, in from the past. The I'm, I'm being okay. silly. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know if you guys were kidding or not. I was like, because no. I, I, I don't. I honestly don't know. Not, um, we, so. we have a running joke of I'd always just throw out nonsensical lore for Guilty Gear because none of us I, really I know see. it. I mean, honestly, who's to say? You know, anything could be correct you know the little bit of the lore that i do know uh is absolutely insane so <laughs> for know. sure right that's also okay makes me dude eureka's close to stun yeah and that was a great combo so this is one of those situations where it's oh like is he gonna get stunned before he dies and in this case he did yeah shot into space oh my god that was brutal 
Alright, so Ragnall looking like he's running away with a little bit. Uh, and again, to, just to start tapping into some of the analysis here, I think really the story of this match is Eureka, and really it's it's kind of the story of the tournament at this point, because Ragnall is looking like he's poised to, to take it here, um, is that, uh, you know, it's important to, to know your punishes. And it's, you know, nothing against any of these players, obviously, because that's not necessarily something that you're going to learn right away. Yeah. But uh, at, at the level that some of these players are at now, it's going to have to be something that they go into the lab for, you know. And uh, it's not even necessarily character specific, you know, just looking at, you know, block DPs. That's not a soul specific thing. That's a that's a more your character thing of knowing, OK, I block something big. What is my big punish? You know, and it's 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 oh. the kind of thing where if, if you don't know um, those kind of situations, you're going to have a hard time beating this type of play style. This this very risky, high risk, high reward type play style. Okay, Eureka's going for the Shin final boss pick. He's trying, yep. he's digging deep. He's going with Soul. And he said he's played what? Rev 1 Soul? Uh, Slayer, or Slayer yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, and so it's interesting because obviously he's got some familiarity, but he's so, so different than than in, in any version of Exord. For sure. And he was so. trying to go for the BDC Mappas there, but not working out because of the Riot Stomps. Oh, All right, yeah. big punish here? No, see, that's what I'm talking about. You block a DP, you got to do better than a single hit. Yeah. And obviously, you know, we don't know what his familiarity is with Slayer, so, you know, that that could be a thing where he just doesn't know Slayer's combos well enough because again, they're very different from Exord. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, it's it just just to, you know, again, speak of the the playstyle matchup. That's how you're going to beat this kind of playstyle at at any level. Um, which is kind of what makes it so effective at this lower level. So, yeah, and honestly, like, not like my Slayer is good or anything like that, but I have played a lot of Slayer in this game, and I think that... But, well, you know what? Hold up. Enough about me. Let's talk about the players. Eureka and Ragnall are potentially in the last round right now as Ragnall yeah. may take this whole damn tournament. Oh, tried to maybe backdash cancel jump, it looked like, and just got hit by the bringer. And a pretty pretty decent combo there from Ragnall. Okay, nice. BDC jumped out of the corner. Oh, uh, yeah. Got fast. He's trying to beat as he jump all around. 6H gets stuffed. You saw him in the startup big squat. Eureka's already down so much life. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Okay. Yeah, and see, that, that riot stomp from downtown, That's that's got to be a slam dunk. I'm, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here, but... Yeah. You know, just letting him get away with murder, literally. Yeah, for sure. Slayer is one of those characters who does not... He does not have trouble punishing it. He can do 40 yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. He, he, could, he could be doing, like, 50% easily yeah, yeah, yeah. off the camera. Yeah. Big Bang Upper gets stuffed. That's it's not it. that invul, and Ragnall takes it. Eureka trying to puff out his chest a bit and go for the final boss pick, but not working out. And that is going to be it for tonight. Yeah, so a good try from Eureka, trying to make some adjustments there, but um, really good stuff from Ragnall, just uh, sticking to his guns and just staying consistent and uh, making it happen. So congratulations. They will both likely be banned from the next event. But, All um, of top eight, banned. Get out of here. Yeah, You're not allowed. Just, just, to, <laughs> just to give some some closing feedback there, you know, I I, I harped a lot about, you know, the, the, the punishes and stuff like that. Um, just to talk about a little bit from the other side for, um, for Ragnall, um, again, great showing. Uh, I think it's it's probably a little bit obvious, you know, where you can improve. Um, your combos were very simple. Again, I think it's a great starting point, um, and and I'm I'm very happy to see, you know, simple combos that are completed and not down. Um, however, you know, I think you're at a point where you could probably, you know, uh, upgrade upgrade is a perfect word. Just upgrade your combos a little bit. You don't have to start getting into the character specific stuff necessarily but um there were some spots where you weren't even getting knockdowns off your combo so at least make sure that you're always getting a knockdown even if you still stay away from the character specific stuff and the other thing that i would say to ragnall is um you know we talked about it from the opponent's perspective a lot tonight about how to beat that type of play style so for ragnall just be aware that your play style you're playing a very risky slash rewarding play style you know you're throwing out a lot of dps throwing out a lot of riot stomps a lot of bandit bringers to some extent, that is just soul, right? You're gonna do that to some extent, no matter what level you're playing at, that's that's soul, right? That That's kind of what you signed up for. But be aware that as you start to get better and you start to play better people, you will start to come across people that oh, yeah. have no problem really punishing that. And so just, it's fine to run that game plan as long as you are aware that you are doing it. So that when the time comes and you go, oh, 
this guy just took off half my life. You know, I did a riot stomp and he six peed me and I'm, you know, I'm hurting now. You got to be able to turn it off. That's the most important thing. So, you know, just make sure you're aware and, um, you know, don't get caught, you know, with your pants down where somebody starts punishing you and you kind of don't know what to do. Um, you know, you, you know to stop doing some of these riskier things, but you don't know what to start doing. So, you know, maybe something uh, for you to look at there, you know, maybe look at some other soul players, kind of see what they're doing in neutral stuff that's maybe a little bit less risky, but still has good payoff stuff like just, you know, IED jump S or IED jump H stuff that we looked at uh, in training mode earlier. Um, yeah, but other than that, great stuff, man. Great stuff to everybody tonight. Yeah, that was an awesome, super fun tournament. Ryan, thank you so, so much for joining me on commentary. You are a legend. I'm sure everyone appreciates the breakdowns. Uh, everyone, let us know what you thought. Let us know what you think was like sick about this. Did you like the little Ryan Lab segments when we went back to the lab again? Uh, what part of the commentary did you like? What didn't you like? We are definitely, I think, looking to do another one, Ryan, unless uh, our plans are horribly changed. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I think uh, we can, you know, say for sure we'll be doing an, at least at least one more, but probably a few more at at, at least. Um, from what you were telling me last night, the, apparently the waiting list is already full for the next one. So, you know, we'll see what me. solution we can come up with um, to, uh, you know, to figure that out. Um, you and I will talk offline. I was actually going to ask you something, but I'll, I'll wait until sure. afterwards. But um, yeah, uh, just, you know, hopefully it was educational um, for everybody watching as well as the players. Hopefully they can go back. Again, um, sorry to the people who signed up excited and then didn't get shown on stream. Uh, we only have so much time, but, you know, I really want to help everybody so uh if you didn't get on stream and you would like to um have me analyze your matches you can reach out to me or stop by my stream uh probably friday i think i'm gonna try the first time uh let people submit matches and i'll review them i'll, I'll take a couple hours out of my stream to to, to do that as well so um I'll, and i'm gonna try to prioritize if you let me know hey i was in the tournament i didn't get on stream i'll, I'll make sure to prioritize your matches because i, I do want to make sure that i'm you know helping uh, everybody that signed up so yeah. Um, but yeah, this was great. This was great. Fantastic. Cool. Uh, dope. Then I think that since Ryan, it is 11 o'clock and you and I do have work in the morning, unfortunately. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any final words for all of our wonderful competitors here? Uh, no, I mean, that's it really. I'll, I'll be tweeting out some stuff, uh, you know, with more information about, you know, the review. And I'm sure both you and I will be tweeting about the next event and, yeah. and stuff like that. And, uh, a little bit more about the logistics, you know, as we try to figure out some solutions to make sure that we give everybody a chance to not only enter, but get featured. Um, but again, just great stuff from everybody. I hope uh, this encouraged more people to, you know, dip their toe into the Guilty Gear pool. And, uh, you know, I know we saw a, lot, a couple of people say this was their first tournament mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And a lot of people really excited about the game. So as long as uh, I'm seeing that kind of response, I'm, I'm happy and I'm, I'm happy to do it, so. For sure. Cool. Then I think I'm going to hang up with you, Mr. Ryan, and we'll go ahead. I have a little bit of an outro that I'll play here, but I had a, sh a crap ton of fun commentating with you. The one thing I'll also throw in here uh, before we sign off is now that you all have had some experience, or even if you were just watching and you didn't get to participate, hang out with all the people in LFG. I think you saw that everyone posting in the chat and stuff, they're the nicest people you'll ever meet. Uh, they're looking to always play some gear and teach people some things. So if you ever just want to run some sets, this is the place to be. Uh, th meet some friends, meet some homies, that sort of thing. Definitely just hang out in the Hoop Squad Discord. It's great. Also, got to say just one more time, thanks to you for running the stream and running the show here. <laughs> uh, you know, everyone is saying, you know, thank me, thank me for the commentary. I appreciate that. But guys, please recognize, you know, Bones and Trinity have been doing this before I stepped in. I'm doing a small part. I'm just sitting here you know, lending my knowledge and commentating there. It's really work, you know, running the stream and running the tournament. So huge thanks to Trinity and, and you for, you know, for, for organizing this and, uh, you know, just, just want to make sure people recognize, you know, it is a, it is a thankless job a lot of the time. So make sure you guys uh, give your thanks and uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for the finishing words, Ryan. For the record, I'm not short. Get out of here. Everyone just thinks I'm short on a webcam, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and hang up with you and play our little outro, but thanks Ryan. It's been really fun. All right. See you guys next time. Take Adios. Easy. Bam. Wait. Bam. There we go. It's just me now. How's it going, everybody? So, if you're new here, and there's a lot of people watching. First of all, thanks all for watching. I appreciate you. Um, but, so, first of all, someone redeemed the big dude. So everyone get ready for the big dude. Are you all ready? <laughs> Thank you very much for redeeming a big dude. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and get into our little outro here. It's a tradition. Now, for those of you who have not seen this outro, the important part of this outro is as we're playing it, you need to tag yourself. Whenever you see somebody and you're like, that's me, you gotta say me, okay? Just like drop a me in the chat. So let me kill Guilty Gear and let me... That wasn't as scuffed as I thought it would be, to be honest. I I'm happy with the way the stream layout kind of went. Like screen sharing and stuff, I thought it was gonna be a little... uh thought we would be in scuffed territory, but I think this is sufficiently not scuffed for me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Do, 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 hold up. Bam. Wait, that's smaller than I thought it would be. <laughs> Wait, that's the Ryan Hunter thing. Uh, don't do that. Ixnay on the that thing. Okay. Alright, everyone. Remember, when you see yourself, say me. Remember, through the good times and bad, we'll always have Uno. Thanks again, Ryan, for commentating tonight. Thanks for everyone for everyone hanging out. And I think, bam. Wait, that wasn't me. Bam. So, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and throw y'all over to um, what should we call it? Wednesday night's fights. I think is right now doing some plus R. So why don't we drop them the big raid? Y'all go watch some Wednesday night fights. Uh, and continue the Guilty Gear mania. How about that? Rating, I'm not a sandwich. Is Yo-Yo Master actually in it? Oh my god. Everyone cheer on Yo-Yo Master. He needs it. That's amazing. Wednesday Night Fights on a Tuesday? I know, I can't believe it either. Tomorrow is going to be Street Fighter V. If you're new here, we are going to play some Street Fighter V tomorrow. It's a fun-ass game nowadays. If you think that it sucked when it came out, you're correct. But now, it's really good. So if you haven't seen Street Fighter V in a while, drop by tomorrow. But I'm going to toss you all over to the raid. I'm going to catch some sleep. Y'all have a good night, okay? Bye!